Skipper together with my good buddy Matthews Isaac as your official commentator for Champions E Football Tournament. Matt, how are you doing today, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm really looking forward for another exciting week of football. And uh, it seems like the players are all ready to give us amazing show of football. So let's hop in and see what's going to happen this week, man. Yep, exactly. Now we are in our match day three. So we have already done two match days already, Matt, with 89 goals. 89 goals in two match day. I believe today we are going to have a full blast of a tournament, Matt. Uh, definitely, man. We have amazing players coming through as well, especially, you know, the star players are getting involved and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yep, I'm really looking forward to it. So we have, I believe, eight teams from seven regions fighting for the champion and also for the total prize pool. Uh, let's see. The total prize pool, as usual, is going to be 9,250 US dollars, Matt. That is going to be the yeah. prize pool. As mentioned, uh, we have two categories. The elite category, which is the professional esports players, we have... First place, 5,000 USD. Uh, second place is 2,000 USD. Third place is 300 USD. How about, Matt, the real footballers category, which is the star category? Yeah, in the uh, first place, they're going to bring back home USD 1,000. And on the uh, second place, they're going to bring back USD 500. And third place, they are definitely going to bring back USD $250. Yeah. Wow, that is still going to be a lot of money. So I believe $9,250 will be up for grabs. And this is the competition schedule, Matt. We are currently on, as you can see, we are in the last day of the group stages. It began all the way 9 September, 16, 23rd of September. And next week, it's going to be on the 30th of September. It's going to be the semi-final. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, Matt, uh, the format will be different like the Grand Final, which is a best of five, if memory serves me correct, Matt. Yeah, and uh, I believe that Decipher is going to bring lots of challenges for the players. And uh, let's see who's going to get to the finals. Yep, and I believe we will look at the brackets, uh, which is the elites and also uh, the star. But before that, Matt, this is the current uh, situation, the group table. As you can see, for Group Alpha and Group Bravo, which is Group A on the left, uh, we see Chonburi and also Persib Bandung sharing uh, the same points, which is six points. Uh, for Naga World and United City FC, they are both on zero points. Uh, how about Group Bravo, Matt? Yeah, on, on Group B, we can basically see uh, Buriram United on six points and uh, JDT on the second place sharing points uh, alongside with uh, Ho Chi Minh City FC with three points to each other. And the last is going to be Tampines Rovers with only zero points that is Cypher. So it seems like the battle is still wide open for now. Yep, so for Group A, Matt, let's just say uh, if Chon Buri or Prasit Bandung loses their game, uh, if memory serves me correct, we will look at the schedule shortly. Uh, they might be going through because top two is six and six. However, for Group B, as you mentioned, is still open. JDT and Ho Chi Minh City, they are draw on three points. And the six points will be, uh, I believe we jumped a bit uh, quick, but Buriram is still on six points. Uh, it's going to be a very, very open table. So Matt, I believe uh, Mohamedou Sumare from JDT, uh, has already dropped down from this tournament and also Lam Ti Pong with a beautiful comeback from Awarachit from, uh, uh, I believe that is Chonburi FC. What do you think, man? Yeah, I, I feel like this is going to be really spectacular to look forward to that is Cypher. And let's see who's going to get all the way to the finals then. Yep, so I believe today we have two more games which is for the... Uh, star bracket which is by, played by the, the footballers itself. So I believe we will go into our first game. Hmm. But Matt, uh, I believe talking about the first game itself, here is the schedule. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six games today, Matt. Do you want to do the honors for me? Yeah, and I feel like the first match is going to be United City FC up against Nagabul FC. The second star match is going to be Poncholo Bugas of uh, United City FC up against Chitipat Tangklang of uh, Cambodia, actually. And uh, on the uh, third match, we see Chonburi FC up against Persip Bandung. This match is something to really look forward to. Then uh, we have an elite match coming up again 
Uh, JDT up against Ho Chi Minh City FC. And the star match, we have another star match actually today, Decipher. It's going to be Praj mm -hmm. As up against Armin Post Jack. And the last is going to be Buriram United up against Tampanese Rovers. And out of all of this match, uh, Matt, for me, the most crucial uh, is between JDT and also Ho Chi Minh City because both of these team, uh, how do I say this? They are on three points. They're deciding, Matt. yeah. So, yeah, they are uh, so deciding. This is the deci deciding, Matt. So, guys, uh, JDT or Ho Chi Minh City will advance into the knockout stages. We will soon find out. So, I believe, Matt. I believe they are going to be lucky draw for our viewers. Let's see what do we have for our viewers for today, Matt. Yeah, so there you go. If you guys want to win a signed jersey by Perse Bandung, then all you need to do is like and follow Champions League Football on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, the second step is going to be tag your friends, tag three of your friends in the uh, comment section of their giveaway post. And uh, last but not least is going to be Sharing their post, yeah, share their post giveaway on your Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Champions eFootball, and you will stand a chance to win a signed Perse Bandung jersey. Yep, so that is the giveaway for today. But Matt, I believe there might be more giveaways coming in. We are not so sure yet. We will be waiting uh, words from the admin on duty. So I believe that the first game is going to be uh, United City FC going up against Naga World. It's going to be the Philippines go up, going up against Cambodia. Uh, Jorel Zakri going up against uh, Vong, uh, Team Vong Ravut. So Matt... Uh, I believe that it's going to be a very interesting match indeed. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to watch that decipher. I'm really looking forward to it. And let's see how both of these players have been performing. Because in the past few weeks, we see uh, pretty much a decent performance by United City FC and also Nagavul FC. But let's see if Jorel or uh, Team Wong Ravut are up to the plan for now. Yep, so guys, I believe we are waiting for the referee to give the green light. If the green light is ready, I hope the viewers are ready. I'm ready, man. I hope you are ready. Yeah. <laughs> yep, because if we are ready, we'll go straight into the game. Guys, please do uh, share uh, this video. Don't forget to tag and also shout out to all of the viewers, I believe, reading from a comment from Jajang Abdul Salam. I'm waiting for match three, which is Indonesia Persib Bandung going up against Chon Buri. And also, shout out also to Al Hafiz. Oh, a good buddy is going to be Al Hafiz. So, yeah, a good friend of ours, Matt, back then during the old days when we were doing tournaments back then, Matt. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, there's lots of amazing memories that we came through uh, in this uh, commentary journey that is Cypher. But yeah, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yep, here we are. So, Matt, we have already done uh, two match days uh, in overall 10 games, 10 sets of games with 89 goals. Uh, would you say that today is going to be another interesting game with a lot more goals and a lot more dramatic gameplay, Matt? Uh, possibly that is the cipher, and I'm really looking forward to the uh, wonder kit that we saw that day, Leon Antoine. And uh, on the other side, let's see, we have Indra Sugandhi as well, giving a little bit of a uh, more of a challenge actually. So it's pretty much wide open, and let's see where this is going to take us. Yep, so right now we will see um, Nagawa from Team Cambodia will be wearing their blue kit and while United City FC from the Philippines will be attacking from a right to left in their yellow gold color, man. Yeah, so it seems like Team... Uh, yeah, we see Nagawa actually on the start actually and let's see if they are able to score from here. Let's see if they are going to come up with a brilliant... Uh, start actually, so Timo Ravut right now. Let's see if he's trying to get in, but then Decipher looks like a sloppy start from there. Well, as usual, Matt, the first game of the day, <laughs> many funny things will happen, many missed passes, many misplaced long passes, but it's normal. In the first 10 minutes, usually players need some time to settle down. As we see, Team Naga will try to break through the defense, try to do a fake shot. However, Matt, the defensive line of Team Naga will, Jorel, was quick to intercept the ball and sends it forward, if, I'm, if I may say myself. Yeah, he tries to uh, get in earlier on, but ri right now, Decipher, it's all about who is scoring the first goal, who is going to give the uh, boost for the team, actually. And uh, let's see 
who's able to do that. And for now, we see United City FC on the shot there. And it seems like a little bit wide over there, Zaita. Yep, a little bit wide, a little bit, how should I see it? The target wasn't that accurate, but at least there is a chance on goal. Uh, at least trying to give a signal and also a warning to the opponent. Do not watch me with one eye shut. I believe that uh, the player from United City FC, which is Jorel Zakri, would like to get the first goal, the first upper hand. However, the player from Cambodia, which is... Uh, Team Ravut is attacking in numbers in the penalty area. Hits the upright. Almost gets the first goal in the first 14 minutes. Smooth as butter. However, his shot was denied by the upright. And again, the ball does go into the penalty area. But this time around, the momentum has been lost, Matt. Yeah, it seems like the first warning came from uh, Nagaval over there. And let's see uh, if he's getting to score the goal or not because he's getting closer and closer. That's what you need to do. In order to uh, progress with your attack, you don't want to give the, the uh, opponent to know what you're up to right now. Let's see, United City FC on the attack, the likes of Joral, and the pass is not going to find anyone. And here comes uh, Timo Ravut again, running forward. There's two options up front, and the pass, he could not get there in time, the decipher. And it seems like um, it's getting a little bit uh, slow start from uh, Nagawul so far. And on the other side, mm -hmm. we see United City FC are basically on their control, trying to get some space on the left again. Running through right now, but then there's a tackle coming through, and the referee says that is a foul. Yep, a foul given by the referee after a pretty, pretty harsh tackle. Uh, not so much warranted for a card, but it was a very, very hard tackle. Thus giving way for United City FC floats one into the penalty area. However, the cross was a little bit too far and too powerful for the outfield player, his striker, to actually get at the end of that cross. A little bit wasted, but however, we are now going into 25 minutes, Matt. Yeah, we are getting closer and closer there, this high friend. Right now we see Nagawal on the attack, but seems like there's going to be a free kick from here. And uh, let's see if he's able to smash one in before we approach into the uh, stoppage time real, real soon. But this is going to be a good chance for uh, Team Wong Ravut, for Nagawal FC. And it almost, almost got in that cipher. Came close, but not close enough. Yep, it's just a too much spin on the ball. It just drifted out wide a little bit. In fact, Matt, during this tournament, we only see like two, not to say two goals, but only two players was able to score from a direct free kit. Uh, those are actually uh, the players from Chon Buri, if memory serves me correctly. Mo uh, forgive me, Buriram United. Uh, Buriram, which is uh, Liha Antoine, and also from JDT from Malaysia, which is Muhammad No Haikal uh, through Shafawi Rashid. But that much uh, match will be coming up very, very shortly. Let's give focus on how Nagawal has to defend. Half an hour has gone, 30 minutes has gone, and we are still at level pegging 0 0. However, beautiful control by the ball from this player, which is Joel Zakri. However, the pass was a little bit sloppy. Thus, the ball goes out of play for a throw-in for a team, United City FC, Matt. Yeah, not seems like the master plan over there. And let's see. For now, the ball is with the likes of United City FC. Passes forward again. Can this be a goal-scoring opportunity? But then, uh, Team Mora would say it's no, not yet. And there's one player running forward asking for the ball. Seems like a little bit too late to make the uh, through pass, but never mind. And let's see if this is going to bring a big chance. And what a save by the goalkeeper. And another one goes in, and Ooh. there you go. The goal somehow lands in the back of the net. And it seems like Nagawal who strikes first. And there you go, Team Wong Ravut puts his name on the score sheet before half time. Well, that is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful goal indeed by our player, Team Wong Ravut from Nagawal. As we see again, uh, he tries to dig deep. But the miss interception by the defender, the keeper does parry. But the second time, again, it was the defender's mistake. I really hope that that is not the number six player. Because throughout this tournament, players with number five, number six, often becomes the cause of a goal. But this time around, I'm not taking anything away 
from our good friend Tim Vong Ravut for a beautiful goal. 38 minutes, 1-0, Matt. Yeah, it seems like everything going so well for the Philippines team so far. And uh, let's see if they're able to uh, contain this for some time. Unless we see an instant reply coming from Jorel uh, Zachary, actually. And on the ball right now, we see United City FC trying to find space on the right. Then it's being shut down again. And as we see, Nagawal coming through, but the pass is not going through. So, yeah, it was pretty much blocked, actually. It's going to be a throw in for Tivong Ravu, who just scored an amazing goal. I really thought it's like he's going to clear the ball off, but unfortunately, it landed in the back of the net and the touch was fantastic. And right now, maybe he might go for another one. But then, uh, it seems like it was all well under control by United City FC. Yep, so right now, I believe that communication has been broken down. We are going to enter halftime very, very shortly. However, we see the ball does try to go into the penalty area. Could not go through, but Team Nagawal is attacking in numbers. Uh, Team uh, Von Ravut is trying to find option, try to break through, through, but however, could not go through. We are now going into second half with only 1-0. Uh, going in favor of Naga World. So uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting match indeed because um, the defensive line of United City FC from the Philippines in the yellow uh, is a little bit leaky, a little bit leaky indeed. Almost to a point of conceding another goal. But however, luck was on their side. The ball did fly a little bit high, a little bit wide and also not troubling the goalkeeper yeah it seems like a pretty much it's getting a little bit bad there for united city fc uh jorel zachary the uh, 27 years old player uh and let's see if he's able to uh do something uh really spectacular because so far you only see tibong ravut who's basically on the attack and that is not going to find the net pretty much way off there came closer if you look really closely there as I we can see that uh, this team are really up to plan but I'm not sure what is going on on United City FC they pretty much had a uh, not a promising start but right now it is getting a little bit more horrible than horrible actually Zypha yeah it's getting more horrible and horrible if you want to <laughs> add it that way but Matt uh, we must give credit to the opponent uh, from Team Nagawal because they yep. are uh, closing uh, the game uh, very, very well. They are ensuring that the passes could not connect uh, due to the fact... Look at that beautiful tackling, interception. However, the touch was a little bit too heavy. Thus, they lost possession of the ball, giving way for, uh, I believe that is our good friend Joral to attack. Maybe, maybe I say it because the defense of Nagawa was a very, very compact at the back. Yeah, they have been really solid, actually, not giving space. And uh, they're basically shutting down every position over there. But this time, maybe it's time to get at least one back. And what a save by the goalkeeper. Maybe for another one. And the goalkeeper saves that as well. And that is a big chance. Came closer for United City FC to get at least a goal over there. And I believe that's going to be a corner now. We see the ball finally came off the goalkeeper at the end. And let's see if he's able to turn things around from this corner. Still 1-0. Things can change. A long ball goes in. Well headed away. And it's been headed inside again. And what a save. And maybe for the next rebound. But it seems like the defense are so, so solid. Oh, where the ball is going. Needs to be cleared what? off. Oh, he's the post. And it needs to be cleared off again. And yes, it is cleared off this time. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. goodness what kind of voodoo magic is that Matt? the keeper was dropped the ball was free and open it hits the player hits the upright the ball does go out again it was a shot hits the keeper hits the upright and then the ball ricochet off a defender and still did not go in i must say there is an invisible force in front of that goal post the force is strong with this player man but it did not go yeah. in it doesn't count and a finesse shot to the back of the net bad luck on the other side but this time around luck for team nagawal absolutely insane of a shot 
puts one to the back of the net. 2-0, Matt. And I believe that adds more pressure to Jorel just now after working so hard to defend, to get a goal, but to concede in the most easiest of manner, Matt. Yeah, counter, uh, counter at its finest, that is. I have a look at that. He went for the counter, instantly went for the strike again. And that is what I call a proper counter strike. But looking at the goal, we can see it has been really, really good. And the force has been really strong with the uh, Nagavul team. The Cambodian team has the force for now. No matter, even though we saw uh, United City FC came close to scoring a goal. But unfortunately, it's what you say that is either some force basically kicked the ball off there. <laughs> exactly. It was like bouncing. It was like literally bouncing off the crossbar, the upright, and still does not want to go in. And then with a single counter-attack by our good friend, uh, Tim Vong Ravut was able to make it count 2-0 in 67 minutes. But we still have time possibly for Zachary, uh, sorry, for Jorel Zachary to actually make it count. However, the defensive line of Team Nagawal is solid at the back, not even giving any room at all for Jorel to actually come into the penalty area. Now, this time around, Jorel does try to attack on the right flank. However, the ball just rolls past him and thus easily picked up by Team Avong Ravut. 72 minutes has gone. We still have another 18 minutes. Will we see another true ball this time around? But I think it took a deflection by the keeper. It's going to be a corner kick. That is a smooth move. A very, very nice move by our good friend, uh, Tim Vong Ravut from Team Nagawal, Cambodia, man. Yeah, it seems like goal kick in the end is either. That is pretty surprising, Oi? but never mind. We wow. can see that no matter, you, you can see no matter, even if Nagawal is not holding the uh, possession, but hold up, hold up there. And that is not going to threaten the goalkeeper. Yeah, talking about uh, Nagavul, of course, the cipher. They are not holding much possession. But when it comes to decision making, when it comes to deadly threats, when it comes to counters, they have been the top team. They have been at the best, actually, so far. And it seems like it's working so well. And that reflection is shown on the results. And maybe, maybe he might add another one. And what a save by the goalkeeper this time. Denying the effort of the striker up front. And it seems like it's not over for Nagawal. They're coming back and stronger. And that is not going to find the net. Came close. Matt. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it was it was going wide there. Well, the idea was there. Uh, a little bit two more touches. But Matt, that was an open sitter. I see what he's trying to do. He tried to bait the opponent from uh, making a wrong sliding tackle. If the tackle didn't it connects but on the wrong foot, it's going to be a penalty. But wow, what a howler. What a miss in front of goal by a Naga World player. However, with only eight minutes on the clock, there is no pressure. But it's still going in. It's still going in strong. However, panic in the penalty area. What was that? Keeper, no keeper. How on earth that the communication has collapsed? between the goalkeeper and the backline defender. He should have cleared the ball straight up. However, they still want to play short passes. It's a tragedy and a disaster in the penalty area for United City FC, Matt. Yeah, that is not the plan, Decipher. That is definitely not the plan. But uh, it seems like the team has been a little bit rusty in the back four. And it seems like uh, Nagawal are taking it really good advantage of it goalkeeper should have done it better there. i'm not sure why he went for the uh stop and we can see three to four players inside actually and uh, we have a look at that again look at that so much players inside and oh it seems like miscommunication is what you say that is either uh both of them went for the clearance fortunately they did not see a fox was lurking inside the box and there you go the goal has come <laughs> and it's three nil well <laughs> Fox in the box, call it whatever you want, the Desert Fox. No, that's that's Owen Rommel, that's a different story. But Matt, he was literally like a shadow, an assassin, daggers between the teeth, uh, going behind enemy line. And thus we see at this moment in time, Matt, uh, for Team United City FC is just going from a bad day in the office. Now there is no more office to go because situation <laughs> just went critical. 
3-0 with three more minutes. I believe we are just playing for formality. Guys, Nagawa at this rate has won a game advantage already. Yeah, it seems like pretty much it's all written for them. Maybe they might want to add another one, but it seems like defensive at its best. And uh, But unfortunately, it was just not enough. As we see, uh, three goals already been backed by the Cambodian team. And uh, maybe Team Wong Rawut wants to add another more. And uh, still the ball in there inside. And maybe he might go for the shot. But well defended. Plays the ball off. But it seems like it's not over yet. Maybe one last attack. And I'm not sure from where it's going to come from. But never mind. Not going to come from anyone. It's 3-0. And Nagawal of Cambodia wins the first match. So with a 3-0, Matt. With a 3-0 victory over United City FC, uh, that is a huge morale boost uh, for Team Avong Ravut. Uh, however, Jorel Zakri still have a second game to possibly make a comeback. Uh, possibly maybe this one. Oh, it hits the goalkeeper. I, I want to see where that... Um, uh, that force field blocking the goalkeeper that is just uh, in my point of view it's just a little bit mental uh, so I believe let me just read out a little bit few stuff uh, I believe Matthews is just writing a few more notes in the back line I hope he will be okay very very shortly uh, but this time around for team uh, Nagawa attacking non-stop attacking non-stop uh, from left, right and center, but it just did not slide through. It just did not slide through uh, another shot taken in the 50th minute. Uh, so I believe uh, Matthews, if he's ready, is he ready to yeah, come back man. online? So from your notes that you were writing just now, I believe that the chances was a lot, but it's just not going for uh, Jorel's away, Matt. Yeah, uh, it seems like uh, I feel like this for the first match, I mean, especially in the first half, uh, it was pretty much much more of a solid uh, performance by Nagawal. They basically dominated, although they did not hold much of the possession. But still, uh, in, in terms of uh, decision-making in the final third belongs to Nagawal. But unfortunately, in the second half, we saw a little bit of a glimpse where United City FC were coming closer to score. And especially, we saw this one moment where the ball was not going in the back of the net. But yeah. Unfortunately, um, yeah, it did not go in the back of the net, but Nagawal took the advantage, took every opportunity there was and made it theirs. And it's a worthy performance by Nagawal in the first match. Yep, that's what you call communication breakdown. That's what you call when you have a communication between uh, a duck and also a chicken. Uh, that's what happened. I mean, the defender should have cleared the ball. However, it took a reflection. It took a ricochet. And uh, yeah, it, it, it opened up a chance for uh, the opponent to throw one at the back of the net. So Matt, first game is 3-0, uh, but we still got second game coming up shortly. Yeah, we have a second match coming up real, real shortly there. And uh, I hope this time we see uh, Jorel tries to uh, come up with a different plan, a different strategy instead of using the same gameplay. I feel deciphered. The first match was pretty much very one-sided in my eye. Yep, it was pretty one-sided, good defending, uh, good movement uh, by Team Avong Ravut. Uh, however, we see that Jorel was not comfortable in his uh, gameplay, but I believe everything will change very, very shortly. Uh, I'm getting words that the players are getting ready uh, to restart the second game. If the admin says they are ready, we should go straight away. But Matt, for you guys watching live, this is... Uh, game number one, match number two between United City FC, which has been uh, represented by uh, Jorel Zakri, while Nagawa team Avong Ravot. First game 3 0. Matt, will there be a comeback? Uh, I, I hopefully, I, I really hope there's going to be a comeback, or else uh, things are going to go on Nagawa way, Decipher. And uh, let's see, there's going to be a little bit of a challenge on that. I hope Jorel this time. Uh, makes the right decisions, makes the uh, comes up with a better performance, a uh, better tactical wise and stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty much open, and let's see who's gonna get the best of it. So, for Team United City FC, from our guys from the Philippines, uh, can you give a thumbs up? Can you give a like in the comment? And while our friends from Cambodia, supporter of Naga World, can you give some love in the comments? 
Uh, can you give some love in the comments? Uh, Zander Vaughn, first a uh, glory. Yeah, first win uh, for the game. And as we see, Matt, we have a very, very interesting guest indeed. Uh, I believe that is uh, our good friend uh, from uh, uh, Malaysia, which is Muhammad Haikal, is in the chat group. I hope he is doing fine. Um, but Matt, anything can happen in football. One mistake can lead to a disaster, Matt. Yeah, that, that is football, man. For, you know, football, they call it the uh, world's most beautiful game. At the same time, it's cruel as well. <laughs> you know, it can break your heart, you know. So, yeah, things like that can happen. And uh, I feel, let's see if uh, Jorel or Team Wong Ravut is able to uh, put on a good show. Because early on, we saw it's pretty much very one-sided match. And uh, Nagawol was taking the best out of everything. United uh, City looked a little bit shaky in their start. Uh, maybe things were not heated up yet and hopefully in the second match things can change the cipher and uh, let's hope he gets the morale boost that he needed and uh, he pushes off in this game and brings out the best of him yep so looking at these two teams uh i believe a united city fc using a back five uh, it is interesting matt whenever you're using a very very uh defensive uh formation for example five at the back i mean you also know your full backs have to go up and down up and down very very uh strong attacking minded if not uh the attack on the wings will collapse and nothing will come into fluoration as we can see nagawa is attacking almost instantaneously trying to find options however this time around so many defenders they just got boxed in man yeah, it seems like a bright start from Nagawol and uh, they have been pulling up with really good tackles strongly there and this could be a chance for Team Wong Rafa and it seems like the first goal might go into the way of Nagawol team and the Cambodian team quite first and that is the goal that we've all been waiting for and what a goal the, uh, it has been to Cypher. Team Wong Rafa started the match aggressively and he got the result he wanted. Wait, I'm scratching my head for a moment, Matt. I believe the keeper went out first. The keeper had already taken a hold of that ball. The keeper, it seems like, went past the keeper. And I say that this is not the defender's fault. Yeah, the defenders should, should be defending more. But, oh my goodness, the keeper's handling is just horrendous. Where did the ball go? Straight in between the legs. That is just not a good day to start a match however we must give credit to Nagawa where team Vong Ravut finds an opening did not stop and because of his persistence in attacking he is rewarded with the first goal Matt yeah what's even funny is the uh, goalkeeper arguing there saying that you know the guys did not look after the fans but then the defenders say you know your handling was pretty much uh, you know it's like a Sunday <laughs> league but you know <laughs> that is the communications but never mind and it seems like Nagawal might add another one from here. And there you go, another shot. Well played this time. And uh, that's uh, much more improvement by the goalkeeper. And still, Team Wong Ravut inside the box. He's not done yet. He might want to get another one. And that pass was a little bit sloppy. He recovered again. Here he comes. And the ball is well, well defended. Well, well pushed off. But unfortunately, not good enough. And this time, the attack is still with the likes of Nagawal. Team Wong Ravu inside the box. And that's going to be a corner. Yep, it's going to be a corner kick again for Team Nagawa, who got the first goal in the early, early minutes. And we see Jorel Zachary flies to punch the ball away. And again, another corner. This time around, still very, very close by to the keeper. Uh, I believe that throughout this tournament, Matt, we haven't seen, or should I say, if memory serves correctly, uh a goal via a corner but we did see one i forgot which game but only once only once out of a two-day match a 10 set game so having a set piece which uh leads to a corner and a goal is very very hard in this game man yeah that is something that they really need to uh be careful of and maybe for now not to lose the ball in a very dangerous position and here comes Nagawa, Tinbong Robert could not go for the shot but I believe that is going to be a penalty if I'm not mistaken he was inside the ball 
And he did not. <laughs> hey, serious lah. Oh, that's oh no. Oh, okay. <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> that, thankfully, that's not a penalty because they basically tangled each other there. And I really believe that should not be a penalty. But let's see uh, the uh, performance by United City FC seems like much more shaky actually, and that's going to be a free kick. And if he's able to convert from this free kick, it will be fantastic. And uh, let's see. What's going to happen? He takes one and what a catch by the goalkeeper. Easy. That is simple and just just too good. Uh, if that was actually a penalty, I would be surprised if the referee <laughs> will be shaken to the core because of the uh, of the fan. But we see how Tim Von Ravut is still going for one more. But this time he just finds it. He does find the back of the net again. Number 20 from Team Nagawa this time around is not the keeper's mistake. It was by sheer power of the striker with a powerful shot. The keeper does try to parry this time around. If I'm a little bit more critical, it's the defender's a big, big error that leads to this goal, man. Yeah, there's nobody you can blame over here. It's a solid defensive error over there. You can see defenders are not blocking the other player who's running freely. And uh, maybe the marking was a little late when we see the uh, goal scoring opportunity came from the left foot and he just strikes in. It's 2 0, and it seems like Nagarol are basically on the top of their game. Yep, the defensive line of Team Un uh, United City FC. Um, a lot of error has been made, a lot of critical errors that lead to a goal. Uh, which needs to be improved. However, we still got more time to at least equalize the game, take it to 2-2, because right now it's only 28 minutes has the less. But however, let's see how a team of Von Ravot is attacking in numbers, attacking with purpose, looking for options to go into the penalty area. He does find it central with a nice through ball. But this time around, it was not in the right side, or should I say the correct side, uh, where the, his striker partner is running so it goes straight into the hands of the goalkeeper man yeah and that's another warning coming from uh, team naga will actually and here they come again it's a defensive error the pass was not clean enough and here comes team Von Ravut. and the ball was a little wide maybe took it from his left foot actually there's not enough power to uh, bring the ball on the air go for a uh, land to air strike actually but man Came closer, but not close enough. And it's still 2-0. Nothing has changed. But it seems like a very good start by Naga will decipher. They have been... Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. And this time we see the ball still being driven around the box. And this could be a goal-scoring opportunity. And the ball lands. Not in the back of the net. But unfortunately, it's straight towards the, uh, the uh, defender's legs, actually. But that's not going to be enough. And this time... Maybe another chance to make it 3 0. And that is not going to be 3 0, anyways. Wow. At this rate in time, I am not so sure if the opponent, or should I say, oh, nice back heel, but the thunder the shot on the left foot of this, a number 20 player who scored two already. Uh, possibly that was his weaker foot, not the best of attack. He went so far off target. I believe that the amount of pressure given by the opponent from Team Naga, look at that kind of pass. That is just murderous in my point of view. Guilty of a capital one of a lost game because you are giving away possession so cheaply in my point of view. Possibly what Jorel need to do is just need to calm down. Nice attack. Take it slow. Take it smooth. Take it steady. In the penalty area, he goes with a goal. That's what I'm talking about. Stay composed, stay calm, stay cool and have a chill because you can do it. You have the idea, but is it enough to stop uh, the onslaught from Team Naga World, Matt? Yeah, it seems like game on in my eye, Decipher. He got the goal that he wanted before half time. will be approaching uh, the second half with so much of a uh, morale boost. He has what it takes so far. And now, right now, he found the uh, goal-scoring opportunity. He knows how to do it again. And uh, let's see, it's all up to Nagavol right now. Either we will see much more defensive error coming from Nagavol or either United City FC. But on the other side, 
we can see it is a little much game on for both of them. It's not done yet. And this time we see Nagavol maybe, maybe right now. And that is going wide. You know, you know what's the interesting part over here, Decipher? We can see United City FC improves a lot in terms of attacking. But when it comes to defence, it's still a little bit average in my eye. They, they're just not up to the par where we see uh, Nagawal players getting inside easily like there's no defender standing around. Yep, but what is also equally astonishing, Matt, is the finishing from Nagawal. Yes, they do got two goals, but every time they look dangerous in the penalty area, um, it seems like the finesse was a little bit off, the shot was a little bit wide, but this time around, maybe for one more, still back with Nagawal, but the ball does go out and it's going to be half time. Uh, we go into extra, t uh, sorry, we go into second half and maybe a foul. Ouch. That hurts the knee, man. Uh, <laughs> if that was an actual real life, I'm pretty sure he's already on the uh, ground, actually. But it seems like a good cut. And uh, let's see where this is going to take them. So it's still 1-0, 2-1, -0, two, two actually. But that one goal actually was caught by United City FC will be a big, major boost for him to enter the second half. So now... Uh, but before uh, Matthew will do some notes taking about what happened, let me take you on a journey in this second half where we see Jorel sends it central, heads it beautifully. Oh my goodness! Beautiful header! That was a powerful header from Jorel Zachary. The keeper could not tip the ball over, it was so powerful goes to the back of the net and it's 2-2 that's what i'm talking about for team united city fc he just needs to calm down stay cool ice cold and try to find an opening this cross was beautiful jumps beautifully but the keeper i'm not so sure what kind of a defensive move the keeper wants to do but he tapped it in the wrong side of the goal he showed supposed to tip the ball over the crossbar instead he just assists the ball going into the back of the net so that is 2-2 and i believe matthews might be done with his notes writing what is going on yeah i, I think that is what i've been telling earlier on the cypher all you need is that one goal before half time and you will instantly get the boost that you need on the second half because right now the pressure will not be with united city fc it would be definitely on nagawal because uh, Team Wong Rabu definitely knows that all he needs is one goal to square up the game and here we go. We saw a fine example of how it basically took a major impact on Jorel Zachary who just got the second goal and right now it's all back to square one. Let's see who is going to get the winning goal. So we are now at level pegging. Whoever wins this game, for example, if the guy's in blue who is attacking with a foul, very, very venomous shot straight to the keeper. Let's just say if Nagawa wins this, yep, that marks the end of this game. Uh, but if you see FC, or should I say United City FC, the boys in yellow, the Golden Boys, wins this game. We are going into the deciding match, a three uh, game afterwards. But wow, quick passes to the back of the net. Maybe for Jarrell Golasso. Elvis has landed on this field, ladies and gentlemen. Elvis just came back alive and show what is the beautiful sweet music of football is all about coming from behind it's three to two going in favor of Jorel Zachary from United City FC man yeah we can see how things shifted from A to Z immediately there is Cypher and we see Jorel literally took everything on his side he went into the second half strongly and here we go he got the result he needed and boy the team is on the top and United City FC are on a roller coaster right in front yep Finally, I believe that Jorel Zachary from United City FC has found his mojo back. His mojo has come alive. However, he needs to defend, defend well because Team Von Ravut is pretty deadly in attacking. But this time around, the deadliness of attack is not from Team Cambodia. It's actually from the guys, the Golden Boys, which is Team United City FC, man.
Yeah, so it seems like game on and let's see where this is going to take them as we are already on the uh, 63rd minute and maybe Nagawa could strike for now but unfortunately we see much more defensively improved team that is United City FC who are rolling the ball real quickly there and uh, that is going to be a costly mistake going to be giving a big chance for Team Wong Rabut of Nagawa and from the right can we see a goal from here he takes the turn but not enough no space well shut down and all that Jorel needs to be really careful of is not to lose the ball in the final third decipher yep and also looking at the crowd yes we are currently in game number one United City FC going up against Anagawa uh, after this also we're gonna have United City FC going up against Burirab and I believe a lot of people is from team Persib Bandung Persib Bandung game will be the third game of the match but let's focus man let's see 19 minutes left can we see Naga will make a comeback can we see Naga will make a comeback or is it a going to be a magical show shown by the golden boys going into the penalty area he tries to sniff one sniff two sniff three oh my lord have mercy that again and again man is just not going in favor of team Naga World, Matt. Yeah, he came closer, but man, look at that. He should have been scoring that. He had the uh, space to get it all on target, but unfortunately, his shot was way wide. Not even the goalkeeper got a touch of it. So it shows that how wide the ball was. And maybe right now, we might see United City FC taking everything under control in their eyes, but unfortunately, the ball lands in the uh, back line, actually. That's going to be a corner now. And the corner is going to go for United City FC. Floats one in. And the header is not enough. And well cleared away. The ball is still around the danger zone. Not much has been done by United City FC to keep the ball inside. And here comes Team Pong Rabu. Not enough to penetrate through. And the ball is with the likes of United City FC. As we see, the ball mm. is shifting from position from right to left and uh, still that's an amazing pass oh he has the space can he dip can he do it oh no this high five. wow almost one more goal a mistake and a defensive line this time around man that tackle uh the referee i believe the referee did decide to play an advantage uh yeah but the referee does show a yellow card for a very very tough tackle a very hard tackle uh, but yet, it's still going to be a goal kick with 10 minutes left on the clock. Uh, if the situation maintained as it is, I think we will go into the dreaded third game. Not golden goal, but a decider match of 90 minutes of full drama in action. But however, the ball is in the penalty area, possibly for Naga World! The last goal! Beautiful comeback! Finishing what a composure move as butter move is fast fast is smooth and that goal is absolutely the epitome of the spirit of not giving up man yeah and that's what you get when you don't give up this either that's what you get when you keep trying and there you go he finally found the net and it's 3-3 it's game on again and uh, this time the pressure is on both teams both players who is going to get the final goal? Who is going to get that goal that is going to decide the match? Either we might go for the next match or this is going to go one way and that is Naga Wolf's way. But the thing is, Matt, let's just say if it's still a draw, uh, we, will, we will go into extra time. And if it's still a draw, uh, we will go into penalty. So at the end of the day, the guys, the, goal, the, the golden goal, oh, what the mistake is that? And that is a goal that might fills the deal. As I was talking about the possibility going into extra time, no, nope, no sorry, Bob is needed. We might see a United City FC making a comeback. Wow, we what a game indeed! What a goal indeed! I believe Matt is writing some notes questioning himself what was going on into the back line what defending error was that that was a horrible way 
a horrible way for you to concede a goal. This is almost the oh. same thing that happened uh, previously uh, to uh, jo uh, Jorel just now. A mistake, a defensive error, and a very, very nice kick to the right side of the post. And it goes in. Yes, indeed. Bang, bang, boogie. And we might see a, uh, a game ended and we might restart a third game. However, the ball is still alive. The ball is still in possession of Team Nagawa. Nagawa will be going in, possibly, maybe, could not go through at this point in time with four minutes of extra time. Time of an is the essence right now. Will we see a final attack that can raise the roof? We will see an attack that will bring the floor, or should I say the stadium upside down. A chance in a penalty area. Nice defending the ball. That's clear. And it's going to be a goal kick. Wowee. Yeah, it came close that is cipher, but unfortunately we see United City FC are on their top performance. And it seems like uh, a complete turnover by the team actually. They were in the first match were pretty much the performance was not good enough. But boy, they turned everything apart. They turned everything around. And it seems like we will be going into game number three. So, in this game alone, we already have 10 goals scored, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, currently, we are at 99 goals of total goals scored in this tournament. Wow. Ah, there you go. The goal count is just keep on increasing and increasing. Hopefully, we don't hear Pele saying, you know, stop the count. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Pele. Who doesn't love Pele? Everybody loves Pele. Talking about Pele I'm just gives me a Ronaldo fan like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know yeah. what? It, it gives me goosebumps about Pele, you know. I mean, looking at the squad that was gifted to him back then, it was a load, buckloads of superstars in that Brazilian team. Even the subs was also superstars, Matt, during Pele's time. What a team, right? Yeah, but uh, oh. he had really good competition back then. And uh, football was a little bit different in his generation. So uh, he had his time and he was a great player in his time. Unfortunately, things right now are going <laughs> pretty much against him actually in terms of uh, goal scoring records are being broken by Ronaldo. <laughs> yep, and also not to forget if memory serves me correctly in the top five, uh, I believe a Malaysian international in the name of Mokhtar Dahari he is also considered one of those deadly strikers. I believe he's it's currently in the top five with uh, 80 plus goal, if memory serves me correctly. Yeah, uh, they have, so he has the uh, highest international goal scoring record, actually. Yeah, yeah back then, because uh, I believe first place is Ronaldo, second uh, was uh, the one from Iran, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, and then also Malaysia is also in that bunch. So I believe there you go, the goals, but. Matt, this game, I believe it is just sure bad luck for Team Ravut. The finishing was a little bit off, off and off, Matt. Yeah, that's, it's not the master plan by them. Uh, this time we see Nagawal pretty much went out of ideas. And immediately we see United City FC taking every opportunity there is. All the opportunities that they missed in the first match. Uh, in this second match, it came, it was like written for... Uh, team United City FC and that's what remarkable about this match and that's a worthy one and uh, yeah it's a good win by United City FC in my eye yep it was a good win and it was a stunning win so Matt uh, here is more highlights I think this is uh, the uh, the goal that oh my goodness completely a powerful shot across the box keeper had no chance but I just want to see that last goal. Here it is. I think this is the last goal. A defensive error goes through, seals the deal for team. United City FC, uh, the Golden Boys, uh, gets one. Come back after being dropped down in the first game 3-0. Comes back in style for 3 man. Yeah, and I feel like uh, that's a big defensive error you do not want to do. But then remember this, if I told you, you know, the pressure is going to be on both of the players because the game is pretty much spread up at the final moment. So whoever makes the biggest mistake are going to get punished. And we see the mistake came from Nagawal. The pressure was too much. And 
we see how it was all taken really well by United City FC. And they showed no mercy in the second match. And off we go for the third match. Yep, no mercy is given, no quarters given. Daggers between the teeth behind enemy lines trying to get victory. So I believe we are still waiting uh, for the game to start. But guys, actually there is another announcement we want to make. Mm -hmm. But we will make that announcement after the deciding match. So shall we go, man? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's, let's go. go into game number three. Yeah. Right. So there you go. Game number three again. It seems like United City FC up against Naga Wool FC. It's not done yet. Nothing has been confirmed. Who's going to get the three points? Yeah, both teams came closely. But let's see. This match is going to decide who will bring back that important three points. Either it's United City of uh, Jorel Zachary or it's going to be Team Wong Rabut. And Naga will FC the team from Cambodia. So let's see, decipher what is the entire stakes in this match. Well, the entire stakes, as you know, is that three point. Is that a crucial three point to see where they stand in this tournament? Because, Matt, this is a group stage, like how you love to say it. It ain't no sprint, it is a marathon. And I believe we are currently at the end of the marathon because for all of this team man it's their last game of the group stage yeah and right now i guess once the group stage is done then it's gonna be all sprint and go there decipher no more playing games no more uh trying and errors and you know you need to really take the risk you really need to be brave enough to face any opponent that's going to come on your way and get through the next round because you're not going to get another chance anymore Yep, you only have one shot. Would you take it? Or would you let the chance fly? Wait, that sounds like a lyric, but I think I messed it up a bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, either, my goodness. Either you take it or you just go back home. Just simple as that. It's time to lose yourself in the moment. Let it all yeah. fly. United City FC with a very, very park the bus with 5-2 three formation however for team nagawa playing with a more uh irregular 4-3-3 uh i believe in a sense that uh the cm will play a little bit wide possibly as a mazella which is uh, a wide midfielder and with an ss a shadow striker to act like a deep lying forward and mm -hmm. also uh shout out also to our viewers who just tune in welcome and shout out also, Matt, to uh, our supporters from Team Ho Chi Minh City, which is Min Fook Jr. Hello to awesome. handsome commentators. Awesome. Oh, my. I think that awesome. is uh, awesome. a little bit too much. <laughs> awesome to you, bro. Yeah, the thanks, Red thank Battleship. You for the and hopefully you guys are enjoying the uh, matches that's being broadcast today. But Decipher, let's have a look on the mm -hmm. match. I feel right. Uh, Naga Wool is going to go for a very balanced attack over here. And if they get the chance to score, they're going to go all out. And I believe they're going to start this match aggressively. Hence why we see United City FC uh, playing a back five. And they're going to contain the match and go for full counter. And let's see which strategy, which tactics is going to work as we are underway for the match number three between Naga Wool FC up against United City FC. And this could be a chance for Naga Wool FC. Oh, no. Almost. And that is not going to be a mistake. And yes, there was a little bit of a mistake. But the ball somehow lands in the legs of United City FC players. Well, we see Team Vong Ravut from Team Nagawa is very, very proficient in attacking first. In fact, in two of the games, Matt, he scored first every time when he has the first attack. However, we see how the ball does drop back. But good defending. It was like almost a 5 plus 2. That is almost eight or seven players defending at the edge of the penalty area for United City FC, Matt. Yeah, United City FC, I'm pretty sure they're going to go for the full counter there. They're not going to try to press the team harder. The only team that's going to press this team harder is going to be Nagawal FC. And uh, right now we see the counter is on and this could be a chance, but unfortunately that's going to be a flagged offside. Saw that coming actually. Yeah, it's a pretty much clear offside. And that is what United City FC are going to do, Decipher. They're going to play counter. They're going to wait till Nagawal loses the ball. And immediately, 
goes and makes the uh, ball sent on top again. But this time, that's going to be another offside. Yeah. And nothing changes, actually. Both teams are playing offsides over here. Yep, true. And looking at the formation again, as you mentioned, Matt, uh, for Team United City FC, is more playing on a counter-attack, a more direct football. And if they do decide to play wide, they need the help of the fullback. But, but, look at this again. How Team yeah. Von Ravut is running into the penalty area. He does has a chance to send it central. But, whoa, in the final shot, maybe lost uh, the balance. We look again, that was a nice true ball going forward in between the centre-backs and the full-backs. There was some chance, or should I say there was some room, but the final product was not good enough because the striker was out of balance. Yeah, what surprises me is that he somehow took the shot in the end. And uh, that shows how aggressively Nagabal has been uh, pressing on. And let's see from this counter by United City FC. Floats one in and well headed away. And this time we see the ball is with the likes of uh, Team Pong Ravut, the uh, 27 years old player who's been actually playing uh, Pro Evolution Soccer e football since 2009. So he has a really good experience from all the previous series of this match, this, uh, this game actually. And uh, he has been the back-to-back uh, -back champion for VTAC Gaming Center Cambodia back in 2017 and 18. And he's been the runner-up for EFC Cafe Cambodia past competition. And right now, he's over here facing up against uh, Jorel of United City FC. So that is going to be an offside. Yep, it was a clear offside, good offside trap uh, given uh, by uh, Joral just now, uh, trying to kill the momentum, trying to kill the attack being made by Team Nagawal, who again come back attacking in numbers, trying to find that center space. A mistake by the defender and he got punished. The mistake has been punished. Oh my goodness, again and again, the backline defense of Team United City FC is so much in shambles right now. A clear suspect in this game. What is going on in the backline defense? You have like six players, but nobody was marking well, and it was broken in pieces with one true ball, man. Yeah, and this is what happens when you play a back five and a very a uh, compact defensive system because you know you're going to invite players coming inside of you. You know you're going to take all the pressure coming in. Of course, you're going to know as well that the opposition team is going to press you real hard and trying to make you uh, do or force an error actually. And this is a clear opportunity, a clear chance, a clear example that we see how mistakes can happen when the team press is too high and uh, a team like United City FC are not able to contain the defensive line or stay compact or stay organized and making cheap uh, mistakes actually yeah losing the ball cheaply and that is where you do not want to do and right now we see maybe you can go for a redemption but unfortunately that's not going to be any source of redemption over here and maybe he got the ball back and let's see Jorel is up to for now ah Ooh. that's going to be a free kick it's definitely going to be a free kick and I believe this is a really good chance for United City FC to get a goal back. Yep, to claw one back, but it looks like a little bit far, unless if you are Cristiano Super Ronaldo, <laughs> if you want to call it that way. The ball did fly a bit high and a bit wide, not troubling the keeper. But again, Matt, in this tournament, we saw only two players, uh, which is Liha Antoine from uh, Team Buriram United uh, and also from Malaysia, Noor Haikal, uh, who made goals from direct free kick in their games, Matt. Yeah, those, those two players are basically, uh, I have nothing much to describe actually they, they have been a solid players top performers and uh, let's see uh, in this uh, match day we will be able to see some uh, goals from them and right now we see the ball is with the likes of United City FC of Philippines uh, basically trying to get a goal back of course it's only one nil the uh, margin is not much large actually it's pretty close but uh, if you want to get the goals in you cannot be making mistakes like how 
we see earlier on. And this time we see Jorel running forward there. And his efforts there was well blocked. And this time we see lots of defensive error coming through. And maybe this time, oh, that's a very easy way to lose the ball to Cypher. He should have just rushed in. Yep, and also Matt, possibly the touch was a little bit too hard. A uh, very hard touch and also got challenged by behind. As you know, Matt, the physics for this game is very, very realistic indeed. A small touch can make you lose balance like no one. Like you're walking on thin ice. But we see how Jorel, oh, beautiful skill move. That is absolutely world class. Going into the penalty area to equalize. But it did not go through. The ball is headed away. But still, could that be a consolation? But nope, I believe Team Von Ravut was able to pick up the loose ball, Matt. Yeah, I feel like, you know, uh, decision making is really, really important when you're up in front. And this time, we might see Nagamo going to go for a shot, but unfortunately, well blocked again. And uh, I feel the Cypher, United City FC had the chance, had what it takes to get that equalizer, but they did not make the right decision. He said he went for the lob ball. I believe that he should have just went for a ground pass instead. Would have given more chance to uh, put the ball in the back of the land and it seems like it's still one nil nothing has changed unless we see someone scoring in the second half yep as we see a support a former tef pot uh keep up the great work hashtag naga so i believe that is a fan from team nagawa from cambodia uh, nagawa is leading currently however loses the ball in transition tries to do a back heel pass However, Matt, he did not look where who was behind. And a come again, maybe for Tim Ravot. If the ball does float into the penalty area, the follow-up was absolutely crucial. Absolutely beautiful to ensure that two goal has been secured for Team Nagawa by Tim Vog Ravot, Matt. Yeah, you know what I like about Nagawa this hyper? Since the start of the match, they did not stop pressing. They were basically pressing as much as they can and trying to force an error on uh, United City FC and that's where you see the goals coming that's where you see all this magical uh, chance creation that's been happening for this team yeah the ball got a little bit deflected off the goalkeeper but unfortunately the ball's still in the danger zone and we see Team Wong Rabu taking the opportunity taking everything in his hands and that shows why they have been really really uh, balance with the attacks we saw early on during the formation setup they did not want to go for uh, deep defending they do not want to go for all attack but from the formation we can see everything is pretty much balanced and that shows they are approaching the game with bravery they are approaching the game with confidence on the other side United City FC knows that how much pressing that this team could make and they went for full defensive and if you're gonna go for full defensive mode you're gonna play a back five you need to make sure that your defensive line are really solid and compact. Yep, and being really solid, but before I go into the game, let's see what can United City FC conjure up in this attack could not go through. And what I was going to say, Matt, uh, for Team Nagawa, who is attacking just now with only three person going up against six, seven defenders, Matt. Five back line with two CDMs. That is just superb skill move. That is going to be a card. That was a late, late tackle. And the referee was chasing for the player with a straight yellow. No questions asked. That was a very, very dangerous scissor kick straight from behind. And it's going to be a free kick for team. Uh, not, oh, sorry, for United City FC, Matt. Yeah, and let's see if United City FC are able to uh, get at least something from this set piece. But unfortunately, we are already one hour pass in this match and it's been 2-0 going in a favor for Nagavul FC who started the match really really strongly and uh, they know what they're doing it seems like a uh, team Wong Ravut really has a plan and he is executing the plan perfectly so far and uh, this time we see team Wong Ravut gets the ball back turns the ball in front it all takes three attackers to make that attacking alive again unfortunately it's well defended oh no that's going to be a mistake but somehow the ball is with the likes of united city fc but what is interesting about this team is this 
they are well organized. Yes, you can see a pass coming through, and maybe he might go for the shot, but well saved again by the goalkeeper. And it seems like there's going to be a fall coming through, and the referee's not happy about something. But yeah, talking about this Naga Wool team again, this Ivo, you can see it all takes three players to start the attack, to finish the attack. And even if they lose the ball, we can see the defenders are pretty much compact at the back, alongside with the midfielders guarding the back and ensuring that United City players does not penetrate into the defence. And this could be another chance, and straight to the hands of the goalkeeper. But this Ivo, in my eye, I feel Nagawa has been a top side for now. Yep, this time around, Nagawa has read uh, the game style of uh, Joel Zachary from Team United City FC. Maybe an equaliser. Oh, almost. Again, this number 10 player who scored a goal by a header. This time around, the header was not accurate enough to challenge the goalkeeper. Yes, the goalkeeper did jump at least to close down the gap. But it just went off target. And of course, Tef Pot. Uh, we are reading your comments. If you have anything, just drop a comment on uh, Facebook and social media. We would love to respond. 74 minutes has gone. Oh, that was a tough tackle. That was a pretty, pretty harsh tackle on the number 14. It was a late tackle and I believe it's going to be a yellow card. Yeah, that's going to be a yellow card right now. And uh, he needs to be really careful not to go into harsh tackles. Yes, he's losing over there and uh, to make cheap errors like that again and this time we see that's a fantastic idea coming by uh, United City FC on the right the Philippines team could not get it through again Team Vong Ravu he, especially his defensive line has been really really solid decipher and uh, it's all about trials and errors by United City FC they, they're going for the cross strategy early on as we see the through passes are just not working the players are staying in their line so organized not leaving space and even if they caught up they try to cover it real real quick again and here comes Nagawal again and back again for Team Von Rabu to group score again uh, but this time the ball uh, he, lo he loses possession there and United City FC are on a roll yep on a roll as we see right now but is it enough Matt? with seven minutes for two go it's a very very hard request it's a very very hard request for this player from the philippines which is jorel zachary uh with five minutes time is taking so fast yet so slowly in our eyes maybe for one go but this time around the shot is straight to the goalkeeper formality is waiting Three points is now in hand. Can we see one more goal for Nagawa? Attacking in numbers three against four, three against five. But he could not make the last turn, Matt. We are just waiting, Matt, for the referee to blow the final whistle of this first game, Matt. Yeah, it's pretty much written there that Nagawa is going to bring back the three points. I can say it's an advance. Congratulations to them. But uh, we can see how strong how dominant this team has been, especially uh, Team Bong Ravut, who knows what he was doing, who has his plans all set up. And boy, he executed perfectly in my eye, Decipher. Yep, so I believe that is the, uh, the replay. But again, Matt, it was a well-deserved uh, win for Team Naga World, in my point of view. Yeah, it's a pretty much really good game by Naga World. Yeah, in the second match, uh, we see a big error coming from Team Wong Ravut. But unfortunately, that was not the end of it. He, he approached the third match so strongly, so confidently. We already saw it from his formation when he was setting up the team. He was going, he was, he's going to go for a full attack and defense at the same time. So that shows how confident this team has been on the other side. We already saw United City FC had a plan, which is to go full on counters, but the counter opportunities were not much as we see Inagabal FC closing down all the players that were starting to make uh, chance creations and stuff. Yeah. Yep, so this was the header. It was a nice cross. It was the nice cross, but however, it just could not connect properly. So that, with having said that, I believe the final scoreline was 2-0. Uh, 
uh, going in favour of Team Nagawa, who is going back uh, with a full three points. There you go, Matt. It's uh, two to one in aggregate. First game is 3 0. Second game is 4 3, going in favour of Jorel. However, Team Avon Ravut came back from behind with a 2 a, a two zero game, Matt. Yeah, he came back, and I believe that it's a worthy uh, performance by Nagawal FC, actually. Yeah, they lost the uh, second match to uh, United City FC after a big error, actually. Yeah, that was more of a chess game at the end. Who's going to make the checkmate move? But yeah, in the end of the day, we see Nagawal came back in the third match. They showed who they are. They showed the quality that they had, and they got the three points that they deserve. Yep, got the three points they deserve. Uh, so, having said that, Matt, so there will be no more matches for Team United City FC. I mean, for the, I believe, the Elites session because they have already done. They still have one more game, which is for the Star. Uh, but having said so, Matt, that marks the end of this first game. So, a total of, that is like a lot, 10, 12 goals scored in that game, Matt. Yeah, it has been an amazing match so far, Fizz. And uh, yeah, the goal scoring uh, records has been, you know, increasing and increasing and increasing. So I'm still really excited to see uh, what are going to, what is it going to be at the end? How many players are going to score really massive goals, and how many teams are going to go back with, uh, in terms of uh, goal scoring difference? Yeah. Yep. So I believe that marks the end of this first game. So let's go. Uh, to show you guys what is the upcoming game, which is game number two for the Elite Series Jum. Let's go, let's go. All ah, right, so there man. you go. Yeah. The next match, Decipher, the next match, that is the star match, actually. So we will be seeing uh, Poncholo Bugas of United City FC up against Chiti Pat Tangklang of Buriram. United. These are actual footballers who are going to show uh, their best performance that they could on the virtual pitch. So if you guys are basically ready, we will bring you that real, real soon. But there you go. This is the next match that's coming up. So you should not be going anywhere. <laughs> yep. So don't go anywhere. We will take a short break. And once we return, we will show you the second game out of the six. We have six games today. So this is game number two. Again, it's going to be Pocholo Bugas going up against Chitipat Tank Lang from Buriram United. It's the star match. We will take a short break and we will be back very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.
What is going on, everybody? Welcome back, welcome back. This is your big man, this cipher, and also my good muddy, my good friend, since all of commentary, Matthews Isaac, as your official commentator for Champions E Football. Matt, we have done game number one. Game number two is on the way. Yeah, game number two is definitely going to be on the way, man. And this time we will have the star match, and I'm really looking forward to that as well. Yeah, hey, eh, Matt. I'm getting a word, huh? That there was a parcel given uh, to. Did you get a parcel today? Yeah, I, I mean, did I you get a, something did, from the? Yeah. E I mean, did you get a parcel? I mean, I mean, I need to check something out. There was something so special about our parcel today. Are you going to show mm. something, Matt? Ah, uh, maybe I might. Maybe I not. <laughs> maybe not. I mean, actually, I got I got this something from from the parcel. Uh, yeah. it was sent to me. Uh, actually, I want to show you guys. Uh, it's maybe, something. Maybe you're a little late, that is. Maybe you're a little late. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I got this number, you know. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, I have number sixteen actually. <laughs> I got this number seven, man. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, okay, guys. Ah, uh, so guys, this just came into our mailbox today. Uh, it's eh, my camera is so sing it, ah. <laughs> All right, wait. Let me get my mic into place first. <laughs> All right, guys. This is the official jersey for Champions E Football. I'm not sure if I'm holding it up correctly. Can you see? Can you see yours, Matt? I can see. I, I think yours. you went too near there, Decipher. We only can see the uh, the blue color actually. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Matt. That's how you can so it. yours. <laughs> Uh, so actually, thank you for the organizer for sending this beautiful jersey, uh, which is a Champions E Football official jersey, and uh, I would love to wear it because right now we are on duty. Maybe soon we will wear it. Good quality. Uh, it's just for us, man. But is it for us? <laughs> well, hmm. I'm not say? sure. Uh, we, the let's viewers just say, happy about this. <laughs> uh, I mean, do, I mean, do you, the viewers who are watching live right now, do you want your hands on this official Champions E Football jersey? If you want it right now, I really need your help. Can you say yes in the Facebook comment? Can you say yes in the Facebook comment? Because these are official uh, Champions E Football jersey. Uh, I I don't want to lift mine because uh. If I lift mine, it will fill the whole camera. But yeah, Matt got the number 16. Well, I got mm, the number 7. Ah. So again, thank you to our, uh, our sponsors and our organizers. So I believe, Matt, uh, we will go straight into the game. Guys, if you want this jersey, I need your help. Spam yes in the comment. So let's yeah, go, Matt, I, 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 into yeah. hmm? uh, the second yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, do you want to say game. anything? Not much, but all I want to say is that, you know, if you really want the jersey, it's just simple. Just, you know, type it yes. <laughs> just just type yes. And yeah. uh, we let the admin sort it out. So let's go into the next game, which is admin. Let's show the slides. And there you go. Uh... The game number two. And that is the star match where we see uh, Ponch Lebugas of United City FC up against Chiti Pak Tanklang of Buri Rama United. So this is going to be interesting to watch because remember in the uh, star matches there's no group stages, all knockout stages. So whoever wins, going to go through. Whoever loses, then goodbye. <laughs> mm, yeah. So I believe we are getting ready into the game. So I believe the both players should be ready. Uh, as you said, Matt, whoever wins advance, but whoever loses is out of this tournament. Yeah, so I guess we'll be going into the match. And uh, let's see who has the best out of it. It's Buriram United up against United City FC, where we early on saw uh, the team was performed by Jarrell Zachary. But this time we have a different player. It is the actual star of the team with his uh, Pontelo Bugas. Yeah. Yep, so we uh, we attack from left to right. Uh, in the blue kit is Burinam United. And while the guys in the yellow, or should I say the golden uh, boys, is United City FC. 
Well, Matt, as you mentioned, are real footballers in the digital world. This is absolutely classic. Straight through ball, possibly going into the belt. The lays it off the follow-up. It's beautiful, man. Oh, my God. The follow-up is absolutely stunning. Suprachai. Chai that... Because this is an official team match, so the names are from the real players. 1-0 in just after five minutes, Matt. Yeah, a fantastic start by Chiripat Tanklang, of course. And it seems like he got the first goal, actually. But remember, the long way to go. Yes, he got the first goal he needed. But let's see what are the response of United City FC. Poncho Labugas, who is yet to show what he got, actually. Wow, that is just nice. Quick touch football in between the defenders. And I would say, wow, that is just absolutely nice. The number nine, a poacher in disguise and gets to the back of the net. 1-0, Matt. Yeah, it's 1-0 right now. And let's see where this is going to take uh, both of the team, actually. And on the other side, we see Ponchelo Bugas, who needs the first goal. Yeah, unfortunately, the goal came earlier on for Kiribat Tanklang of Buriram United. Remember, as I said earlier on, we still have a lot of time and things can change in this match as we are underway for the star match. If you are basically the supporter of the uh, players, actually do give them the support that they need on the uh, comment box, actually. And uh, right now, we are underway to see who is going to go through the next stage. Asia is going to be Chiribat uh, Tanklang or it's going to be Ponchelo Bugas of uh, United City FC. So on the ball we see it's Buriram United loses the ball again and that is going to be a free kick. Huh? How was that a free kick? <laughs> How uh, was that? Is it just a normal ball, touch? Sure. <laughs> ah, it's just a, a soft touch. Contact, okay, yeah. it's a free kick. Yeah, but no foul. That should not be... I mean, no card. If that was a card, that would be atrocious refereeing in my book. So, guys... Uh, we are now in our star match. Whoever wins this set will advance because it's a best of three. Hopefully, we see some exciting game. Now, going into the penalty area, still open wide. Come inside. The goal is... The goal is just went wide, man. Yeah, he, I think he should have scored that decipher. Uh, maybe he's going to come back again. But, boy, that should be 2-0 up for now. Especially for Chiripat who had the opportunity, he's pressing hard. We see Buriram United has been really, really strong. And uh, Ponchelo Bugas, who is yet to make an impact in this match. As we see, the ball is with the likes of uh, United City FC, who are running really, really good on the top there. Unfortunately, it was cut off just like that. And uh, Buriram United gets the ball back again in the midfield again. That is three players running on the top asking for the uh, through ball actually it's a little bit too much that's going to give the uh, room for defender to chase but never mind here comes Buriram United can we see Chiripat Tanglang getting another goal and that is not going to find the net it's way wide from his left foot and lack of accuracy inside the box again the cipher a little bit of lack of accuracy right there however good effort we need to give credit when it is due uh, almost double up the tally in goal as we see right now Buriram United tries to go again on the attack on the left flank uh, in between the centre back and also the full back or should I say the wide spaces the wide channel however did not go through a panicky moment in the penalty area a little bit of a miscommunication between the keeper and also the defender that could be costly because you know man in the last game it was a goal scored because of that kind of mistake yeah you do not want to make mistakes like that decipher because we know things like that can uh, really spoil the party right now and uh, we see the ball is with the likes of united city fc who are yet to score but right now they might try one from here and here comes uh Ponchler bugas and uh, he could not get inside the box again. Was well guarded by Chitipat Tanklang of Buriram United, who is running on the top real freely. No one stopping him. And he go all the way. Makes the pass, but a little bit too much. Goalkeeper comes out. Oh, the ball is free. And there you go. The second goal comes in. That is goal number two for Buriram United. And boy, it seems like 
Peter Batanglang is the man for the job so far. Oh my goodness, Matt. The keeper did went out. The keeper actually left his line trying to close the gap. However, in doing so, leaving a little bit of space uh, beside him. And when the pass does go through, the keeper clears the ball, but not a powerful clearance. Look at this again. The number nine runs into the penalty area. Through ball to the right. Keeper goes out and defender actually tries to do a short pass. Tries to do a short pass to number six. However, we see the number nine as a poacher with an easy tap in. He was surprised the ball went to him. And Supak Chai, Supak Chai was able to get goal number two for Team Buriram United, man. Yeah, he got the goal and unfortunately, it's not a good start by uh, Ponchalu Bugas of United City FC. They yet to make an impact. Uh, we saw a little bit of a glimpse of them running in and out, but then it's not enough if you want to score goals. And it seems like the deadly threat is all coming from Buriram United. So on the ball again, the City Pat trying to make inside the box again. Wanted to go for the uh, left foot shot, but did not go through as we see the defenders were blocking the uh, entire shot opportunity over there. But he's going to come back again. Here comes the number seven who tries to go for the uh, through balls. Not going to work for him. And unfortunately, the ball right now has shifted directions all the way to United City FC. You know what's the funny part that is, Cypher? United City FC just not getting through the final third, if you realize, in although it's, it has already been 38 minutes right now. Well, not just not going there, but almost the chances that is threatening the keeper, almost zero to none in my point of view. Possession-wise, yes, almost the same, 48-52. But however, going into the penalty area, not so much. But this time around, maybe Pocholo Bugas tries, but it was well intercepted, well blocked. And now running in speed with a lot of fuel to burn. A through ball straight into the midfield area in the penalty area. Goal number three for Team Aburiram United. And it is the number seven, Mike Horn, with a nice stab at the ball. Tiptoeing to the back of the net. And it's 3 0, 42 minutes. Every time Buriram United attack Matt, it's almost a confirmed goal. Yeah, and that's what I like about the team. That's what, that is the reason why the result has been so strong for Chiripat Tanklang so far. As we see, three goals scored by him. And uh, he's showing no mercy at all for the other player, the other team, which is United City FC. I'm not sure this, I'm not sure actually this cipher. Even in the first match, Jorel was not on form. And it seems like Ponchalo Bugas has also the similar start, just like Jorel actually. And that is not yep. pleasing in my eye. It's not pleasing, but look at the time, Matt. We are now heading in through the end of our first half. We see Chitipa right now is enjoying himself. He's like, yep, I'm going to chew on my gum, play some good game, and also scoring goals at my own free will. However, we see Pocholo Bugas trying to break through the defensive line, tries to do a through ball through the center. However, there is no... Uh, team player from United City FC in the edge of the penalty area and the ball rolls. Referee is going to blow the whistle. Referee does not blow the whistle. Referee needs to blow the whistle. Panic in the penalty area. Maybe a chance to add one more. And I believe it did not go to plan, Matt. Yeah, 3-0 and it's a very strong start by Kiki uh, Pak Tang Tang of Buriram United. So let's see in the second half. Unless uh, we see the team talk is all done by United City FC and things can change. But I'm not sure who's going to make the change this either. Either it's going to be Chidipa Tanklang of Buriram United or it's going to be Contra Bugas of United City FC. Yeah, that was a pretty harsh tackle. The referee wants a very, very, uh, giving a very strong warning towards this young player. That was a very hard tackle in my book. However, the referee said, bro, just chill down. Do not do any more tackle of that nature or else I have to resort for a yellow card, Matt. Yep. And uh, right now we see the ball is with the likes of Pontula Bugas. And unfortunately, he hits the other player. Going to be a corner now. It's a good start. 
to uh, basically, you know, get your entire momentum running in the uh, second half for now. And right now we see a ball floated in and the goalkeeper comes out to make the safe actually. And this time, still the ball aced with the likes of United City FC. Running inside, makes the cross again and the header was again saved by the goalkeeper. He's definitely frustrated. The efforts have been denied again. And it seems like Chidipat Tanglang is not showing, not giving any sorts of room or space for Poncho Bugas to get a goal or the first goal for the team decipher. Yep, another corner kick. Floats it central, but it is easy taken by the goalkeeper. You know, uh, Matt, somebody by the name of Chrisman Iqbal said, yes, please send it to Malaysia. Because, Matt, we do have some jerseys. I mean, uh, official Champions eFootball jerseys. But this guy from Malaysia, Chrisman said, yes, please send it to Malaysia. That sounds like a good plan, Matt. Hmm, that's nice. But right now, we go for the shot right there. And Buriram United, Chiti Tanklang has not given up yet he does not want to stay in the comfort zone he wants to add more onto his game and it seems like we see uh, Poncho Le Bugas on the ball again with United City FC running freely on the left but well defended again we see two defenders making the turn immediately to shut him off and uh, this time we see Chiripat Tanklang gets the ball running again Makes the pass in front. Could this be a big chance? And unfortunately loses the ball again. And uh, we see the ball is with the likes of United City FC. Oh, you know what, what reminds me of this decipher? Losing ball in each half. Easy like that. Left and right, right and left. It's like a game of ping pong actually. Like you, you always like to mention. <laughs> and also the speed that they lose the ball is just so, so quick. And right now, 62 minutes has gone. Uh, one hour has gone. We still have another half an hour to go. Where the ball, nice through ball, going through the center. Heavy touch, dropped by his own keeper. And it's going to be a corner kick, I believe. Yes, it is. For Team United City FC. Floats at central. Beautiful header, but it was a little bit too wide. Good try. Just too wide. Yeah, he's been trying and trying. But uh, we see most of his efforts are coming from the air, actually. And uh, not on the ground. We only saw, I think, one chance on the ground earlier on. And the rest all coming from crosses. I think uh, he needs to change his uh, game plan, actually, as we see. Uh, Chidi Tanklang has been a little bit more solid with this defensive line. And on the ball again, we see Buriram United running on the top. Goes for the pass again. Could this be a... He has the opportunity, and there you go. The ball comes from that angle, from that space, from that distance. Nobody is stopping him, 4-0. And Buriram United, or shall I say, Kiribat Tanklang, is the man of the moment. Matt, that was a spectacular goal. Immaculate to the touch. Perfect in every way possible. Without a doubt, that right foot finesse the curve i hope we can see the curve mode yeah i think now oh, this from the outside but that curve is just so so lovely here it is again right foot a beautiful vision nice endeavor take the risk why not and what do you get you get a hat trick yeah and that is what <laughs> of course you get a hat trick there but man what a performance this hyper what a performance by this player yeah i guess he's proving on the field and also on the virtual pitch why he is one of the best so far and it seems like Chidi Pak Tanglang is the man and he is just not done yet I guess he's gonna add a few more before we go into the uh, uh, end of the first match but unfortunately Ponchala Bugas has been silent throughout the match decipher no impact nothing much actually I wonder what's going on well I would say that the, there was ideas, you know, man. But sometimes, yeah. like we mentioned, in the final third, in the final passing, it's just not going to plan. Uh, but, oh, oh, foul. Ref? Referee? Isn't that a foul? It looked like a foul, but uh, referee <laughs> says that's play on, never mind. You have seen this kind of incidents happen all the time, actually. Not only today, not only a week ago or before that throughout our career actually <laughs> so yeah 
The ball is with the likes of Buriram United, who is running on the top right now. And the pass is not going to find anybody. But somehow found it back again. That's a good recovery. Not sure how the uh, recovery came again, but he has the space to run. And we see how the defender outpacing the player before he makes the sprint. The explosive speed is needed to go into that kind of situation, kind that kind of space actually. And uh, not all the players has the ability to do that. Some players with a really good explosive speed are able to run for through balls in those kind of uh, tight areas being marked by the defenders. But I believe this cipher, the earlier on, was not the right man to do that. But never mind. And here comes Ponchelo Bugas of United City FC. He goes for the shot. Blocked again. And it seems like it's going to be a throw in. Yep. And you know what's the best thing, Matt? When we talk about yeah. footballers going up against footballers, I still remember uh, previously the game uh, between, I believe it was uh, Chon Buri going up against Ho Chi Minh City. Both of those players were playing and laughing behind the camera. That was so, so fun to see, like, Matt. Yeah, I mean, they should be enjoying the match. Oh, but wait a second, that is going to be offside. But yep, players are basically enjoying this. Of course, they have two jobs over here. And that is to perform on the actual pitch and also the virtual pitch. Yeah, uh, it is all fun and games. But at the same time, they do that. This is a competition anyways, not an exhibition. But I really love the sportsmanship that you mentioned early on. But here comes the goal. And that is Buriram United. Goal number five. Mike on the number seven again. And I believe there is nobody or no force is stopping Chitipat Tanklang of Buriram United. Wow, long shot, Matt. A long shot, cannonball shot. It was like destined to go in the back of the net. There was no way on God's earth that ball can be saved. An opening was made. Mykon with a beautiful right foot. And the keeper just left there on on the ground saying what did i do to deserve this kind of treatment what a bad day in the office matt yeah what a cannonball as you mentioned earlier on the cypher but man <laughs> can say that again you know i guess it's a bad day at the office for united city fc and uh punch the start was not good but maybe he can get at least one for consolation purpose and maybe he might right now goes for the shot hits the post <laughs> And the goalkeeper is still thinking that the ball went in or not. But then, that is a breathing moment for Buriram United to uh, not lose the clean sheet that they have been uh, safely containing in this match so far. And I believe that is the end. 5 nil, a really good masterclass performance by Chiribat Tanklang in the uh, star match category. And it seems like Buriram United are on the top of their game. Wow, but this, what a poacher goal by Sup, uh, Supachai Chai Det, uh, the number nine from Buriram United. Beautiful pass. I mean, for a striker, that is a nice visionary true ball. And with a finisher from that left foot, first goal of the game, that is just absolutely mental, Matt. Yeah. 5 0, really Matt. What do you think about the game? Yeah, 5 0 of his, and it's a very strong game by uh, Buriram United. But, man, uh, Chiripat Tanklang showed the really good performance in, the, in this match and I guess it's a well-deserved win for him, Decipher, because he started the match strongly, he kept scoring goals after goals and not giving any sorts of uh, chance for Ponch Le Bugas, but boy, he is on top of his day today, yeah. Yep, he is literally on top of his game today, so, oh, it seems like, oh, okay. So wait, Matt, before this, let, let me just double check. Okay, guys, I just got word. Oh, Matt, it was a bit sad, Matt. Supposedly, you remember this is a best of three, right, Matt? Yeah. But sadly, there was a technical error between the two games. Between the two games. So they were trying to read, they were going to reload for the next game. However, there were some technical issues that they cannot go for the next game. Thus, they decided to only play a one game. So, having said so, thank you, Marshall, for giving an update. So, that means uh, Team Buriram United straight away advance into the semi final, Matt. Yeah, and I feel, uh, yeah, I mean, I, we can also say that, you know, uh, 
Pontula Bugas could have made a comeback. But unfortunately, with the performance that Chiripa Tanklang has showed us early on, I kind of feel like he deserved to be in the semi-final right now. And he is there. He is here. And it looks really good for him so far. Yep. So with having said so, let's just uh, us double uh, uh, reconfirm again with the admin. Okay, it is true. Admin mentioned that it's going to be a best of one due to some technical issues that cannot be avoided. So having said that, that marks the end of game number two. Thus, I believe we will go into game number three. Uh, game number three is between Chon Buri FC going up against Persib Bandung. But Matt, 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 um, the viewers want to look again at the jersey, Matt. I, I, I want to lift my jersey, but uh, since I'm working at home, uh, maybe it's not that clear. Uh, yep, guys. Let me try and lift it again. That is the official jersey for this tournament. Yep, I also got mine. It came from uh, in the mailbox. Whoop, here it is. Ah, okay. Uh, Matt, what color, what number you got just now, Matt? Ah, uh, number 16, man, yeah. Number 16, and for the big man, Decipher got the number 7. Yeah, yeah. I really love number it because seven. it's blue color, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm a Chelsea I, I mean, it's... anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that ain't fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I got number seven, your favorite number, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, guys, here is the official uh, tournament jersey. Guys, we are going into the next game right away, which is between uh, Persik Bando and Chomri. But, 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 before we go, do if you want this jersey, can you help us and say yes in the comment? If you say yes, possibly. I heard, Matt. Maybe there might be a giveaway. So let's go straight into the game between Persib Bandung and also Chon Buri FC admin. Let's change uh, the game itself. And I believe Matt is currently right now doing some setups before we start the game. Yep, guys. It's going to be Chon Buri FC going up again. Persib Bandung is going to be Amanichi going up against Indra Sugandi. Ah, so it's going to be a very interesting match indeed. Reza Kartiwa mentioned that Decipher Matthew Isaac, number seven for me, yeah, like Cristiano. Uh, this, the number seven is mine already, bro. Cannot, <laughs> cannot, I cannot give it to you. <laughs> cannot, ouch, this is my ouch, jersey. Ouch. <laughs> but, okay, but, guys, but, demand but, it, demand but, it. You know, ask from Decipher. <laughs> if you want it, demand it. Uh, the more the demand, we will get you. We will try our level best to see the admin. Can you please give this jersey to our viewers right now? So, Matt, uh, all the the hype for this tournament, Persib Bandung and Chonburi FC. Currently, these two teams are the top two for Group Alpha, if not say Group A. Yeah, and I feel like uh, Persib Bandung has the talent. Of course, Indra Sugandhi has been a really spectacular with his performance, Decipher. But on the other side, Chonburi, we cannot look down on Chonburi as well. They had, uh, they has what it takes to be in the uh, top as well. So we'll go, be, we'll be going into the match, and uh, let's see who is going to get the best out of each other. So it's going to be the Bandung Tigers going up against the Blue Sharks. So previously, the Blue Sharks was able to beat Ho Chi Minh City. But can the Bandung Tigers do something special? So guys, Persib Bandung will be wearing the white kit. And while the blue kit will be Chonburi FC from a Thailand, which is Ananichi, Matt. Yeah, so right now we see the ball is with the likes of uh, Chonburi FC players. Akanichi is the man. And let's see if he's able to get the goals that he needs. So if you guys are basically the support of uh, supporters of uh, Persib Bandung, do we'll show your support on the uh, comment box, actually. If you're the supporters of Chonburi FC, you guys know what to do as we are underway for the match. And let's see who is going to win this. So right now, we see the ball ace with the likes of Chonburi FC again, but well defended. And this time, it was well cleared on the top. And it seems like both teams are starting the match aggressively, Decipher. Yep, so... For this uh, game itself, uh, I believe there's a lot of fans from Persib Bandung and I believe that if memory serves me correctly, there will be a giveaway for Persib Bandung jersey. But stay tuned, how to win it, we will show you after this match. 
So right now we see Indra Sugandi attacking in numbers from the left flank. Trying to find ways to break the defensive line of the Blue Shark. Can Chonburi FC defend? Yes, they can defend. They close every channel of avenue, not giving chances for Indra Sugandi from Persib Bandung to come into the penalty area, Matt. Yeah, I mean like this, Ivor, he's been a really remarkable player throughout the uh, tournament, actually. You can see from match day one all the way to match day two, it's been superb. And on the other side, we see Akanichi on the... He also has been really, really good on the... Uh, in terms of uh, performance, actually. But I feel Persib Bandung has the advantage over here. We have seen how good Indra Sugandi is. But remember, in a game of football, there's always going to be... Uh, an underdog actually who can actually you know turn things around and i feel uh john FC has what it takes to go up against Persib bandung and also indra sugandi yes so indra sugandi Persib bandung looking for options in midfield area however he needs to fall back however both of the players uh hit each other like a train crash and both of them fell to the ground. No foul given by the referee. Akanichi drives the ball forward, goes for a quick pass. But the pass accidentally too far away and too close for the goalkeeper. For team from Persib Bandung, can you give me some love in the comment? For team Chonbori FC, the Blue Sharks, can you give me some like in the comment? Let's see who is more in the comment right now, Matt. Yeah, as we're underway right now, you see the ball is with uh, Persib Bandung over there. Russell Gandhi, but unfortunately, the ball has been stolen away by the uh, 36 years old Akanichi, who is on the ball as a veteran, of course. Pretty much well experienced, sending the ball inside the box again. But then uh, it seems like that's going to be a free kick from there. And this is going to be a really good chance for Akanichi. Can he go all the way? And unfortunately, well saved by the goalkeeper. It's going to be a corner now. John Bury FC are not done yet. They started the match really well. Attack, attack, and attack. And here he comes again. Akanichi! Saved again. And it's going to be another corner decipher. Another corner, but this time around. The first one was lofted. It was high. But the second one was more grounded base. However, the keeper was agile enough and it really, really saved uh, the backside of Indra Sugandi. However, Akanichi this time around might float it. He goes far uh, outside of the penalty area not to shoot yet because there is no chance to go in. We see how Chomburi FC holds the ball into the penalty area. The pressure is on. The pressure is very high. Sends it into the penalty area, but the keeper drops down and clearing the ball upfield, possibly to break up momentum, Matt. Yeah, it's, it seems like one-sided so far in terms of attack. But here comes Akanichi, who had the idea. But unfortunately, it was well defended. The defender read the movement. And Indra Sugandi on the ball for Persib Bandung. Can we see him scoring a goal? He has been really, really good. But unfortunately, in this match, he's a little silent. As we see Akanichi, the experienced veteran, going really strong up against the Indonesian team has become the uh, runner-up back for the uh, Thailand League, Thailand E-League to be specific, back in 2018. Has represented Thailand multiple times in the uh, Southeast Asian Pass competitions. And here he is again, inside the box, and here's Akanichi! And that went wide, not threatening the goalkeeper enough, not testing the goalkeeper of Perse Bandung enough. As the effort came close, but not close enough. Yep, it was a decent effort in my book. However, the angle was not right. The body positioning was a little bit awkward. Thus, the result was wasted at the end. So right now in possession is team Persib Bandung from Indonesia. Indonesia is wearing the white kit while Chonburi FC, the Blue Sharks, is using their blue kit. Where Akanichi right now, I would say it's a balanced game between the two. Attacking from both end, left, right and centre. However, the sharpness in the defensive line of both teams 
has been very, very crucial in denying the opponent. It doesn't matter if it's Indra Sugandi or Akanichi from Chonburi to actually get a clear shot on target. And just like that, we change the attacking motion. We change the attacking way right now with Indra Sugandi. Four versus two, two versus four. Maybe inside the penalty area, Matt. I think that was a little bit too close in my book. Yeah, he was looking for the perfect time to make the pass, but we see Akanichi basically blocked him off. And here comes the corner. There's the ball off again, and uh, this time Indra Sugandi coming strongly over there. There's been an, uh, he's a pretty much an experienced player as well, Indra Sugandi, who basically uh, started playing uh, e-football since 2013, actually professionally. He started in 2018. And why he has been going strongly ever since. And this time it's going to be a, a free kick for Perse Bandung and Indra Sugandi. Can he get that goal before half time? Floats one in, and that is going to go a little bit off from the target. And it seems like nil nil for both of them. And in terms of the stats decipher, it is all balanced so far. Both has been so solid in terms of attacks and defense. Yes, and I believe the fan of Persib Bandung, guys, after the game, don't go anywhere because there will be a lucky draw for Persib Bandung jersey. Coming up very shortly, but a mistake for the keeper. The follow-up needs to be clear, but the follow-up did not happen. It was a panic in the penalty area. Oh my goodness, the first attack for Chomburi FC almost, almost caused a disaster for the defensive line for Indra Sugandi, Persib Bandung taking a breather that was a foul given by the referee but who lucky indeed but guys from a uh, team Persib Bandung there is a lucky draw just stay tuned after the game we will tell you how Matt yeah it's gonna be a call it's gonna be a free kick from here and Indra Sugandi has an idea from there let's see how's the uh, outcome from that and Indra Sugandi he should be scoring that header but the uh, goalkeeper did well to stop that and see that again inside the box what a cross and the goalkeeper had the last touch it's gonna to be a corner now and let's see from this corner if he's able to get something out of this the Indonesian team who have been really much more brighter in the second half the first half is all about compact defense and the ball is floats it in it's gonna be uh, in the uh, lakes of John FC He's yet to make an impact in the second half. We see Persik Bandung holding on to the uh, possession absolutely well. They've been really good in terms of making decisions in the final third. Indra Sugandi, can we see the uh, Indonesian international get a goal from here inside the box? But then the veteran says no. The veteran says, here I come again. Sends the ball on the top. Will we see a quick counter by him? Passing the ball real quickly. That's one player running on the top. Can we see John Bury FC get the goal he need? But Dan Decipher, he had the idea, but the defense has been a little tight at the back. Yep, he had the idea, he had the vision, but when coming it to fruition, it just did not work. It's a very, very balanced game between these two teams. Between, I believe, it's going to be uh, Persib Bandung and also Chomburi FC. Usually at this time, Matt, we will see goals after goals, but between these two first place team uh, first and second i believe Persib bandung is on top because the goal difference uh while uh, chombori is in second place uh, either or is top and bottom one and two this match will decide who will be in that first place so we see how akanichi tries that's a very bad tackle yellow card is in oh. motion man yeah he rushed that is hyper I'm not sure why. I, I, I feel like there is no reason to rush in that position. It's not going to give any sorts of goal threats actually, but maybe he had to do that. But never mind. It's going to be an advantage given for Perse Bandung right now. Indra Sugandi trying to find a space. And here is Indra Sugandi inside the box, but there's nobody to get, take the shot actually. And the ball was just rolling freely, asking for someone to shoot actually. And that is another big chance, but then it's not done yet. We see Indra Sugandi trying to press the ball even after uh, losing possession there. This is what the uh, modern football tactics has been all about. Press after possession loss. 
counter pressing and it all comes in the same philosophy and this time we see the ball is still with the likes of Perse Bandung Indra Sugandhi on the roll again tries to make the pass up front we see the cipher he has the idea but then he kind of rushed it at the end Yep, he had. I mean, I, I understand what Indra Sugandi is doing. Try to get close, try to uh, actually get into position where you force Akanichi to do mistakes. But having said that, man, Akanichi is not a new kid on the block. He is like a veteran in the game. And also, if memory serves me correctly, uh, he is going to be the coach for Team Chomburi FC. Uh, oh, but a mistake which may lead to a goal! Oh my goodness! And I was talking about that. The ball rolls away beautifully. It was so lopsided. The defense of Chomburi FC was already shifted to the left. Thus, the right flank was open, exposed to all of the elements. A bad sliding tackle. It was 1v1 one one with the keeper. And all you need to do is just send the ball in between the leg. And Matt, if memory serves me correctly, John Buri is playing with not with 11, but with 10 men with one red card, Matt. Yeah, so it seems like that is going to be a good result. A good uh, positive outlook so far for Perse Bandung and it seems like Perse Bandung are ahead right now what are the stakes is going to be and how will John Bury FC will respond the veteran here he comes again loses the position again and of course being the veteran of the tournament this is his last competition actually professional competition before he retires and becomes a coach so he is giving everything he can in this tournament but unfortunately, we see the ball is with the likes of John Briefsi, but that is going to be offside, offside there. He had the uh, quick movements running through, but the player who was running on the top basically had a little bit more touches compared to the uh, other defenders who was basically marking him. And here comes Indra Sugandhi for Perse Bantam. Can we see a second goal by Indra Sugandhi? He loses the ball there. And this time we see John Briefsi on the attack, the Zypher. Yeah, with only 10 minutes left on the clock, one more goal is needed. Oh, maybe a mispress right there by Akanichi. Thus gives the ball away to Indra Sugandi. Indra Sugandi is playing with one man advantage because one of the Chonburi players was given the red card by the referee. Playing on the right flank, going in closer. However, good defending by Akanichi from Chonburi FC. Uh, possibly met for one goal. You only need one more goal to tie this game to bring this into extra time, man. Yeah, and I feel he has the experience to do that. He has been the veteran of the match, a veteran of the game actually, and uh, he also has all the experience that he needs. But right now, we see a strong challenge is being shown by Perse Bandrong Indra Sugandhi. Right now, showing no mercy at all, showing uh, why he is here, and that is to win. And that is to get that first win, actually. And right now, we see John Briafsi. Can he go inside? But unfortunately, we see a penalty <laughs> clearance coming by the Perse Bantong player, the Indonesian player. And right now, it's going to be a corner. Can we see John Briafsi getting something from this corner? Something that they really need before they go into the next match. And the ball floats in, and the goalkeeper somehow punches the ball again. But the attacking threat is not done yet. And it was well cleared off by the defenders of Perse Bandung. And I believe the Cypher, there's only one minute to add it on. And there's nothing much to separate. Maybe this is one last attack by John Briefsi. Yeah, we are maybe playing for formality. Referee will blow the whistle because it is almost highly unlikely for Team John Buri to go in. So Perse Bandung gets one game and uh, one goal. So guys, as mentioned, the lucky draw, yep, we will show you how to win Persib Bandung jersey after this replay. Uh, you guys just need to chill for a moment. I believe, Matt, you're going to explain how that the players or the viewers going to win the lucky draw jersey for Team Persib Bandung. But Matt, I think after the red card, it's all down the drain for me, Matt. Yeah, I mean, of course, this life, especially in any terms of Ooh. football, 
you do not want to get a red card. When you get a red card, you have to change your formation. You have to change all the players' tactics, ideas. Needs to be shifted from a different dimension. Uh, we have seen that uh, earlier on in all the football matches that has a red card. So actually, you can see the uh, coach basically trying to go for all deep lying uh, game plays. But this time we see John BFC after the red card, they went deep. But unfortunately, there is going to be errors coming through. And Perse Bandung took the advantage. Intra Sugandhi got the chance he needed. And he just went for the win with only one to nail. So I guess we will be going into match number two real, real shortly. But what a win so far for Perse Bandung. And what a start. Yep. So what a game so far. But as we promised, yeah, Matt, as we promised... Uh, even somebody uh, by the name of K Matai said, how can we get Persib Bandung lucky draw jersey? So, I hope that the admin, let's show to our viewers how to win Persib Bandung officially signed jersey. Matt, please do the honours. Yeah, here we go, here we go. So, this is how you win the Persib Bandung jersey. All you need to do is like and follow Champions eFootball on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Step number two is to tag three friends in the comment section of the giveaway post and step number three the last step and that is to share the post share the giveaway post on your facebook or instagram with the hashtag champions e football and you could stand a chance to win a signed per se bandung jersey this is the official jersey and it's signed it is that exclusive so if you want to get your hands on it you need to follow these three simple steps and you could be on your way Yep. So, guys, that jersey, if you read it properly, Matt, uh, if they yeah. also read it properly, did you know that the winner will be announced also tomorrow, Matt? So, that means yeah. now is the time. How do I say, if you want to win it, Matt, you better do it now. You do it uh, now. There's no tomorrow. Because you, tomorrow, there's going to be the announcement, you know? <laughs> yeah. You and now. you can't be like going into the announcement and asking, oh, when did the uh, lucky draw end? It is right now. It is today. It is this moment right now. So do follow the three steps and you could stand a chance to win the signed jersey by Perse Bandung. Yep. So Matt, the players are already reset. So can we go into the second game, Matt? Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. And there you go. Another look on the game number two. John Briafsi up against Perse Bandung. Uh, the veteran Akanichi up against Indra Sugandhi. Here we go, man. Yep, here we go. So anytime ready, let's go straight into the game. But not straight into the game yet. They need to uh, do some setting up on their lineup. Uh, if we go straight into the game, they haven't set, uh, set up their lineup. That will be absolutely disastrous, Matt, if they miss uh, put their players in the right position. So 4 yeah. 3 one, two. Uh well that is a standard formation almost a 4-3-3, 4, 3, 3, 4 2, 1, 3. And again, this is asymmetric uh asy asymmetrical formation for me because you have a right wing forward, a CF and also a striker, but you have a midfielder in the form of a Mazella who plays and drift wide mat. So um it's gonna be a very interesting lineup for Chonburi. However, Matt, it's just not going to plan for Chonburi. Yeah, especially after the red card decipher. That killed the momentum. I believe Akanichi started the match really strongly. He was in the verge of getting the goal. But then, once that red card came in, the entire plan changed. The entire dynamic of his attacking method changed. And he had to play a little deeper. And with playing deeper, you know the other team is going to press you real hard. And Indra Sugandhi got the opportunity and he took it really well. And let's see what is going to happen in this match as we reset everything again. As we know, uh, Perse Bandung already has the first win and all they need to do is to win the next one to get the three points. But will we see that happening? Or oh, John Briafsi Akanichi is going to show us what he can do with 11 players on the field. Well, that was a nice quick pass, Tiki Taka, if you want to call it. However, when going into the penalty area, uh, the defenders for team Perse Bandung has already came back home. So thus, the amount of white shirts in the D-box is just too many and the cross was easily cut out. With that foul, we can see uh, for team Perse Bandung flies it in the corner. Um, far post. Almost, almost, Matt. Almost. Going to the back of the net, however, it just did not connect earlier on, Matt. 
Yeah, those are the kinds of uh, opportunities that we can see Indra Sugandhi is trying to take advantage on. When he gets a set piece, he knew that, you know, that is going to be a good goal scoring opportunity. And never ever take these kind of opportunities for granted. You need to take 100%. And I believe Indra Sugandhi has been doing the job perfectly so far. Even in the first match, he, we saw there was a mistake by the defenders and he took and he took it absolutely well and in this match we see that we see him doing that again but right now we see a big chance for Akaniche and uh, that is going to be a corner for the play and let's see what are the stakes for John Bri FC of Thailand swings one end and the ball is headed away but still it's not done yet again Akaniche waiting for per se Bandung players to arrive to press him and this time we see him making a pass and Akanichi is not going to find the player that he needs inside the box with that pass decipher. Mm, yep, I agree, man. I mean, it's almost like a chess game, a mental game and a mistake maybe for Brasset. Bando goes in! Oh my goodness! It was through the middle! When we were talking about mind game and chess game, we see how our good friend from Team Persib Bandung, Indra Sugandi, finds an opening, finds an opening in between the two defenders. It breaks them apart, and with that nice through ball, a good finishing came up. Matt, 13 minutes, and it's always a beautiful, beautiful one. Yeah, seems like a good start for Persib Bandung over there. As usual, I told you that is Ifa. Uh, we know Indra Sugandi has been really deadly inside the box. His decision-making has been top-notch so far. And uh, hence why we see, even though uh, John Bree started the match a little bit much better, but unfortunately, the decision-making has been with Indra Sugandi. And that's why he scored. And that's why uh, Per Se Bandung team is ahead right now. But it's still a long way to go. Let's see how John Bree FC will respond from this. But then... We see instantly the ball is being stolen away by Indra Sugandhi. Perse Bandung trying to find the space that they need to make the pass there. But then with that tight space, there's no way in. And uh, no way in again for John Bury FC. We see Akanichi loses the ball again. And this time the ball is with the likes of Perse Bandung. We can see the focus on Indra Sugandhi pushed away by the defender. And uh, we see... Akanichi coming through, although it's just 19 minutes, and here comes Akanichi, and that is not going to give him any sorts of space to go for a shot. Well blocked, decipher. Three defenders sandwiched the entire uh, striker that came through in. Well, that's the thing for Akanichi. I believe Akanichi can get one more goal. However, Matt, the problem is right now is getting the striker to run at the right moment. You see, just now he got sandwiched. Imagine if he made his run a little bit earlier, he can beat the last defender, not in an offside position, but at least get the acceleration first compared to the centre-back. So, if Akanichi can just calm down, just maintain, Possibly he can equalize. However, just do not do some silly, silly mistake right like that. Yeah. Because Indra Sugandi, if he sees a mistake, he will take full advantage, man. Yeah, that's what he's been doing that is But that is uh, the special thing about him, you know. When, when, when opportunity arrives, he takes it perfectly. And right now, John Bury FC on the attack. And here comes the team from Thailand. But unfortunately... Uh, the ball is still with John Bury FC, who has the idea inside the box. Maybe can go for a cross, but unfortunately, again, it is an offside call oh. by the linesman. That's the uh, good call, actually, the cipher. <laughs> you two saw him two players is offside. Yeah, two players is offside there. And uh, this time we see Indra Sugandhi maybe might want to add another goal from this position. There's players running on the top. Here comes Perse Bandung, Indra Sugandhi inside the box. Still Indra Sugandhi maybe could not get the touch on the ball with the header. As the uh, jumping effort was not enough by the attacking player. And Chonbury FC are running forward, trying to get the first goal that they need. And But that is too much, Decipher. Ooh. That is too much. Uh, too much, too powerful and overzealous in my point of view. But Matt... Uh, it's actually a bit interesting because as you know in this game you can actually put your players accordingly to where you want them and what role you want to play in them. So in this position in midfield, 
Um, in the previous game, we see a lot of direct football being played by the players. But this time around, as you know, uh, Chonburi FC Akanichi is a very seasoned player. Indra Sugandi is a very intelligent player. So he likes to do a build-up and not to play long and wasted ball. So is there a chance that if you might suddenly switch that tactic from short to maybe a little bit of long ball, maybe you have productive attacks? Yeah, you can you can do that, Decipher. And maybe right now he might go for the shot there, but then was well defended again. But yes, Decipher, talking about short passes to long passes, yes, that might work actually. But then we also need to give a little bit of a focus on how the opposition defenders are going to react to that. By looking at the defense, it has been solid for both sides. But what makes the difference is the decision making of the attacker. And we can see it ha it belongs to uh, Indra Sugandhi where he knows mm. how to move his player in the box. He knows how to take the chance. He knows how to turn things around. He knows how to convert 50-50 chances. And that what separates you from an ideal attacker compared to the other one. And right now, we see uh, the veteran running forward again. And this time, can we see Chonbury FC get the goal that they need? Ah, oh, this could be a chance. And maybe right now, here comes Akanichi. Well saved by the goalkeeper, but the cipher that's a warning again. Yep, another warning, another signal of intent that I ain't going to give up. I will not stand down and I will keep on coming until I get that equalizer. Good effort by Akanichi from a team Chonbori FC. A float sit central. However, there was a big contact in my point of view. It was a very, very heavy physical sound, but it was no foul given by the referee. Two minutes of extra time. We will go into second half. Again, only one goal scored uh, by Parsit Bandol, which is Indra Sugandi earlier on. Uh, but Matt, 50-50 possession, two total shots, one each on target, but only one goal difference, Matt. Yeah, and uh, if you ask me, Decipher, the match is pretty much balanced, actually, except for the uh, decision-making for uh, the players. Uh, I feel like John FC still can make the equaliser, still can make a comeback, still can shock everyone that's watching right now. But let's see if he's able to do that. But here comes Indra Sugandhi. And uh, the last touch, he was basically trying to look for the striker inside the box. But then we see the arrival of the defender was much more faster. But Indra Sugandhi... What a beautiful feat there. And unfortunately, he could not hold it on longer anymore. Two players up against one player. Of course, you are not going to get past there. Going to stand with you in between. And uh, this time, Indra Sukandi gets the uh, possession again. Seems like both teams wants to score goals. Both teams wants to get their names on the score sheet again. And maybe right now, Indra Sukandi could not get it through. Well defended by the uh, Akanichi, the veteran decipher. Yeah, Akanichi is working so hard and opening in the middle. There is a runner in the middle, but the pass was so, so late. The pass was a little bit too late. And uh, I believe uh, Indra Sugandi saw that there was a, a guy in the blue shirt, which is unmarked. Thus, he falls back to close the door. Uh, a little bit unlucky for Chonburi FC. A little bit too late for Akanichi. But again, Akanichi is showing his vision showing his anticipation but in that final third Persib Bandung uh, defended with all their might in the penalty area right now over the top chip but the ball went so far away no trouble by the goalkeeper and let's just say Matt even if there is no oh he took a touch I believe by the yeah. the last defender just now yep. even if there was no touch the ball actually went out anyway just to be safe Matt Oh, yeah, but there wow. you go. Go! Matt, how would that happen? Ah, this is a classic tactic in e football, actually, Decipher. We have seen this many times. And there you go, near post headers coming through. And it seems like Perse Bandong, Indra Sukandi, is just showing why he is the top man in this match. Oh boy, Decipher. We were just talking about something. But a goal just happened to be coming through and we did not see that coming actually. But what a goal. 2-0, first save Bandung on top. Well, the thing that spooked me the most, Matt, is because of the fact that it, the defender accidentally pushed his own keeper. And but before that, we see Akanichi try to break through again. 
almost could not break that line of defense is so solid at the back um that cro that corner literally uh it was a self-inflicting wound in my book matt because the defender pushes his own keeper away thus giving room for the striker to jump very very high and as you mentioned it was a classic type of goal 2 zero and it is a beautiful one matt yeah that's a really good goal by indra sugandhi Will we see him add another one, maybe for the third one? And here comes Indra Sugande, and that's the goal! And he needs to make it 3-0. And boy, what a goal by Indra Sugande! And there you go, the champion of Batam Cup Indonesia, champion of Piala Governor Jawa Barat. And here we go again, showing himself why he is a champion after all. What a goal, what a pass, and that's how you score. Wow, I thought that was an offside, man. I really, really thought that was an offside, but it seems like the timing of the run was absolutely spot on. The timing of the pass was laser perfect. And that's finishing, well, there's nothing more you can ask about it. When you have an empty goal, all you need to do is just put the ball at the back of the net. However, we see uh the veteran which is akanichi is not giving up situation might be very difficult but maybe to get one more back he does claw one more back instant respond by, by the blue sharks at the 70th minutes with 20 minutes left you only need two more goals man only two more goals for the blue shark which is john buri fc man yeah but right now this Ipa, i feel the pressure is still going to be on uh, Akanichi because he needs two more goals. On the other side, Persik Bandung, uh, Indra Sugandhi knows that he needs to score another one more goal for him to feel the pressure. So for him to feel that, he can avoid by putting on a solid defence or by playing back five or trying to stay compact in his defence and making his players to play more deeper compared to how they have been performing earlier on. But right now, let's see what are going to be the uh, tactical changes for both teams. On the other side, we can see John Briefsi are basically uh, rushing forward to get the second goal in. But there you go, another solid defence display by Perset Bandung. Uh, this is where things are going to be a little bit more tactically challenging for both sides. They do not want to cause errors. They do not want to lose the ball cheaply again. And here comes John Briefsi. Maybe he might go for the third one, but unfortunately, that's an offside. We are offside by a mile away. Two players for Team Chomburi FC was flagged offside by the linesman. 15 minutes left. We have seen comebacks in this tournament. We have seen drama and we have seen heartbreaks. But could there be a better game? Oh, look at this. Maybe for goal number two. Maybe to pull it. He's, oh my goodness, but the follow-up is there. And this time around, the follow-up does comes around. What goes around does come around. 3-2 and we are now chasing ever closely for an equalizer, Matt. Oh, you know what's the interesting part right now, Decipher? John Bury FC still has the time to get that equalizing goal. Because on this side, we can know that the pressure is going to be much more stronger on Perse Bandung, Indra Sugandhi. I'm really, really looking forward how uh, Indra Sugandhi is going to hold on to the pressure right now. Because he knows that... It is just one goal away to square everything up. And we know the veteran is up for the challenge. The veteran is up for the hunt for the goal number three. Will that happen or not? That's the next question. And shout out. Yes, shout out to our supporter, Varif Pacharapon, who is supporting Team Chonburi FC. Uh, giving some moral support in the chat group only need one more goal for this team from Thailand to break the to break the momentum offside given oh yeah. almost almost just a foot away Indra Sugandhi needs to calm down or should I say uh, do not do any silly mistake man yeah not to do uh, any sorts of uh, you know ball losing possession kind of things but yeah uh, he really needs to be careful because we know John Briefsi are just one goal away and I'm pretty sure the veteran is going to push on and on and on to get the goal that he wants. Again, again, we see the ball is with the likes of John Briefsi. 
who is running aggressively and that is not how you should be doing it again maybe we might see Indra Sugandhi can ad take an advantage from here here is Indra Sugandhi this is the ball again and here comes John Briefsi Akanichi trying on the right side this time you see most of his goals came from the middle and uh, he might oh he might not gonna get through again and this is gonna be a big big chance I was wondering why the defender or the attacker was running forward to get the ball but here is Indra Sugande he skied it somehow another big chance gone in the air just like that and that should be going in the cipher that angle I'm not sure why he rushed it and boy that is just going to be a goal kick in the end and what's even more worrying me, Matt, is the defensive yeah. line just now was almost, almost broken because we see it was a three versus three uh, in the attack. Oh, a mistake by Akanichi. The pass was a little bit too quick. However, able to pick up the loose ball. That's with four minutes of extra time given by the referee. This is it. This is crunch time. This is the time where it all counts, where it all matters, where all of your experience come into fruition, come into being a push and a pull. Now, uh, Indra Sugandhi clears the ball outfield with only two minutes left. I believe we might be playing. We might be seeing an offside by the referee. Referee said no offside. Maybe it's not offside. Tries to hit the ball. Keeper is almost one. Oh, goodness gracious. Great balls of the defensive line of Team John Buri FC literally fell asleep. Literally did not see that one coming. A final goal on the final extra time, the final second. It's closed the book, closed the shop. We know who will be in the first play, uh, place for Group A, Group Alpha, Matt. Yeah, it seems like that's the goal that seals the deal. And Perse Bandong. Seems like the team that is going to get what they want. And there you go, Indra Sugandhi, yet again showing himself why he's the top man, which I like to repeat again. And that girl basically puts a great example why he is here and why he wants to take over and wants to challenge himself all he can. And there you go, Decipher. 4 to 2, Persip Bandung gets the three points that they need. And it seems like the Indonesian team came victorious in the end. And John Bury FC, yeah, they started the match so well. The attacking side has been really, really good. But at the end of the day, there's only going to be one winner. And it seems like Perse Bandung were the, uh, the better side when it comes to decision making in the final third. Yep, yeah, uh, this time around, Matt, the match almost uh, becomes a close, close match. However, the defensive line for team Chonburi has a lot of mistake, a lot of errors, which needs to be fixed uh, in the knockout stages. Because, man, if memory serves me correctly, uh, Chonburi uh, drops to second place, and Persib Bandung is now in top of Group Alpha, Group A, man. Yep, that is absolutely right, Decipher. And I believe, uh, you know, this is a really good performance by Perse Bandung and also Indra Sugandhi. They have a gem in their hands over here. And we know how amazing the performance was. It reflected on the scoreline. Uh, yeah, although, you know, on stats we can say uh, John Briefsi were much more better in terms of possession. But remember, possession does not win two games. Possession has never won any one games. But there you go. The result, the final result, the goal scored is what changes the entire outcome of a match and Perse Bandung showed that perfectly today. Yep, if you have a lot, a bucket load of possession, the only thing that you win is stats. Yeah. <laughs> it's stats. And but that's man, not going to bring you through. <laughs> yep, that's not going to get you through unless if you are, if you're Barcelona in the golden ages, but this is a nice one. Uh, the follow-up was sweet. This one brings the game to from 3-0 to 3-2. Just needs one more goal. However, Matt, this or oh, this is not the goal, but one more goal from Team uh, Persib Bandung is just enough to take the game away, Matt. This one. Yeah, I, I mean this goal. I mean he did not expect that coming. I'm pretty sure nobody did actually. Uh, but that goal. 
just came out. What a goal. What a speed that the attacker had. And he just rushed in to score in. He saw the opportunity. And I really loved it how he took it. Although that was a 50-50 chance. I'm pretty sure most of the attackers would not think that that as an opportunity. But then Intra Sugandhi of Perse Bandung saw that as an opportunity. And this is where I've been telling early on this cipher. He knows how to convert 50-50 chances. Yep, so having said that, uh, that is the final result. First game is 1-0 going in favour of Indra Sugandi. Second game, 4-2 going in favour again with Indra Sugandi. However, Chonburi FC, uh, the fans from Chonburi FC, don't be sad. You guys, if memory serves correctly, will advance. Let's look at the current stage for uh, uh, the group, for Group Alpha. Yep, oh, Matt, it's confirmed, Matt. Yeah, it's gone for a look at that on Group A. We can see Perse Bandung on nine points, John Bree FC on six, Nagawal on three, and uh, United City FC, uh, they're on zero points actually. Did not win anything, I believe. On Group B, we see Puriram United six points. But Decipher, what is going to be the most interesting part of today's match day is going to be Group B. You can see all yes. the three points there, the gaps there. It's anyone between three of them. Yep, it's going to be, uh, I believe, Joho, JDT will go up against Ho Chi Minh City. That means that Buriram United will go up against Trampiness Rovers. So let's just assume for a moment that Buriram United lost the match. It will be an open shot uh, for JDT. However, the goal difference may be going in favor of JDT, but it's all about the three points, Matt. Yes, it's all about the three points. The three points that matters right now on Group B because it's pretty much widely open. We can see the gaps. It's all just three points difference, you know. It's not a major difference, just three points difference. So that shows it's anyone there. Even if Buriram United on top, as what Decipher mentioned on, if they lose the next match, if they lose the next match, boy, they're in trouble actually. Yep, they're in trouble. Uh, but however, Matt, uh, it's all about the points as you mentioned Matt anything can happen man. I'm, I'm like very fearful because uh both team uh, JDT uh, Trampiness Robbers uh we also have Ho Chi Minh City and also Buriram United they all of them are good players good team so any of them to be out of the tournament is a bit saddening for me honestly Matt yeah, uh, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, this so, is where the heartbreaks in uh, in the football competition comes in. <laughs> see, I'm all, I'm always crying already that we already have two teams gone. <laughs> but seriously, I, I'm sad because throughout this tournament, Matt, I mean, all of the players we played so so well, dramatic football, some uh, panicky defending. Not to forget some panicky defending, especially uh, I believe uh, the player from. If not mistaken, uh, from uh, Chonburi FC, was it Warachit? The the one that played up against a team, uh, Lam Tipong from Ho Chi Minh City for the yeah. real football. He was playing like panic football, but he managed to win that game. That was hilarious. Um, yeah. But hey, and also man, uh, I believe Mohamed Haikal, uh, I believe this player said, wish me luck, good luck to Mohamed Haikal. Man. Yep, all the best. But also, we like to wish all the best also for the player uh, from a team, Ho Chi Minh City, because he will be coming up next. If I'm not mistaken, the player's name is uh, Nguyen Chao Tuan. Yep, it's going to be Johor Darul Ta'zim and also Ho Chi Minh City. Um, the deciding match, Matt. The deciding yeah, match. Yeah, this is going to be a very deciding match, Decipher. JDT up against Ho Chi Minh City FC. So I believe the fans are all ready and I'm, we are also ready. And let's see what's going to happen in this match. Yep, let's see. Uh, is the admin uh, going straight for the game or are we going for a break? Yep, we are going for a break. So guys, don't go anywhere. Me and also Matt going for a quick break once we return. It's going to be the deciding match. A JDT FC going up against Ho Chi Minh City FC. Don't go away. We will be back. Bye-bye.
What is going on everybody? Welcome back. This is your big man Decipher together with my good buddy Matthew Isaac as your official commentator for Champions E Football League. I am so hyped like no one's business, Matt, because the next game is the deciding game, Matt. Oh my god. God. Yeah, this is going to be the most dramatic moment of the matches because we know in Group B, it's really uh, tight when it comes to points. But here we go. Here's the stat. And this is where it's going to be. Yep. So, guys, without further ado, our next match is going to be, as I mentioned just now, if I need to repeat myself again, it's a deciding match, like I said, like Matt said, like everybody in the chat group is saying, between JDT. Joho Darul Ta'zim FC going up against Ho Chi Minh City. Can we see Harimau Selatan or the Southern Tigers going up against the Red Battleship, Matt? Yeah, Decipher. I think this is going to be really interesting to watch between, uh, yeah, No High Carl and also the player from Ho Chi Minh City FC. So let's see what's going to happen between both of these teams. They know they need to get the three points. But the question is, is in their hands. Yep. Right now is who going to be in the top two? That is the most important. So guys, they are watching on Facebook, watching on social media. I really, really, really need your help. For Team JDT, Southern Tigers, can you give some like in the comment, in the social media, Facebook? If you are watching... This for Team Ho Chi Minh City, the Red Battleship. Can you give some love in the comment? Let's see who will advance into knockout stages, Matt. Because this, I can tell you, it's going to be lit beyond any imagination, Matt. Yeah, definitely. We have seen Chao Tuan in the uh, uh, match day two. He has been really good. But let's see if he's able to keep the momentum alive. And somehow we see... Uh, defending coming through by the Ho Chi Minh City FC player, which is Chao Tuan actually. Just talked about him, yep. JDT will be attacking from left to right in a white kit. And Ho Chi Minh City will be attacking from right to left in a red kit. So it seems like an aggressive start by No High Cal earlier on. And let's see if he's able to keep that up for the Southern Tigers there is Haifa. Yep, as we can see in the comment, Hasli Jampar said, Bro, just play relax, relax. But however, you cannot relax right now. We want to get the first goal if possible. JDT is now attacking. I believe that is Gonzalo. Uh, I believe the striker, the main striker for JDT. However, it does go wide. Um, I'm not so sure who will be holding the ball. But as we know, it's going to be Team JDT attacking in numbers. Beautiful through ball. Is that going to be a chance for JDT? Golasso! First goal, first attack, JDT is in front, Shafawi Rashid, my favourite player, the number 29, the Malaysia international, Shafawi Rashid, with the first goal for Team JDT, the Southern Tigers, Matt. Yeah, what a goal there by Nohai Ka, look at that, calm, and he's very composed on the front, and that shows the quality of a player he is, and what a start for JDT. And let's see if No Haikal is able to hold on to it or we will see uh, Chao Tuan giving more challenges in the uh, next coming moments that is Haifa. That is absolutely stunning control by Shafawi Rashid, the, Mal the Malaysia international, the Harimau Malaya international player with a nice step uh, going round the keeper. The keeper was already beaten. There's no way he dropped. He could come back up. Thus, the goal was open. However, Matt, we are only playing for 12 minutes. Never discount this player from Team Ho Chi Minh City FC, the Red Battleship, Nguyen Chao Tuan, Matt. Yeah, and here he comes again. And uh, this time we see Ho Chi Minh City FC is so basically on the attack on the right side. And uh, he might be a little bit sloppy on the right, but never mind. Goes for the cross and nobody getting the touch on that. And I believe that should be going in the back of the net when there is a touch because he came close, very, very close. That is, it was like whiskers away actually. But then we see the ball was much faster than the player that arrived in there. But never mind. Here comes No High Cal for JDT. He sends the ball and that is a little too much straight to the hands of the goalkeeper. And it's a breathing moment for the Vietnamese team. 
Yep, and for you guys who are watching, uh, what color is JDT? JDT is in the white kit. JDT is attacking. Maybe another one, but nice save by the keeper. Beautiful save, beautiful move by Mohamed Noor Haikal. Intercept the ball in midfield, and it was not in an offside position. Sends it off central, but the keeper was able to tap and slap the ball away for a corner kick, Matt. Yep, and uh, this is going to be a corner for JDT. And let's see if No Haikal is able to utilize something from this. And the ball is still with the uh, left foot there. Maybe he can go and go for a squeeze, try to squeeze the ball inside. But unfortunately, uh, it was not happening for him, but never mind. And here comes Chao Tuan for Ho Chi Minh City FC. With the Vietnamese team are on the attack, but unfortunately loses the ball again. And uh, No Haikal trying to take an advantage of that. And uh, we see Chao Tuan has a plan from here. That's a good ball. That's a good pass, actually. There's lots of space on the right. He chose to go for the left instead. Can we see a goal? And here comes the goal. Maybe, but maybe not. And unfortunately, the goalkeeper is frustrated on the JDT side. The defense were not solid enough. But that's a good try. A first warning coming from Ho Chi Minh City FC. Well, the question is right now, Corbin Ong's position just now was very, very dangerous, Matt. Uh, yes, he is a fullback, but once he cut in to cover the two center back, which was left empty, uh, his positioning was a little bit off. Thus, that's the reason why the pass could go through. However, we see JDT try to wiggle through, try to squeeze through, try to squeeze like an orange in the morning pass, goes through the edge, and it's going to be a penalty, maybe. Um, is not it, is sure that a penalty? Like the... Ah, I'm still scratching my head right now. Oh, <laughs> waiting for the next decision, I guess. No, Cabrera. Yes. Yeah, Wait. this is gonna be Ooh. a free kick. <laughs> Let's is see. Is gonna if be JDT a goal? Is able to? I'm not sure, decipher. I'm really not sure. And this time it floats all the way to the top. But then it it almost looked like a penalty call earlier on. Yeah, I thought it was a penalty call inside the box. Possibly the foul was considered outside of the box. But again, I really thought that it was gonna be Shafawi who takes the shot. Uh, our national team uh, free kick specialist, but Hazwan Bakri has also given the duty to take the shot. Uh, guys, uh, JDT is leading 1 0. JDT is in the white kit. Mohamed No Haikal. Uh, in the meantime, the red shirt is referring to Ho Chi Minh City FC, the red battleship, Matt. Yep, so it's still 1 0. Oh, that's going to be another free kick, actually. All right, so it's going to be uh, Safavi Rashid. The free kick special in, and here comes JDT! And Mohamed Oikal came closer. Closer than the earlier one. And he was just, just, you know, getting a little bit touch on the uh, crossbar on the top. But right now, we see the ball is with the likes of JDT again. Mohamed Oikal can go this time for a shot. And Mohamed Oikal! And that's the goal that JDT needs. And that is the goal number two for Safavi Rashid. He might be looking for the uh, hat-trick real, real soon. But what a start it has been for the Southern Tigers. Oh, Shafawi Rashid. To be honest, at first I thought he was in an offside position. But however, it took a deflection by the defender. Those kind of chances do not come very, very often. And he takes it with inch perfection. A mistake by the defender. And guess who at the back? It's none other than Shafawi Rashid. Two goals to JVT. Two goals for the Southern Tigers. And the Red Battleship is currently in a lot of trouble, man. Yeah, and uh, right now I'm not sure why Chao Tuan uh, is yet to make much impact in this match. Perhaps we see a much more stronger start by JDT. Of course, uh, we have seen Ho Chi Minh City FC. Uh, even in the previous match, he kind of struggled actually. But then uh, there's lots of rooms for improvements in this match. Still a long way to go, still a long time. We saw some promising starts by uh, Chao Tuan earlier on. And maybe he might come again, floats one in. And the goalkeeper, Farizal Malias, had to uh, start the ball. And there you go, Woo! the ball lands in the back of the net. And the deflection came in. And I believe it's 2-1. Ho Chi Minh City FC are back on track. All they need is just one more goal. Chao Tuan got his confidence back again. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Let's see how it happened again. I did not catch. Uh, it floats out. The ball goes. And then a touch 
Oh, it hits the defender in the backside, in the butt. That's why it took a deflection. It is so, so bad luck, so cruel. But that is the nature of football, Matt. Even though a deflection, it hits number... I couldn't see who, but it was just... yeah. That is not a good day in the office when you scored an own goal. But it was credited, it was a goal scored by Team Ho Chi Minh City FC, Matt. Yeah, and I believe that uh, that is the confidence that Chao Tuan needs. But right now, let's see what is the response by Team JDT right now. That's a quick, quick pass towards the goalkeeper. He knows the attack was coming through, but the attack is not over yet for JDT. And that is going to be an offside. An offside call over there. And uh, oh, it's going to be a free oh. kick actually. Although I kind of feel like that's an offside run, but never mind. Decision is given by the referee. Tries to keep it low there. Momono Haikal. And uh, Momono Haikal could not contain the ball. And here we go. Again, with Ho Chi Minh City FC with only the uh, last attack of the match, perhaps. And here comes Chao Tuan. And Chao Tuan goes for the rocket. Ooh. It's the post. And hits the upright, actually. But boy, that's another big chance. Equalizing chance. Gone bagging again. And that's not going to be a corner as well, Decipher. It's going to be a goal kick straight away. Yep, it's going to be a goal kick. That's what I said. Do not underestimate the opponent. Please be careful because this young lad in the name of Chao Tuan really, really can pull something out of the hat. And we see the first half 2-1 going in favor of JDT. But we still have another 45 minutes. And in this next 45 minutes, anything can happen the football is round it is not square nor triangle a mistake will be punished and at this late game uh, st late in the stage because when it's a deciding match every shot count where Matt right now we see JDT is attacking no high cow going through into the penalty area got sandwich a mistake by the goalkeeper a mistake by the defense luckily the ball does not go through it was a panicky moment for team Ho Chi Minh City Matt yeah, he came close to that. That's the uh, source of defensive errors that you don't want to do, especially when you're up against a player that is already scored on the uh, two-goal lead, actually. But here comes Noai Kal, and this could be it for Noai Kal again. But then the cut on the left was well covered again by the defender. Could not get it out, but somehow the ball, you know, rolled out straight to the uh, legs of Ho Chi Minh City FC players. And uh, that's the... Uh, big big problem over there and that is to lose possession cheaply like that with an arrow of pass over there but never mind and here comes JDT and here comes No Haikal tries to chip the ball and it's No Haikal goes for the shot tries to finesse it through but then see the block coming again by the Ho Chi Minh City defenders they're not giving him space or any sorts of room to breathe actually but here he comes again Ho Chi Minh City FC players, here's Chao Tuan, and Chao Tuan goes for the shot again. But then Decipher, we see uh, Haikal making it much more difficult for him in terms of blockage over there. Yep, uh, it was a dangerous move, I would say, by Chao Tuan. But as you mentioned, the defender stood his ground, blocked the shot, and the ball does go away for a corner. However, it is still dangerous for Joho Darul Tazim. Muhammad Nohaikal needs to get forward. Yes, he does get the ball forward. We are now running. 60 minutes has elapsed. One hour has gone. Possibly a chance, maybe a hat trick for Shafawi Rashid. Still with JDT. That is Diogo. Diogo through ball. Beautiful. And the goal stands for number three, JDT. What a goal indeed by Muhammad Nohaikal with a quick counter attack. Laser off central. And we see the number nine, I believe that is Haswan Bakri, if memory serves correctly. JDT gets goal number three. Breaks the line defensively well. No offside, says the referee. And with a toe up front, is enough to put in, in a goal number three. As mentioned, Ahmad Haswan Bakri gets goal number three for JDT. If it was Shafawi, it's going to be a hat-trick, man. Yeah, it's a superb start by the player, Decipher. And that is how you get the goals running again. He has the idea. And the uh, ball movement inside the box for that goal-scoring opportunity was created by Heikel. Has been absolutely marvellous. 
And I believe uh, it's 3-1. Chao Tuan maybe wants to add another to get the game rolling again. Or else we see JDT are on a comfortable zone. Goes for a shot, but empty shots over there. Not going to be counted. Chao Tuan loses possession again. We see the touch has been a little bit too much. And here comes JDT. And ah, oh, that's going to be a big chance. And it seems like Mama no Haikal is going to score the number four. The number four for JDT. The number four for the Southern Tigers. And Safavi Rashid completes his hat trick. And that is the hat trick that Safavi needs that. There you go. Goal number four this hyper. Beautiful goal. And a very persistent Mohammed, uh, persistent player, Mohamed Nohaikal, to steal the ball of the defender of Team Ho Chi Minh City. And a hat trick. The match ball will be taken way home by Shapawi Rashid. We see how nice a nutmeg in between the battles. Another roll, one more roll, and the ball is open. And it's going to be four, four goals for Joho Darul Tazim. In this moment in time, Matt, JDT Joho Darul Tazim is a very, very secure. However, never, ever look down on your opponent, man. Yeah, they might come back strong on the next match. We never know. And uh, right now we see Mohamed Nohaikal sends the ball forward again. And this could be another chance for JDT, but well defended again by Ho Chi Minh City FC. But it's not over. It's going to be a corner now. And let's see what are the plans by Mohamed Nohaikal over there inside the box. Could not turn it over. The two players stopping that attack. And this might be a big chance to run through the forwards there. Then he's just not going to plan for Ho Chi Minh City FC. And here it comes JDT on the left trying to get the ball again. But that's going to go off. And I believe that might be a corner again. Yes, that's going to be a corner. And there's only 14 minutes left in this match. JDT are up and running. They have been in the uh, best side. Oh, the ball somehow deflects straight to the uh, opponent's leg. And this time we see it is... A JDT attacking again and again, Decipher. They are not stopping so far. And maybe Momano Haikal wants to add another one. And Momano Haikal! And that's the goal that JDT needs again. And But then he's going to be an offside. Ah, ah. That's a painful one. He really thought he got the goal number five, Decipher. Well, that's why you say false hope. <laughs> <laughs> False hope right there by the linesman. Shafiq Ahmad has been introduced into this game in the final, uh, should I say, in the final 10 minutes. Replacing Diogo just now, who almost scored his first goal of the game of the day. However, it was flagged offside. Thus, the ball is with Team JDT. Possibly a through ball going wide. And I believe that is an offside to Shapawi Rashid. Uh, he was in an offside position, a good, good offside trap given, or should I say, utilized and sprung by this young player, Nguyen Chao Tuan. And Amirul Husseini Zamri is going in, replacing Shapawi Rashid. This is straight for goal. This is for the win. This is for number five. Goal number five as a roulette to it. And it's a golasso. Golasso, golasso, golasso. The first touch of Amirul Husseini Zamri, the replacement for Diogo, gets one goal. Beautiful by Ahmad Hazwan Bakri. Lays it off, puts a roulette, and he missed this one. I think I might leave the chat. Yeah, that's a good goal there. He saw the goalkeeper running towards him, and he had another option on the right. Instead of going for the shot, instead of risking it, why not give an assist to the... Uh, uh, teammate actually who scored a beautiful goal and that's an open opportunity to get the goal number five so it seems like there's only five minutes left and I'm not sure what is Chao Tuan up to because for now he looks a little bit lost but maybe Mama no Haika clearly in front for the number six and the number six may not arrive over there well defended and that's gonna be a fall there Yellow. he rushed it earlier on and I believe there's going to be a little bit of a changes coming through. Fresh legs might be introduced into the match. And it's going all in a favor for JDT so far, Decipher. Yep, Nazmi Faiz. Oh, 
He was the one who made the foul just now and straight away he got sub. Uh, Nazmi fires the young player for JDT. Uh, however, Matt, with only two more minutes, are we going to see number six? Lucky number six. Could there be number six with a chip shot? Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Oh my God, Amiral Husaini Zamri, a substitute, just turned himself into a deadly finisher. Muhammad Nohaikal shows in this game why he is the boss. He is the representative for Johor Darul Tazim. And the defense was broken. The key, the mask key was found. And it's now six. We are waiting for number seven to call it lucky number seven, Matt. Yeah, complete dominance by the Southern Tigers. Momono Haikal took every opportunity that came past me, that came past him actually. And uh, there you go, Decipher. 6 1. And I believe you're just playing for just uh, formality in this match. And uh, Chal Tuan right now maybe might get another one just to add a consolation goal. But I guess Momono Haikal is not done yet. And here comes maybe the number seven. And there you go. Mama no Haika gets the number seven. Seven and we are rolling in heaven. And that's the goal number seven for JDT. What a goal. And there you go. Complete dominance at its finest. The Southern Tigers are not done yet. Oh, the Southern Tigers are really, really hungry for more goals. We look at this movement. Beautiful, beautiful move. Slides his own keeper. The goalpost is open. And uh, yeah, there's only one outcome. Shafiq Ahmad gets it. Number seven. As said by Matthews just now. Seven heaven. Lucky number seven. Seven days in a week. And seven days you can get go. Oh, miss interception. That's a chance for Ho Chi Minh City. Try to conjure an attack. But I don't think it will come anyway. The referee will blow the whistle. It's going to be 7-1. Maybe one more. Number 8. Number 8. Number 8 could not come through. And it's 7 heaven going in favor of JDT, man. What a performance, man. What a dominance by JDT. Momano Haikal just not giving up there. Yeah, we saw in the uh, match day one, he has been a little bit poor there when he went up against uh, Lehan Antoine. Yeah, of course, we see Lehan Antoine has been a much more of a phenomenal player in this tournament. But boy, once we see the engines heated up for the Southern Tigers, no high call is a man to watch for. And he's been running unstoppable for now. Yep, this is game number one. We still have another game, but Ahmed Aswan Bakri tries to put one past the keeper, but could not go through. And uh, we are looking for goals. These are all of the shots made. Uh, this is Shapawi Rashid. Plays it through. It got intercepted. The ball slips away. Ricochet, not offside. And uh, Shapawi Rashid, as you know, man, one of my favorite player in the national team. Shapawi Rashid. Oh, that is just so beautiful. Left foot to the near post. Keeper was spooked. And it counts as a goal. But this one, this is weird, man. Yeah, I think uh, deflections like this are pretty much confusing for both both teams, actually. I'm pretty sure he did not even knew that he scored there. He did not even knew that it's going to go back in the back of the net. But he tried, and with trials like that, that's where sometimes results can come. And uh, I believe uh, that's how uh, he got the goal there, Decipher. But then, even after the goal, we see Momono Haikal did not give up. Keep, keep going and keep taking every opportunity there is. And uh, he came out victorious there with 7-1, to one, that is I for That is a fantastic scoreline. And that scoreline will be mentally challenging Chao Tuan in the next match. Yep, it will be a very difficult one. But remember, Matt, the highest goal scored during this tournament was scored by Liha Antoine. 11 goals. Now, here it is. Uh, a goal by the substitute Amirul Husseini Zamri. Assist by Ahmed Hazwan Bakri. Wow, and a roulette just to add more salt to the wound, bro. A roulette in the empty goal. Yikes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> you can uh, really reminds me of uh, Ronaldinho days where he used to stop the ball and then he just goes down on the ground and goes for the header. So those were some classic days and I believe that some classic touch has been portrayed by uh, Momano Haikal today. And uh, 
he's been fantastic so far, Decipher. This is lovely match, actually. Yep, he is fantastic. But Matt, uh, we are still not finished yet. I believe we still have another game yet. So I believe... Uh, there you go. 7-1, to one, Matt. It's a very, very heavy, heavy scoreline indeed, yeah. Matt. Absolutely, Decipher. Look at that. The uh, possession-wise, we know that uh, Charles Duan had higher possession. Ho Chi Minh City had the higher possession. But then, when it comes to uh, decision-making, when it comes to taking the opportunities, it was Muhammad No Haikal was the better man over there. And it's a fantastic result that's, that reflects on the Southern Tigers' ways. And right now, they have another one more match to go. And let's see how that's going to be. Yep, the players are getting ready to reset. But guys, if you want to follow us on our social media, your official commentator, me, Decipher, so Matthew Isaac, you can find it below on our name tab. So do follow us on our social media. Uh, and uh, it's on this side. Yeah, mine's on this side. <laughs> so let's go. I believe both of them are ready. Yep, they are ready. They have restarted the game. So let's go into the second game, Matt. Who will be in that important second place, Matt? Wow. Yeah, like, like I said earlier on, this Ivor, JDT has shown a monstrous performance. You know, this is mentally challenging, Ho Chi Minh City FC right now, because we know that uh, with that scoreline, Chao Tuan right now, in his head, all he thinks about, you know, how many more next? How much more next? How is he going to defend? How, how is he going to defend a high-scoring uh, player like uh, Moma no Haikal? But on the other side, Moma no Haikal should not take this for granted, should not take the first win saying that, you know, oh, if I can do it first time, I can do it again. Because this is where sometimes things can go wrong, where the opponent will come up with a shocker. So right now, it's all reset again. I believe that both teams need to go into the match like the match is about to start and it's a final match. And that's how both needs to, uh, you know, approach the match wisely. Yeah, but again, Matt, if suddenly Ho Chi Minh City or should I say Nguyen Chao Tuan suddenly make a comeback, we will go into the third game. So guys, I need your support for Team JDT. Can you give some like in the Facebook comment? And for Team Ho Chi Minh City FC from Vietnam, the Red Battleship, can you give some love in the comment? And again, JDT will be attacking from left to right in the white kit. And while Ho Chi Minh City, the Red Battleship, will be in the red from right to left, Matt. Yeah, so it seems like Chao Tuan right now trying to uh, approach the uh, approach the game much more stronger. Goes for the cross, but that's a little too much. And uh, that's not going to find anyone. So right now, it's going to be a goal kick given straight for JDT. That opportunity came from uh, Ho Chi Minh City players. Not good enough. And uh, right now, we see Moma No Haikal could bang one in. It's still Moma No Haikal inside the box. And JDT calls that. And the ball somehow went past the line. And there you go, Shafiq Ahmad is the man to put the Southern Tigers ahead. And there is no stopping Mohamed no Haikal, not even the goal line technology. Oh, beautiful move by Mohamed no Haikal. As you can see, Shafawi Rashid pulled three defenders away, thus opening a room for Shafiq Ahmad on the far left flank. He hits with full power. I'm not so sure why the number 12 has already been sitting on the ground, but the keeper parries the ball a little bit late. Thus, he already went into the uh, across the line, and the goal stands in five minutes. One goal for Team JDT Johor Darutazim. Yep. So it seems like one nil there, Decipher, and that's a very good positive outcome for uh, Mama no Haikal there. Chao Tuan really needs to be careful. He knows how much uh, Mohamed Haikal can score. We have seen that in the first match. He really needs to be careful. He needs to be staying more compact on his defense. He needs to be more focused, but that's not how you do it. And right now we see another big chance gone begging for JDT. Came closer there, Mohamed Haikal. But then, man, something needs to be done on Ho Chi Minh City FC right now because the defense de uh, decipher looks a little shaky just like the first match well i believe that they are going for a full high press uh high press is good when you want to uh kill every avenue of play for the opponent not giving them chance to pass left right or center 
However, when everybody, three to four players, going to chase oh, the same person, man, you will leave your back line very, very exposed. And that's what happened to the first goal just now when Shapawi pulls three defenders away. But before that, a float cross is going to be headed away. Could it be picked up by another player? Yep. It's still going to be panic in the penalty area. Thus, JDT does clear the ball away and now could initiate an attack. And as I was saying again, in the first goal just now where Shafiq Ahmad was literally a 1v1 situation where Shapawi Rashid was taking, pulling three defenders of Ho Chi Minh City. That's the dangerous part of playing a high press game. 18 minutes yeah. has gone and now JDT is trying to go in numbers. Possibly this time around, maybe to add one more, but it was stuck right at inside the penalty area, Matt. Yeah, perfect stop there by Ho Chi Minh City FC. And uh, Chao Tuan right now trying to add more colour to his game. And uh, unfortunately, we see the ball is being pressured. And there you go. We see Momano Haikal takes the ball off. And uh, this time, we see JDT on the attack. There is one player running on the top. And we see another player coming on the right again. Momono Haikal needs to have a good idea if he wants to convert this chance. Especially when you're playing a little bit wide right now. Still Momono Haikal. There's one player running on the flanks. Maybe he can go for a cross. There's two players inside the box and players waiting over there. And I believe that is a big chance for Diogo. And that is not going to be taken perfectly there. As we see, the header went a little bit wide, that is Haifa. Yep, a little bit wide, but what a beautiful cross. I believe that was Eskunalan, if memory serves me correctly, on the left, uh, on the right flank. Uh, nice overlap. Uh, Diogo jumps high, but maybe not a good contact on the ball. Even, even though we see possession-wise, it's actually lopsided uh, by a hair difference. Uh, between Ho Chi Minh City and also JDT but JDT who gets the goal first so we see Corbin Ong just now uh, had to do some uh, defensive work to kill the momentum of the opponent running now we see a chance possibly going forward that is Shafi Ahmad maybe going to Diogo Diogo lets one fly again but again and again man we see how Diogo not to say wasting his chances but he is a little bit unlucky because that was a first time shot man yeah he's coming strongly that is like he's coming in and again uh giving more challenges inside the box and uh, that's what you do when you're in a, in a, basically an in a attacker actually but yeah um he really needs to uh be much more focused be much more clinical and send the passes properly there and uh, of course you can get a better result with that man here comes momano haikal again the likes of jdt players swarming on the left, oh, that's going to be a mistake. Can we see Momo Noikal taking advantage from the mistake again? Makes the pass, and there you go, the goal comes in for oh, JDT Southern Tigers again. And that is goal number two for Shafiq Ahmad. He might be looking for the uh, hat trick again, just like Safavi Rashid in the first match. So it seems like JDT are really on a top performance right now, Rezaifa. Yep, and you know what's the funny part about this build-up, Matt? I mean, we see that Diogo was, uh, uh, as a striker, trying his level best to actually shoot but never hits the target. But every time if an attack starts with Diogo, who acts like a target man or a false nine or a deep-lying forward, spraying the ball left and right uh, to Shapawi, to Shafiq Ahmad, it ends up with a goal. So maybe Diogo should be deployed not as the main striker, but as the guy who initiate attack uh, as a deep lying forward. Uh, and we look at, let's see, if Diogo, see, Diogo does raise the ball, is it going to be oh, a goal? No. A panic in the penalty area, lucky for the keeper, was able to clear the ball away. Diogo that gets the ball back, however, he missed past the ball. And now we see Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, the red battleship is attacking in midfield could he do it will he do it he must do it beautiful one two touches for the victory but however it could not go through man it just just missed fire oh man I, I just feel i just really feel that should be going in that would have definitely be the boost that Taltuan needed and ho chi minh city fc needed that is hyper but unfortunately it did not go in and it is still a big hunt for Chao Tuan right now. Momano Haikal 
Coming back stronger again from the uh, goal kick. And here he comes again. Manuel could not get it in, but then he got the ball recovered again. Sends the ball inside. This could be it, maybe for a negative net time. And there you go. The goal number three for JDT. Comes in again with the likes of Shafiq Ahmad, I believe. The hat trick is complete. And he is always there, looking inside the box to tap the ball in. And there you go, Decipher. Mohamed Haikal is the man again. Yep, again and again, Matt. We see the same method. Build the ball, try to pull defenders away, try, try to make sure that the defenders go chase Diogo uh, as a false nine, as a deep lying forward. But before I go into that, let's see what can we see for Team Ho Chi Minh City. Maybe to claw one back, could not go through. Maybe it was a foul or maybe it was an offside. I believe it's a, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's, an, it's a foul given uh, on the Ho Chi Minh. That is almost dangerous because it's on the line, almost given a penalty. It hits the wall and it goes a jump flying sky high. Uh, but oh, Ideal, Ideal Zakwan, if I'm not mistaken, almost gave a penalty away. But as I said again, Matt, every yeah. time JDT attacks, it's always target man, target man, and then lays it off to the flanks and cut in for a goal, Matt. Yeah, that's the uh, ideal strategy that uh, Momano Aikal has found, but maybe for another one right now. And there you go, it might squeeze in somehow, but then it was well defended by the defenders of Ojamin City FC. And I believe there's only two minutes left on the clock. Perhaps one minute from now on. This might be the last attack for Ho Chi Minh City FC. Can we see Chao Tuan pulling at least one back? But the referee says there's no time for that. As we will be going into the second half shortly. Second half will begin instantaneously, Matt. Because JDT is currently in front. Not just in this, go uh, in this game with 3-0. But in the previous game where it was 7-1. to one, But let's look how Ho Chi Minh City does claw one back. He does claw one back 3-1. to one With a beautiful kickoff. And it seems like uh, Mohamed Nohaikal was a little bit dreaming just now. A beautiful long pass. Look at the defense. The two centre half was way, way far apart. And it was a good goal. For team Ho Chi Minh City FC. The red battleship does fire one back. Nguyen Chao Tuan. Claws one back. Pariza Marlias has no chance and has no clue what hit him just now. Yeah, that's the perfect start that Ho Chi Minh City FC needs then. I believe Chao Tuan finally found what he needed. And all he needs to do is how he goes to find another two more. And right now we see the ball is with the likes of JDT. Well, on the roll again. But then we see Chao Tuan got the ball back again. Who's looking for the goal number two right now. He's running really quickly there, then well intercepted by uh, Momo no Haikal. He's been the semi-finalist for Asian Games 2018, Jakarta, Palembang, Indonesia. And uh, he has also been the uh, second runner-up for ASAF E-Master Chandu 2020 Regional Qualifiers. Uh, a man, or shall I say a player with lots of experience right now, JDT comes again. And he, another chance just gone right down the door again. And JDT looking forward there to find more goals in that edition that is Eiffel. But it looks like JDT has been much more dangerous in the final third. Yep, very, very dangerous. And we can see how Diogo has been deployed as a target man. Also using his strength, using his height at least to get the ball down. A giving time for their wingers, for example, like Hazwan Bakri and also Shafawi Rashid to actually run into the most dangerous area. We see again Diogo, how he acts like the pivot, the main guy to initiate an attack. But let's go reverse where we see Ho Chi Minh City, maybe for goal number two. He does find goals number two. Beautiful goal indeed. No high call. Seems, uh, seems like he was asleep. Two goals for Team Ho Chi Minh City in the most easiest way of conceding getting behind the defensive line of JDT look again a good pass one two passes yep at this rate in time it's almost difficult and Fariza Marlias was beaten at his far post Matt yeah that's the perfect goal that basically Ho Chi Minh City FC needs and I believe Chao Tuan 
is right now going to find the goal at number three. He has somehow found the goal number two. And this is going to be much more interesting. It's going to be seeing who is going to make the next goal uh, count, actually. Either it's going to be JDT or it's going to be Ho Chi Minh City FC. Because right now, we see Ho Chi Minh City FC only needs one goal to equalize the match. And Chao Tuan has been brighter in the second half. But right now, hold up. We see JDT comes again, can exploit the space on the right, and Momano Haikal goes for the shot. Maybe he could not get the uh, rebound again. And this time we see Chao Tuan try to make some cheeky runs there. Not successful enough. And this time we see JDT coming back again. Momano Haikal with the first effort being parried away by the goalkeeper. Chao Tuan gets the ball back again, maybe he wants to add another thing running again. You can see the ball shifting left and right quickly. But right now, we might see JDT comes in strongly again. And that's the goal number four. And JDT are back on the top again. Mohamed Haikal is the man again. And boy, Decipher, look at that. The rebound was just unstoppable. Perfect goal. Yep. And again, man, we see how Diogo acting like that main pivot in attack, uh, linking up the play between midfield and also the strikers, was able to pull three defenders away, which includes two centre-backs and one full-back. Having said that, uh, giving way uh, for Hazwan Bakri, if I'm not mistaken, to go through, to run through and follow the rebound. So it was lucky that the ball ricochet and rebound back to Diogo, but it was an absolutely good move by JDT. And JDT tried to come back again, again in that center area, which is causing a lot of problems for Team Ho Chi Minh City. And a beautiful move again, maybe to Khan goes in, Diogo, but it was pushed away. And I believe that was a good effort by Mohamed Nohaikal. Maybe yeah, try to kill the game. And. Well, defendingly, it needs to be more solid than that, Matt. Definitely, that is. I've been talking about defense. That I just feel it's a lack of awareness by Ho Chi Minh City FC defenders there. Hence why we saw the fourth goal coming in. But right now, things have not ended yet. On the sides of the Southern Tigers, who are looking for the number five. And uh, this time, we see JDT coming back again. And that might be the goal number five. Not yet. And right now, maybe. But that is going to be an offside. offside. Yeah, the offside call was pretty much clear. We see the last touch came off Diogo. And uh, right now, Mohamed Nohaikal maybe needs to be uh, focused more on the defensive department, actually. As you can see, Chao Tuan has already found two goals ahead of him. But right now, there might be a changes, but perfect catch by the goalkeeper. Seems like Mohamed Nohaikal is still yet to find goal number five and Chao Tuan is yet to find the uh, goal number three at the moment but things can change quickly right now Chao Tuan runs forward there but it's all under control by the Southern Tigers decipher hey, uh, Corbin Ong was there on standby on station to actually intercept he was in a good position to run he does have some speed burst however uh, rarely we see him uh, doing those marauder runs uh, going forward like we used to see him in real life. So with nine minutes left, I believe Diogo will be swapped out. Um, uh, I believe he's going to be, uh, yeah, Amira Hosseini. The ball does go into the penalty area. Marisa Marlias is absolutely livid, absolutely angry with all of his defensive line. Uh, lucky the ball did not go on target. It's yeah. going to be a goal kick for JDT. We are now playing with only eight minutes left, Matt. With only eight minutes left. Haikal just needs to hold the ball. He just needs to hold possession. And he knows he might be secured the number two spot in the group stages. Oh, Almost no. an offside. The follow-up. Maybe for this one around the ball. Ricochet. But this time, time around. You don't get it once, you don't get it twice, but the three times you are lucky. Amiro Hussaini Sabri with a beautiful follow-up makes it 5-2. I believe at this time around, Matt, the game is secured, done, dusted. The Titanic has left the port and slowly going to the promised land without hitting the iceberg. 
Muhammad No Haikal is securing his spot in the top two of the group, man. Yeah, the former player of Port FC and also a player in the Toyota E-League back in Thailand, showing himself why he belongs to the family of Southern Tigers. And there you go, 5-2. And it seems like Muhammad No Haikal is just, just on his top, top performance of the day. And uh, right now, we see him getting the ball back again for JDT. And we see him rolling in the midfield again. Let's see if Moma Noikal is able to get the goal at number six. Or we might see another a fantastic seven again. And this time we see, oh, that's a good through ball. But then, see the ball is a little bit intercepted at the last touch of the defenders of uh, Ho Chi Minh City FC. Well, two goals scored by Chao Tuan was not enough to put down JDT. And it seems like the red battleship are just oh. not up to the plan for today. And that's going to be a free kick. That's really going to be a free kick from there. And I believe it's going to go in the way for JDT. That's a sliding tackle that you don't want to do it. And let's see who's going to take this. Can we see Mohamed no Haikal? Or we see uh, any thing special from here and here comes Mama no Haikal well blocked again by the uh, ball, the wall inside oh no the cipher I almost thought that's a penalty call <laughs> the two players crashing in like if it's some fallout gaming over there but right now and there you go the ball ace with the likes and there you go the end JDT gets the three point that they need the Southern Tigers came out victorious in the end. What a performance by Momano Haikal in both uh, matches, Decipher. Well, we... I mean, uh, we see so much improvement from this JDT player, Momano Haikal. Uh, yes, he did not perform well in his first game going up against Liha Antoine. Uh, but in his last two games, he's shown caliber, he's shown character. Uh, especially in this game where he able to secure uh, three points against Ho Chi Minh City, which is very, very important, which may secure his spot in the top two of a group. Uh, Bravo, Group B. Uh, what a game in a good game. And again, I would say that Diogo was the man of the match. If, if I was the referee, uh, somebody or the voting panel, who would be the man of the match for me? Without a doubt, it was Diogo. The deep lying forward providing tankiness like a target man and also the smartness, anticipation, vision in giving passes left, right and center. Diogo is the man of the match for me, man. Yeah, definitely. I, I would agree on that, that is Cypher. Uh, he played a perfect number nine role over there. And uh, sometimes we see him tucking down, uh, trying to, you know, uh, be more composed and more uh, compact with the uh, midfielders to give the uh, attacker space to run and whenever he gets the ball he holds it looks for options up front looks for the wingers that makes the run actually and goes for a brilliant passer so it shows that the intelligence of the player has always been there and uh, it's a fantastic performance by Momo no Haikal who took every opportunity that came on his way and what a performance this Iver. Southern Tigers victorious again on the top top performance uh, top lock, top top level of football again yeah yep so i believe we are now waiting for the official uh official score i believe from the admin on duty because the last game for group b is going to be buriram united and also trampiness rovers um it depends on what that game is going to happen that will be the final game but let's just look at this a game right now the highlights for Team JDT and also Team uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we see that Nguyen Chao Tuan tried his very, very best. But it was just not enough. Took a deflection. Goes for the second time. It hits the keeper. But the third time, Amiro Husseini Zamri uh, goes to the back of the net beautifully. And this tackle, oh, that's an ankle breaker, man. Oh, man. You don't want to be feeling that in actual real life, but there you go. The full-time whistle has been blown, and I guess that is the final result. 5-2, to two, and it's a two-win straight high-scoring game by JDT, the Southern Tigers, 
who came out victorious up against the Raid Battleships Decipher. Yep. So, guys, uh, with that done, JDT, I believe, has secured their spot into the second place. But, Matt, we still have two more games to go. Yeah, two, more games. two more games. Yep, two more games to go for tonight. I mean, Matt, I mean, I, I just... That was just utterly strong performance by Mohamed Nohaikal from JDT, Matt. Yeah, per perfect performance in my eye, Decipher. He came really strong in the first match and he kept that same momentum going on for the second match as well. And that shows the caliber of a player he is and that is the reason why he is in the Southern Tigers team, JDT. Yep, so let's see. I believe everybody wants to see what is upcoming next. So let's see what do we have to show for all of you right after this. Yep, it's going to be uh, Praj Sofi Yak Manut, if I pronounce his name wrongly, I'm sorry, uh, going up against Aramin Boss Jack. Trampiness Rovers going up against Naga World. It's uh, going to be the star match, Matt. Whoever loses here is out of this tournament, Matt. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic to watch. And this is the star category that I would like to remind again. So remember, they are in the knockout stages. So whoever loses, it's a bye-bye. Yep, it's a bye-bye. So Matt, uh, the next game, as mentioned, is going to be Cambodia going up against Singapore. Don't go anywhere. We will go for a short break. And once we return, we will continue with our star match. Don't go anywhere. Uh, if you want to follow us, here's our social media down here. Decipher and Matthews Isaac. We'll be back very, very shortly. Bye-bye.
What is going on everybody? Welcome back, welcome back. And I tell you again and again, welcome back. This is your big man decipher with my good buddy on my side, Matthews Isaac as the official commentator for Champions E Football Tournament. Matt, we are now at game number 5 out of 6 and it's going to be a very heated match between Naga World and also Champions Rovers, Matt. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see this cipher. What's going to happen between these two teams? Yeah, we saw earlier on when Naga World was playing, uh, when we saw Team Bong Ravut uh, basically uh, dominated uh, Joral earlier on against uh, United City FC. But this time, we see the actual player of uh, Naga World coming through. And let's see what does this star category has for us today. Yep. So as usual. Uh, we are going into the game very, very shortly. But did you guys remember just now we show you the official jersey for Champions E Football Tournament? Yes, I mean, mine is already, I've already uh, packed it down. But I think Matt might be has it near him. So, yep. So that is the official Champions E Football jersey. Matt has the number 16. Uh, I have the number 7. Um... So, guys, uh, I believe you guys want to know. We, I asked actually a lot of time, do you guys want the jersey or not? So, a lot of you guys want the jersey and you want to know how to get it. Let's show. Is there any way to get this jersey? Yeah, so there you go. All you need to do is all super simple steps, all right? This is how you're going to get this jersey. Number one, like this live stream, right? Uh, all you need to do is like the live stream. Number two is tag your friends. Tag three of your friends in the comment section of the live stream. And uh, last but not least, share the live stream. Share this live stream and make sure uh, you put it on your profile with the hashtag Champions eFootball. Don't just share emptily. Just make sure you have the uh, hashtag going on so that we can definitely find you. Ah, that's the entire reason why we put on the hashtag. So there you go. Three simple steps and you could stand a chance to win the official jersey of Champions E Football. This is limited edition, by the way, and we do not have much. So the, 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 the main thing is, you know, if you want to get on, your hands on it, this is the right moment. I got the go, number decipher. seven. <laughs> <laughs> I got the number seven. <laughs> Thank you to the organizers for giving us uh, these jerseys. Uh, guys, it's not just for us also. Uh, you guys have the chance to win. I'm not kidding, guys. This jersey are lit. Uh, previously, we have the Persip Bandung giveaway jersey. But nobody knew about this jersey giveaway. So, this is very, very exclusive. In fact, I think it was for today only, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not so sure. It depends on the admin on duty. But no, guys, no, please. Decide, decide. This is yeah. why we said it's limited edition. Yeah. Yes, that's why it's very, very limited. So maybe those who are here right now is the only people who know. So whoever yep. watched from the earlier and they left the, the, the live stream, I'm sorry guys, you do not have the chance to get this. Yes, mm -hmm. and I got the number seven. Mm, I love number seven. I'm sorry, Matt. Okay. I got your favorite number. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so Matt, I believe uh, with all the jokes aside, I believe let's go into the game number 5 between Naga World FC going up against Trampiness Rovers. Uh, so, uh, Park Manut, if I pronounce it correctly, uh, going up against Aramin Bosnak. What a yeah, game. Yeah, Aramin Bosnak, yeah. So this is going to be something special. And uh, let's see what's going to happen between both of these teams. It's going to be Naga World and it's going to be up against Trampiness Rovers off. Singapore. Yep. So, uh, Matt, uh, looking at uh, real players, I mean, some uh, players, as you know, uh, rarely they play console games. But yeah. I can guarantee in between battles, in between their rest time at home or maybe at their club's rest house, I know mm -hmm. there are consoles and I believe they might be playing this game during their rest time. Yeah, I mean, it's all about enjoying this game, Decipher. Yeah, it's always always mm. about enjoying this game, you know, especially, I love the sportsmanship whenever I see uh, actual footballers, you know, 
they're going up against the other player on the virtual page yeah uh, it's a different pitch. It's a different. It's a whole new world. But then, uh, to stay composed and you know not to lose ourselves up just for this, uh, shows them the the level of football that they have been playing on the actual pitch. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. How uh, all these players are able to, you know, show their talent on and off the pitch, especially when you're coming in on an, uh, on a virtual pitch and trying to show the world that you know if you can do it on the actual pitch you can do it over here too so for team uh nagawa from cambodia can you help me bro guys ladies and gentlemen give some love in the comment give some love for the fans from cambodia from nagawa and for the fans from tempiness rovers fc from singapore give us some like so matt let's start the game where nagawa will be wearing in the blue kit left to right and while team Trampiness Rovers FC Singapore from right to left. Yep, so right now we see the ball is with the likes of Armin, who is on the team of Tampiness Rovers, the yellow kid actually. And let's see if he's able to score something special from here. Armin. And Armin could not get it through. And here comes Sofia Manut running forward again. Oh, that's a good one by Sofia Manut. Can he go all the way? He's dashing in, but then we see Armin coming through intercepts the ball and immediately plays the ball of danger yep however the ball is actually given for a corner kick taking it near post however the ball drops beautifully at the feet of a team uh i believe it's trampiness rovers attacking right now what can armin do in the left flank sends it central armin needs some help nice dribbling however when you got pushed by behind it's almost a bit hard for you to control the ball matt yeah in terms of control you need to be really precise with the uh with how you're gonna you know approach the ball or the player that is basically ahead of you so right now we see uh the ball is with the likes of Sofia Manute of Nagawal can we see him scoring the first goal or we might see Armin Bozjak coming through and taking it a different and right now we see Sofia Manute we have scored that is Cypher but it seems like the first warning for Tampines Rovers. Yep, and we see Sofik Manut was able to get a shot even though it wasn't on target as long as there is an effort to at least show a signal of intent that hey, we ain't coming here for fun. We want to find a goal as soon as possible. But as usual, uh, Armin playing it cool, playing it calm and steady. He just wants to enjoy this game after a long day in the office however Matt the ball does change side and change side again and Armin does have an option to actually attack going in numbers but he is a little bit how do I say this got sandwich and I'm not surprised he loses the ball Matt yeah we can see the defense has been a pretty much solid that is either from both sides hence why we see ball has been shifting left and right all the time and here comes Armin Bozjak. That's an early cross. And, uh, he could not get an outcome from that. And the ball is with the likes of Nagavol, who is on the attack. And Sofia Manut, still Sofia Manut, trying to uh, get into the uh, defensive line of Armin Bozjak of uh, Tampines Rovers at the moment, the team from Singapore. And the pass was a little sloppy there. Never mind. And here comes uh, Sofia Manut again. Running forward, trying to find some space, trying to find the right man to pass to. But unfortunately, there's a limited choice inside. And maybe right now, and Naga will catch the first goal. And it's Sofia Manu who put them ahead. And that is a goal, a quality goal with a quality build up. What a goal, this I got. Yep, very, very good indeed. The build up is solid, was able to deceive. Uh, Armin just now in which way the pass was going to go but it was a bit obvious that on the right flag was open now a long drive almost a shot almost a shot that leads to a goal that is absolutely beautiful thunder a shot however it just missed by a foot away good effort by Armin a boss Jack uh, representing a trampiness a rovers I mean more shots like that is very very welcome man yeah, <laughs> we would love to see screamers any day, actually. Because that, bring, that brings a magic to the match. But right now, 
We see Sofia Manut inside the box again. Can we see him getting another goal? But then, but well, well, headed, but then was not on target actually. Would be much better if it was not on target that is either. Would have been 2 0 by now. Yep, it should have been 2 0, uh, but it should have been not just 2 0. I believe it should be 2 1 because of the long shot by Armin just now was just a whiskers away. Tiki Taka at his finest, lays it off to the right. Now breaking in pace, however, could not go through because he was tackled from behind. That's the thing, man, about this kind of football. When you got tackled from behind, the chances for you to retain the ball, if you're not quick enough, is almost an instant loss. A uh, physical from behind, nice uh, tackle is always, always a beautiful if it's done right. But if you tackle from behind, miss chance, it's going to be a foul in the penalty area. Yep, it's going to be a penalty, but a panicky moment needs to clear the ball armin now does sends it forward goes wide this time around i believe that is a uh, the formation has might change uh from a standard 442 to becomes a 4 uh 2 uh, 4 3 uh, no 4 2 3 1 if i'm not mistaken for armin boss jack but however formation may change very very quickly in this game what's important is your eye for the goal and eye for the opportunity man yeah and we're approaching the stoppage time real real soon that is ifan right now the uh the ball is in the feet of nagaro sofia Manut just got the first goal earlier on and uh, armin yet to bring an impact although we saw one opportunity there which is kind on the right side but never mind this is going to be a corner now a long one goes in and Ar armin boss back immediately clears the ball off Sofia Minut was just, just right there to get that second goal. But then it's not the end yet. He's going to come back again. And makes the back pass. Trying to find a little bit of a space again. And here comes Sofia Minut again. Can he score and bring Nagawal with two goals in front? Or oh, it's going to be Armin who's going to find the equalizer before stoppage time. And maybe he might with the build-up that looks so promising. But as much as it came to be promising... It ended just like that. It's 1 0 going up for Nagavo. Yep, going into this first 45 minutes, it's absolutely nice. Uh, gameplay shown by both of these players. A lot of attacks, uh, some screamers, but however, we must give credit to Nagavo from uh, Cambodia for getting that first goal. Absolutely stunning, but we still see a chance for our man, the number 11, the forward for team. Trampiness Rovers, Armin Bosjak to actually equalize this 27-year-old striker, Matt. Yeah, and uh, right now we see Sofia Manut again. Oh, what a move there, the Cypher. Perfect. As we see how perfect this attack can be. Your Nagavol at the moment sends the ball in the middle. And maybe Sofia Manut has the chance, but then he goes for the shot instead of the man that was running wide on the left. And this time a cross goes in. And nobody is getting a touch on the ball. And it seems like another chance just went past the window again. And uh, this time we see Tampines Rovers. Armin Bozjak trying to build the attack from the back. There's one player running on the top. See, uh, he's playing a traditional 4-4-2 decipher. Uh, well, I've never seen that uh, formation for a long, long time. But never mind, here he comes again. And it was well controlled by the defenders of Champions Rovers. Yep, Champions Rovers, yes, did re-revert re back to a 4-4-2 traditional. Now we see running forward, maybe a quick pass through ball. However, uh, the striker partner was not aware that the ball was rushing at maximum speed to him. Thus, the ball goes straight into the goalkeeper. As we see, we restart the game, the kickoff, or should I say the goal kick, sorry. For team Nagawa, Sofik Manut try to attack into the penalty area. He does skip past his marker, but the ball rolled so far away straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. I mean, I'm just so enjoying this game because real football playing their game on the digital screen, Matt. Yeah, this shows that, you know, the uh, level of understanding of football that they have, especially when you're a professional player, you play on the pitch, you listen to your... Uh, coaches giving you advices, the roles that you need to put on the performance uh, on the field actually. So this all plays a huge role and right now they have an overlooked view of how things can be. 
uh, because usually we see one player with one role coach giving uh, gives the instruction and he just continues to do the job but over here he has the opportunity to change everything on his side but then the ball just went to the goalkeeper I thought it might be a goal scoring opportunity as the goalkeeper was pretty much ahead of his uh, line there but never mind yeah continuing back yeah this gives a lot of uh, wide opportunities wide vision for them how they want their gameplay their football to be played that is Saifa yep and Matt just to add to your comment just now if that was a goal and I will be screaming out of my lungs <laughs> because the keeper was so so far away and I yeah. believe that was actually going for a cross but it went straight to the goalkeeper if that was a goal oh my goodness that is absolutely a stunner now we see Trampinas Rovers Armin are running from uh, the right flank however the pass was well intercepted and now we are turning the tides around can we see can we see the player from team oh Trampinas Rovers to equalize a shot straight to the goalkeeper and I believe it's going to be a foul given by the referee possibly maybe from where that I really need to see man yeah oh ah. look at that decipher ah we see that so I guess a little bit of a trip over there by both players have a look on Akin Fenwa <laughs> but never mind that's a whole <laughs> different topic <laughs> but right now it's remember he's be... a tank yeah he's a tank he's <laughs> he can he can hit the tank <laughs> decipher ah oh that's nice great effort that's a good catch by the goalkeeper actually and uh, right now everything looks a little bit uh, cooled down on both sides uh, Sofia Manut is playing his game Armin uh, yet to show some promising text yet again and uh, right now we see the ball is with the likes of Tampines Rovers again running forward again it's Armin and there's one player asking for the ball the striker for Tampines Rovers easily we see the ball and the movement was stopped again by Sofia Manut of Nagawal, who is ahead that decipher. Only nine minutes. Can we see a difference in this match before we go into, into the full-time decipher? Yep, only eight minutes left, uh, not including extra time. One goal is not impossible, but however, Matt, this game is just so fun. I mean, honestly, I really like to see real players playing football on the digital screen because, as you mentioned, Matt, it's all about how they apply their understanding of the game as we see Trampinas Rovers is attacking and numbers going into the penalty area try to scoop turn while in the meantime loft the ball forward could not get a good contact into the penalty area as Armin Boss Jack is trying to conjure a method to go in dribbling it and lets one fly but that was very very wide and very very ambitious in my book Matt yeah you know the uh, angle was not on his side it was pretty much against him but he still went for the shot maybe thought you know the ball can luckily uh, end in the back of the net we have seen before those kind of things happen but it was a little bit unlucky for him over there and right now we see the ball is with the likes of Nagaval Sofia Manut loses possession and it seems like Armin can change the entire outcome of this Ooh. good save good save by the goalkeeper gonna be a corner now but that build up came from a mistake yes uh Sophie minute pretty much made a little bit of a uh, panicky clearance over there and he looks to i mean he looks pretty calm and composed we see on the cameras over there but never mind a wrong ball goes in and this time Sophie minute ah another mistake can armin punish him from here still armin goes for the shot but Armin is not going to find the net, but yet again, it's not over for the Tampines Rovers team. But it's well cleared off and decipher it all and 1 0 at the moment. And nothing has changed. Good, uh, good win for the uh, team of Nagawal. Yep, as we can see, a lot of fans in the chat group. Uh, most of them are from Cambodia. As we see, Kim Tai, what a miss, and a beautiful goal by Nagawal. Nice shot, exactly. That's the thing we want to see, guys. I'm sure uh, all of you guys know well of these players because they come from your own uh, football, your own country's football club, and it will be yeah. a nice one to see them to play a football game like this right now. And a goal scorer this turn was absolutely beautiful, Matt. Good pass, quick pass, 
goes to the back of the net. Yeah, perfectly done by the uh, Cambodian star over there, the Cypher. He's basically a uh, person from the band called uh, Mustache Band, actually. So, yeah, <laughs> he's over here showing what he can do up against an uh, actual player, which is Armin over there. So, I feel uh, it's a good start for uh, Nagaval, and he might has the opportunity to bring it all the way and uh, we'll be going into the next match real real soon but this effort again this hyper ambitious effort but from the wrong angle mm, yep a wrong angle uh, and again Matt you're talking about the moustache band uh, somebody actually commented Tev Pot uh, Manut is also a musician I mean that's the that's the cool thing about football we love football so much we come from different background some is a musician, some may be a doctor, some may be a nurse or maybe a bricklayer. But they share the same passion which is football, Matt. Let me put it this way, football is for everyone. Yeah, football is for everyone. So that is the tagline. Unless if you're me, so, then I like to click uh, the manager mode. <laughs> That's a different actually, story there is, altogether. There is the tagline for football is for everyone, but then... <laughs> If, if, I think if the viewers knew what I was talking about, then they would know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> so I believe uh, we are getting ready. The players are getting ready to reset. Uh, but let's ask the admin for the last time. Admin, are we going to show the jersey uh, slide again, or it's it's over? Yep. Ah. So this is how you win. The limited edition Champions E football jersey. Step number one, all you need to do is like the live stream that is happening right now. Step number two, all you need to do is tag three of your friends. If you know tag, then we will not count you in. Step number three is going to be sharing this stream with the hashtag Champions E football. And if there's no Champions E football hashtag, we would not be able to find you. And hence, you lose the opportunity of uh, completing step number three so follow all three three steps perfectly and man you stand a chance to win the limited edition champions e football jersey as you can see i'm holding yes, one right now there you go. i'm holding one right now and this is so limited edition nobody knows except for you guys who are watching right now because it is not uh published yet so if you guys know it right now, now is the time for you to get it, Matt. Uh, so Matt, I believe the players are ready. I just got word they have already loaded into the game. So shall we go? Yeah, let's move on. All right, so Second there you go. Game. Yeah. Yeah, this go is ahead, the buddy. match number two. This is the match number two again, Nagavol, where we will see uh, Pratch Sofia Manut, where he is the actually... Uh, uh, a person from the band, which is called Mustache Band, actually. I'm pretty sure those who are watching right now clearly knows who he is. And he is up against Armin Bozjak of Templars Rovers, Singapore. And right now, it seems like Mustache Band are rocking the show with 1-0, to nil, Decipher. Yep. Playing on the bass band and also the solo guitar. But as you know that uh, Manuf is actually a drummer. He is beating beating the drums to victory however Matt it's just 1-0 anything can happen Nagawa will be attacking from left to right and while team Trampiness Rovers FC from right to left yeah so I guess it's going to be a good start for both of the teams only 1-0 earlier on nothing big of a difference actually and uh, right now we can see things can be all settled reset again and uh, play the level of football, the choice of football that both actually wants. But right now, it seems like Nagavol, who looks a little bit much more ambitious in terms of going for the attack. And uh, Sofia Manu might, might go for a shot over there. He could not get the ball, unfortunately. And uh, the ball is with the likes of Armin Bozjak of uh, Tampines Rovers there. Yep, and now we see Armin. Try to do a true ball to his main striker up front. However, could not go through. Good defending by Manuf right here. 
thus leading an attack on the right flank try to cut it in he does lays it off central lays it off again in central now at the edge of the penalty area maybe for one more a little bit of a mistake now an opening in the penalty area a shot hits the knee of the goalkeeper nice save by the goalkeeper uh, first shot in the 11th minute almost almost scored a goal for team and Nagawa Manok uh, now has to defend because Armin is coming in numbers but however that chip pass just uh, got intercepted in mid-air man yeah it was a great uh, opportunity to, uh, opportunity there but right now we see uh, Sofia Manok comes again then there's just not enough space for him to uh, make the run to go inside actually need the speed but then the ball was a little bit far ahead and this time we see Armin on the ball keeps it all come again still Armin oh he just somehow went past him can he go all the way but then see the defensive line has been really solid there for Sofia Manu that is Haifa and looks like he might want to go for a shot on the goal right now he has the opportunity he has the space but then there is two players running on each side not leaving him any sorts of movements to be done over there yep no space at all no room to maneuver and when you are being squeezed like an orange in the morning breakfast you know that it's not a good day at the office miss pass right there by Manot. however we are still too early and even if not mistaken even the previous game the goal that came was pretty late if memory serves correctly matt yeah and uh, when it arrives late that is Ifer, that's where things can get a little bit more difficult because uh, you will be in a rush to get the next goal and uh, with being rushed sometimes we take the highest risk and remember with high risk comes with high risk a high reward but at the same time it can also be uh, you know killing your entire plan it can go wrong sometimes especially if you tend to make a lot of mistakes and not uh, well driven with how you're going to take the risk anyways but yeah we have seen that before we have seen in the previous matches how it went especially for Chonbury FC versus Perse Bandung and uh, hopefully we see more goals coming equally for both of them and right now we see Armin trying to find space but it was well well closed down again by uh, yeah Sofia Manut again the cipher yeah it was a foul because there was a, a tackle from behind uh, but I believe it's only warranted for a foul, not a card. Uh, and a chance maybe for Armin to shoot Swan fly. Only to hit over the crossbar. Good effort. And we're going to see a goal kick by Manut. As we know, Nagawa has already won the first game. 1-0 with a beautiful scoop turn goal. And we are seeing how Manut try to initiate an attack. This time playing it slow and steady. Try to be a little bit more dynamic. Going from left to right. Try to find the opening. Do not want to lose the ball. As I said about losing the ball. Almost loses the ball. Sends it forward in the penalty area. Nice dribble. Maybe a chance. No, he should have just shot the ball. Why did he go back? But that might be an offside <laughs> position. The follow-up is just horrendous. I'm starting to question my belief. Why was there not a shot but a pass? My, my reason is maybe a mispress yeah maybe one of the guitar strings was not tight enough in that end that is Ifa. and that is why things went a little sloppy there instead of going for the shot he went and made a back pass there but never mind he's going to come back again we saw him scoring earlier on and uh, he has the same motivation to do it again but hold on let's see how armin is able to uh push on from here because uh, in the earlier match, the Cypher, it, it was only 1-0 that separates both of them. And it's pretty much wide open, especially when we have so much time in this game. Yep, so we will continue with that free kick. Uh, but I'm still scratching my head, man. Why would you want to do a back pass at that crucial, uh, crucial moment? Another free kick given by the referee. Uh, a very, very... Uh, that looks like a, a nutmeg in my point of view. However, the referee said, nope, it's a foul, maybe a push. So, yeah, it's going to be a free kick for Manut, taking it wide, taking it far away. And we still stuck on the left flank, playing it slow and steady with only five minutes left uh, on the clock for this first half, second game. 
who will take this game is it going to be Manut from Naga World from Cambodia or is it going to be Armin from a team Trampinas Rovers into the penalty area slow and steady steady is smooth uh, going to clear the ball out of danger and I believe that danger will be averted if Manut can kill this attack as we speak man yeah and then right now we see Nagarwal trying to uh, you know try to start over the entire attack but then it came to an end still nil nil the very tight match as we will go into the next match. yep looking at the possession we see uh, Pratch Sofia Manut has been so so good and uh, he has the highest uh, possession so far but right now looks like a promising start uh, from uh, Tampines Rovers maybe Armin can go all the way and yes he does it is Armin Bostak of Tampines Rovers who puts the Singaporean team ahead and it looks like Nagawal or shall I say Pratch Sofia Manut are yet again in a different parallel universe compared to the first one because in the first one we saw Nagawal scoring first Yep, a good shot. It was a mistake in the defense, thus opening a clear room for uh, Trampinas Rover strikers to go in yet again. One more, a little body faint left and right. The ball actually uh, ricochet, picks up the loose ball. The number 17 with a venomous right foot to the near top near corner, and that is enough to score the goal needed. To, if the score maintained like this to tie, we might go into third game, Matt. Yeah, and uh, let's see how uh, Nagabul is able to respond from this decipher. But that is a positive response by Tampines Rovers. And here comes Pratch again. And then Pratch could not get in touch on that. And this time we see the ball is with the likes of Armin Bozjak running on the right side. Makes the pass on the top again. That's a little bit of a space. And a few players' options available actually. And uh, kind of loses balance over there. And it seems like it's going to be a throw in given for Nagawal at the moment. And Nagawal right now sends the ball all the way to the top. French Sofia Manute right now loses possession again. And it's still 1 0 for Tampines Rovers, who are basically in control of the match. And uh, it seems like Sofia Manute is not having the same charisma that we saw in the first match but still it's pretty much early to judge that is Haifa. Mm, pretty early to judge because anything can happen in football as we are now approaching 56 minutes we are almost at the end uh, of the one hour mark with four minutes left on the clock until we reach the first hour we see Manut attacking now to the right flank. There is a run on the right flank to overlap. However, it has been ignored. Thus, a losing momentum of attack now giving ways for Armin Bosjak to initiate an attack. But the ball is gone in an instant, man. Yeah, ball has been shifting uh, rapidly from both teams, actually. And here comes uh, Nagawal. That's a brilliant move. Trying to avoid the tackle coming again. And maybe we might see a chance by Pratch Sofia Manute. And that chance just gone bagging again. Look at that beautiful turn. Just had it all under control except for the final shot inside the box. Should have been on target. But unfortunately it was not on target. It's a shame there. But never mind. There's a little bit more time actually to turn things around. Unless we see Armin who's literally focused right now. To bring the match all the way to match number three right now yep. you see the ball yep go on that is cypher no i mean correct i i totally agree with that one because if we maintain at this rate at this level of gameplay man we are going into the third game and as you know when we are playing so safely so turtle if you want to say it uh we might go drag into the penalty as you know that penalty is not my songs uh my strongest suit uh, because mm -hmm. of the heartbreak that is always there, left, right, and center. And we see Manut going into the. Pe oh my goodness gracious! Great balls of cannon shot. That is absolutely a stunner, man. With a venomous right foot volley to the far post. I was not expecting that. 
I was not expecting that, but mm -hmm. that was a goal worth watching for a replay to the center, runs it forward, and kaboom! It's straight yeah. to the back of the net. Exactly, man. Prach, uh, Sofia Manut is the man. It's 1 1. As I told you earlier on, the decipher, he's still going to come back stronger again. He still had the time. We saw the warning came first, and right now we see a bazooka is being dropped by the Cambodian player and the team right now. And let's see how uh, Armin is going to respond to that. Torn unfortunately loses possession, and here comes Prach Sofia Manut again on the right. Trying to, oh no, he loses possession, but then a referee says that's a foul. And referee's not happy with the challenge over there. Seems like a little bit of a hot uh, contact over there instead of the uh, player. And it shows like, you know, it's going to be a fall. Because we saw that it's either he had more touch on the player compared to the ball there. <laughs> Well, I guess every foul, man, is, is more human touch <laughs> than the ball itself. <laughs> that would be so funny, man. Yeah, I tackled the ball, but it's still a foul. Ref, something might be wrong right there in time. But never mind to that, man. We are now reaching the final moments of the game. Can we see a goal scored? It doesn't matter. Is it going to be Tampines Rovers or also Nagawa from Cambodia? Because we are deadlocked at 1v1. Only one goal will ensure who will advance into the next, or should I say, in the next uh, round of the game. Armin with a long side shot. That is a bit hard to get because it was off balance and he was running almost at full speed, man. Yeah, and he was in a very bad position as well. That if I have a look at that, he was in an angle where it's only going to go to the near post, and there's no way for him to, you know, test the goalkeeper on a far post over there, unless he's a little bit more closer uh, near the goalkeeper's side. It was way wide there, but never mind. Still time for the players to turn things around. If this stays, we will go into uh, extra time, and right now we see. Uh, Pratch Sofia Manute running forward again. Can he get the goal that he wants for the team? Nagawal in a rush over there, and unfortunately, he could not contain it really well. But never mind, here comes Armin. Armin again and runs it on the right side. There's two players on the other side, but that is not going to plan. And I feel the cipher we might go for extra time over here if this stays pretty. Uh, you know, solid and not changing, but 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 hold on again, hold on again. And ah, I take that back again. True, Zyper. true, true. Hold <laughs> on again. He does hold the ball. Wow, a true ball. But everyone is tired. And did you notice, man? Nobody's making subs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is pressing on the players, man. <laughs> oh yeah, finally here we go. Finally, we have a sub. Finally, finally we, we have a sub. It seems like almost everybody on the field is just dying of exhaustion and tiredness uh, from both of this team. Now, there you go, fresh legs. Sends off to the striker, possibly lays it off to the right. Can we bring a new moment? A nice dribble, lays it off central, could not overshot the run. Oh, for Manut, almost, almost get the ball into the penalty area. Oh my goodness, maybe a chance to get one back and he ain't going. He ain't going because two minutes of extra time given by the referee, Matt. Yeah, and maybe he might turn things around. And here comes Price Sofia Manut! And the goal came at the very end. And that's the winner's goal. Boy, here we go. You can start the guitar. You can start rolling the drum. Because it is Mustach Ben that is going to perform at the very end of 2-1 to -one score line right now. Madness, mental, bazookas, and all the, the guns that you have on this planet Earth, excluding nuclear grenades, but wow, thunder shot, right foot, that is a diamond back of a bite. If you know, there is no such venom so powerful than a diamond back, a cotton mouth, name it whatever you want, the, the Nagas is literally on fire on the last minute left is gonna blow the whistle because that's gonna mark the end of this tournament two to one 
Matt, last minute winner. That is so heartbreaking. That is perfect for Naga Wall, actually, in my eye, Decipher. <laughs> of course, it breaks the hearts of Templars Rovers. Armin was not expecting that. He thought, all right, let's go to extra time. But guess what? Guess what? We are dropping a new album. Says. <laughs> Says. The uh, album is called Revenue. Last Minute and Drama. Even. Yeah, and that's, that's <laughs> basically what happened in this match. And it's a perfect sum up of why things can come out of nowhere when it comes to football. But perfect performance, Decipher. I always felt like Naga will uh, perform absolutely well, especially in this match. Uh, we saw them much more stronger. Yeah, we saw much, a little bit of a promising uh, start by uh, Tampines Rovers. But when it comes to final third and making decisions and, you know, throwing grenades and, uh, you know, thunderbolts like this, then it's Naga will all the way. Yep, there is no comeback. Honestly, there's no such thing as a comeback when you got hit on the last moment, on the last minute. That is absolutely stunning. And I'm hearing music, applause everywhere, left, right and centre because of this goal. 90 plus 3 minutes. What a shot. No anti-venom, no antidote is available for this thunder shot. To the back of the net, man. What a game indeed. Yeah, perfect game. That is my fair. Worthy winners, which is Naga World. And uh, I can pretty much say it's French. Sophia Manute, who will be going all the way. So it's 2-0. Two, two and I believe it is all... Uh, I mean, the margin is not big, that is, Eiffel. But it's all won by one goal difference, actually. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I totally agree on that one. So, congratulations for Naga. Uh, yep, that is a Naga World. Mm -hmm. uh, will advance into the next game, Naga World, as mentioned. Uh, however, for Trampiness Rovers, uh, will be ejected from this tournament uh, in the star match. So, Matt, I believe that leaves us to the final match. Yep, here it is, okay. the star category. So for the next semi-final, it's going to be Persip going up against Persip Bandung going up against Chonburi, Beckham Putra going up against Warachit. Uh, the second semi-final from Buriram United is going to be Chitipat Tanklang going up against uh, Sofia Manut in the second semi-final, which is due on the 30th of September, Matt. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic to watch. And let's see who's going to go all the way to the final of that, Isaifa. This is going to be interesting to yep. watch. Like... Like, you can literally see all the other players, Armin, uh, Ponchila Bugas, Lam Ti Pong, uh, Momodu Sumari did not make it through. So, this shows we are going strong on the elite, uh, on the star category. So, this is the match that's coming up, the final match of the day. Buriram United up against Tampines Rovers. The last best of three of tonight. Uh, the, the introduction, this is the last game of Trampiness Rovers and also Buri, Buri Ram United. Dylan Goh going up against the Thailand prodigy Liha Antoine. Matt, oh, we will go for a short break. Once we return, we will be entertained with some stunning football in the... Take care, guys. Don't go anywhere. Five-minute breaks. No, ten-minute breaks. Bye-bye. <laughs>
what is going on everybody welcome back welcome back and again i say welcome back this is your big man decipher together with my good buddy matthews isaac as your official commentator for champions e football tournament where we are right now at the final game of the day man the final game of the night what a game indeed yeah. will be shown after this man yeah man i'm really looking forward to it of course it's the final game and uh the last game of the day and let's see who makes it through their knockout rounds and stuff so it's gonna be a lot of dramas especially it is the last match and we know who is going up in that last match it is a very big name that we already been commentating for the past few weeks and uh yeah i don't want to spoil it yet but i will soon <laughs> yep we will so without further ado guys let's watch the final game the final matchup of tonight as we are showing right now, it's going to be the young Thailand prodigy, uh, which is from Buriram United. Liha Antoine are going up against Trampiness Rovers Singapore. Dylan Gohmet. Yeah, this is going to be something amazing to watch. We have seen the brilliance of this young kid up against Trampiness Rovers. Dylan Gohmet. In the previous season, uh, in the previous match day, decipher he was a little bit off form, but uh, let's see if he's able to. Uh, show something spectacular up against this kid who has been terrorizing every players and every teams lately yep and uh, if memory serves me correctly after two games uh for buriram united player liha antoine did not lose any game yet man haven't lost still on a winning streak yeah like i said he's he's been spectacular he's been a, a phenomenal and we have seen the brilliance of him in the previous match um yeah i feel like someday i would really wish to see him going up against uh, indra sugandhi of Perse bandung or a few other players that have performed absolutely well especially uh no high call yeah he has already been up against no high call in the first uh week of the match but yeah um i still feel like the cypher other players do have the potential to offer more in their game at the same time this kid is showing why he is special over here Yep, yeah, because uh, due to the fact that, remember, Matt, throughout this tournament, uh, our good buddy here, Liha Antoine, literally holds the highest scoring record, 11 goals in a game, Matt. And he is just 13 years old. Yeah, he is he's just not uh, stopping that decipher. Look at that. His lineup looks so amazing. He's going to play a 4 triple 2 formation. And um, this lineup... I mean, he's so confident with his gameplay, and that what that is exactly what makes it so interesting to watch his gameplay. Actually, of course, Matt, because we had commentated this kid, which is Liha Antoine, which is attacking from right to left in the blue kit of Aburiram United, while Trampinas Rovers will be attacking from left to right uh, in the yellow kit. When we were commentating for the 12th uh, Elite Esports Tournament uh, for PES. So he was playing, literally representing Thailand, even when he was like, what, 13, 12 years old back then? That is absolutely stunning, Matt. Yeah, especially when he was representing Thailand at that age, Decipher, in an ISF World Championship. Oh, this kid is, is going to be... He's, he's going to go to the very top right now. And look at that. His movements have been a little bit much deadly when it comes to... Uh, yeah, his movements, I mean, especially we have seen all kinds of different players' movements throughout the tournaments. But this kid has that X factor, you know, that X factor that, that brings the change uh, in his gameplay to Cypher. Yep, he has the aura, he has the move, he has the skills. And maybe this time around he does go into the penalty area. But as usual, it's a little bit too early to concede a goal. And I believe that Dylan is just defending, just trying to understand this kid, the Thailand prodigy from Aburiram United, man. Yeah, and here he comes again. And uh, this time we see Liha Antoine trying to find some sort of a space from that right side angle, actually. He tried to scoop the ball in, but look at that. The players are basically in their position to receive the ball. And uh, he tries to get past Dylan Go over there, but that's not working. And Dylan Go, the pass yet again was not well focused, not precise enough. It was well blocked again. And uh, this time we see blockings after blockings from both of them, shutting down the passing lanes. That is what 
I've been uh, talking about modern football, but here comes Lihar Antwala. Oh, almost. And maybe for a second chance, the ball is free. Immediately cleared off. And boy, that's the first warning coming from this Thailand team again, Decipher. Yep, first attack almost provide a summer. Uh, uh, how do I say? Almost provided a goal for Boriram United. However, we see that this young kid, Liha Antoine, is just playing around. Try to find where is the weakness of the opponent. Maybe this time around, he does. Sends the ball. It hits the defender. Does the ball. Does ricochet. Goes out for a corner kick. Maybe a close one. There is four blue shirts in the penalty area. Takes it to the ground. However, a little bit... Uh, Stoning right there, maybe a mess control by Liha Antoine. And the ball is right now with Dylan, who is attacking, maybe in numbers in the left flank. Maybe wants to cross it in. He has to stop and pull it back, uh, pull back the ball because not many men in forward in the good area to receive the ball forward. Still one, two passes, lays it off to the left. Triangular move, Tiki Taka movement at its best with a long shot, but it was a bit wide. And it was a good uh, attack by Dylan Goh, man. Yeah, Dylan Goh has been showing a little bit much more a uh, brighter start compared to the uh, match week number two decipher. Right now, he looks much more uh, confident with his gameplay. He looks much more, uh, you know, trying to play his sort of football and it's working. And uh, right now, he knows that he's up against a sensational kid. And let's see how this is going to work for him. So on the ball right now, we see Buriram United. Liha Antoine trying to uh, get the first goal in for the Thailand side. And right now, we might see it's Liha Antoine. And the ball went wide. This is the second miss. And uh, we still have a long way to go. But but then, it looks promising, that is Haifa. Yep, it looks promising. The ball does jump off the ground with a half volley. However, Matt maybe the angle wasn't right maybe the body position was a little bit awkward thus the result does not show but again a good shot a good effort by the young a thailand prodigy liha antoine uh, 37 minute has gone uh, i see that both of these players playing it safe however it does go in favor of aburiram united because they are attacking oh, no. what did happen is that going to be a foul is that going to be a free oh, kick yeah. yep it's going to be a free kick man yeah, this is going to be dangerous. We have seen him scoring from here. And here is Liha Antoine. And Liha oh Antoine hits God. the post. That's a brilliant tactical move. But right now, it's not over. It's Liha Antoine inside the Penalty. Box. Feel not yet. Not yet. And Liha Antoine. And there you go. You can miss one time. You can miss again. You can miss the third time. But you can never stop this kid coming back again. And that is the goal from this sensational 13 years old kid leon antoine what a goal wow first you need to give credit i mean that could have been a penalty in my point of view but straight away we see a back pass i believe samuel was at the end of it uh with mm -hmm. a right footer uh goes to the back of the net a uh, samuel 36 minutes because buriram united if memory serves me correctly this is an official team uh, in this game, thus all of the players are real players. Uh, so, yeah. yep, it seems like um, Mojo has been discovered for Liha Antoine, but Dylan Go just needs to defend it well. Yep, the ball ricochet backs to Liha Antoine in the penalty area, maintain it properly, maintain it coolly, but no, it's not going through, man. Yeah, and the attack has not ended there. But perhaps right now, <laughs> there's two players on the uh, left side they're rolling left and right they're like you know uh, maybe call for an injury or something but right now we see buriram united on the attack and here comes leon antoine has options on the left again oh that's a brilliant move yet again trying to test the goalkeeper yet leon antoine it's the ball inside and maybe right oh now my we see God. the goal number two. Oh, this is so brilliant how precise you can be and that is the goal scorer, Maikon, the number seven of Buriram United. But look at this move again, Decipher. No one saw it coming, not even the goalkeeper. And it is the goal number two for the Thailand side. Oh my goodness, how could that be a goal with so much close movement? 
Uh, no foul given, um, should I say no offside given by the referee. Let's just say, Matt, if my con wasn't even there, Matt, it was going yeah. in anyway. So it shows how precise, how technical this kid is. Liha Antoine finding option, finding place to attack. Very, very dynamic. Now maybe come back again. Going forward, Buriram United through ball for the next goal. It's a penalty. Penalty. It's the penalty. No joke given. Referee I mean, says, sorry, not so sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel the frustration from uh, uh, Dylan Gore that is Haifa. Hands the penalty right now. You can see that. Oh, nice. That was a smart move. He decided to loft the ball first and then concedes a penalty. Smart move by Buriram United. Uh, O'Neill's going to take it. He just powers it, but this time around, the goalkeeper parries it, Matt. Oh, that's a big chance. And uh, it was well defended, well denied by the goalkeeper, Tampines Rovers, who right now needs to score two more goals, Decipher. But yet again, you can see how smart this kid has been. Only 13 years of age and the youngest player in this competition. And uh, he has been pretty much bright ahead all the players that we have commentated so far and the movements that he makes is so so unique so special like there's no word i can describe actually it's pitch perfection over here and here he comes again the likes of the other player look at that he, he takes a long time to make the pass and there you go goal number three it is all written by him point by point detailed by detail look at that man so special perfection and boy decipher i don't think so nobody's going to stop this kid so far for now well you know matt whenever we have a brain surgery you go to a brain surgeon and when you play <laughs> this game it seems like this kid is a football surgeon he literally dissects the opponent cuts it into small pieces turns them inside out looking for where is their weaknesses and literally attack them non-stop from left from right center top and bottom like there is no way for you to read which way he is coming from daggers in between the teeth mat yeah and what makes it even special is that he is able to find the opponent's weakness with the very nick of time and we have seen few of the other matches we have commented out the other matches that it took a long time for an uh, vet uh, for a veteran player to know much about the opponent but this kid knows what he's doing just goes in like there's no defender standing in there and uh, right now we see Dylan Goh still could not get a touch on that and this time we see Buriram United with Lehan Antoine ah still Lehan Antoine who has space and what makes it even special about this kid is he is able to exploit small spaces like that decipher which is very hard and very detailed to be um, specific over there another free kick at the edge of the penalty area remember oh no. he scored a few from this position is it another one he does score another one goodness gracious good lord in heaven my goodness matt from a free kick Again, this is almost the third time he got a goal from a free kick. Look at that swerve. Top a, a right corner. There is no saving that. No, nobody can save that. Not even the Flying Finn. Or should I say the Flying Dutchman. Flying Finn is a different guy altogether. But the Flying Dutchman could not reach that. OMG, Brian O'Neill has redeemed himself, Matt. Missed the penalty, but he scored a beauty. Oh man, I have no words to describe about this kid. He's enjoying this game. Look at his face. He's not even feeling pressured. There's nothing wrong. He's like, you know, I'm on a day and I'm just playing uh, e-football for fun. And here he comes again, maybe for the goal number five. And right now, there might be a chance. But then he beats the post, reflects it off all the way to the goalkeeper again. But look at that, how deadly he can be. And he is so, so dangerous. Like. Whenever he's in the box, I mean, the oppositions are basically shaking. Like, you know, where is this kid is going to go? But he goes on to areas where the players does not go. And which is why you can see him finding spaces in a very tight areas like that. And right now, Dylan Go, maybe he can get the motivation running again. But I believe the motivation just ended over there. 
And here comes Buriram United and Lehan Antoine running for it. And we see a build-up gameplay from Lehan Antoine that looks super unique again. That can score the goal, number five. Tiki Taka, special move. And that's mm. going to be another penalty again. Yeah, yeah, you can argue all you want. But that is a clear penalty. Oh, man. My. But that was a good bridge. Almost like, oh. <laughs> you know, what? It, it, you bridge the ball. Uh, that is so nice. And again, Brian O'Neill, are you going to make it count? Just now you missed, but you scored a beauty with a free kick. Now it's redemption for Liha Antoine. He is just literally smiling right now. He is going to make it count. Will he? He missed for the second time. Guess what, Matt? He, did, Brian O'Neill cannot score a penalty to save his life in this game, but he scores yeah. a beauty from a free kick. Ah, maybe he's just very unlucky when it comes to penalties. But right now, you can see the ball is still in the legs of Dylan Gore, who is basically uh, restarting the attack from the left side. And this time we see uh, Dylan Gore again trying to find space. But then he needs more support there. He needs more players to uh, support his attack. He got it one back, three players on the top. Can we see him scoring a goal? Although he is down to 4 0 at the moment, a goal can give him a little bit of a hope. Unless we see the ball is being uh, stuck again in the legs of Buriram United. Ah, I take it back, man. I just literally called it off. And yeah, and this time we see uh, Tampines Rovers gets the ball back. And Buriram United got it back again. And this time we see the attack is with the likes of uh, Lihan Antoine who can go for the goal number five a little bit too much. But then it does not have to worry him. He's very good at finding space and maybe right now and maybe not. Oh, Decipher, whenever he has the ball, it's a never-ending story. Maybe, yeah, I tell it. <laughs> I tell it again and again. It's never-ending story with this kid. It's 5-0. We are playing for exhibition. Well, it's... Matt, I mean... Goals will be scored in football. That is without a doubt. I can tell you that goals will be scored in football. Win and lose is what you call the bread and butter in football. But what is so special about this kid, Liha Antoine from Buriram United, 13 years of age. He represents Thailand at IESF World Championship, which you and me commentated, yes? Which you and me commentated. And yeah. this kid played with the best of the region. And thus, that is how we see a kid of this quality literally tearing up the pitch. Look at that control. Like there is glue at his feet. And he's even playing like it is nothing. Look, he's just smiling. I bet that his parents is actually watching his game right now. I mean, the parents yeah. is like, yeah, I'm giving you support. Five goals, 87 minutes, three minutes left on the clock. Look how he finds positioning look how he reads the game this kid is just out of this world and it's a foul yeah it's going to be a foul there although there's only four minutes left on the clock and i'm not sure if uh Tampines rover singapore is able to get anything back for now because it looks super strong super solid for this kid at the moment he's enjoying the match you can literally see him it's all smiles and rainbows on his face at the moment and on the other side, we see a full of frustrated face, which is Dylan Gore right now. Could not believe how this is happening again. And that is a wonderful save. And right now, we see the ball ace with the likes of Tampines Rovers. Maybe for one last attack. Can he make it count? That is not going to count. And I believe that is the end. 5-0 Decipher. Buriram United. Lehan Antoine are basically running some magical shows right now. Yep, running the show with a magical wand at his hand. And that magical wand is the controller he has. He is tearing apart with beautiful skill move, with beautiful dribble. I mean, if you ask me, it's not so much about how many goals he scored. It's how he scored that is really captive, uh, cap uh, capturing my mind. Because he yeah. plays like so smooth. He moves with grace. And also finesse. You cannot deny that. Look at this shot taken. And this time around, it's just an angle he missed. And then a goal scorer. This is by Samuel. Miss interception. 
Beautiful tackle. However, the ball is still with Samuel and it goes to the back of the net. This kid really, really knows what this game is all about, man. Yeah, he looks like, you know, he's just born for this game that is Eiffel. Look at that. He knows where the goal is. He knows where his players would be. And I'm not sure if I'm able to describe. This is like, you know, back in the prime days of Lionel Messi, where all the commentators were going bonkers. And like, you know, who is this number 10, uh, you know, kid from Catalonia? And I feel like, who is this kid from Thailand right now, Decipher? It's the same vibe again. Yep. Because the, the, the reason why when we were in uh, IESF World Champions, uh yeah. because there was so much professional players i mean we were commentating players from ukraine we were commentating players from uh the southeast asian the middle east uh and also levan areas i mean we saw a lot of deadly players uh but this time around when we see liha antoine uh in this group of players he literally outshined the opponent but he is not invincible yes he did concede a goal man previously uh, yeah. But however, he hasn't lost yet. So I believe, Matt, uh, the players have reset. And we will go into the next game of this best of three between Buriram United FC going up against Trampiness Rovers. Liha Antoine, first game five, a Dylan go zero. But anything can happen in the second game, Matt. Yeah, and I'm hoping that, you know, uh, maybe uh, Dylan Go steps up in this match. Uh, try to give more uh, push on his back there uh, towards his players that he's going to control, you know, approach the game much more bravely, uh, approach the game with the uh, purpose, uh, much more stronger purpose, the desire to actually score goals or else we will see how this sensational kid is able to do wonders. Look at that. He's, he's all prepared, man. He's not even making a change at all. He, he's just like, you know, i am already sorted out my team. This is how I'm going to play. And I will just do what I need to do. That is this kid. And I'm not sure there's any other way to describe this kid anymore that is either. Yeah, uh, but it's actually a nice formation used by uh, Trampiness Rovers, or should I say Dylan Go. Um, he knows the fact that uh, the kid, or should I say, uh, the prodigy himself, which is uh, Liha Antoine, loves to dribble around. So maybe he would like to consider having a very, very solid defense maybe with a two double favorite as you can see right now two defensive midfielder that will uh drop into or should i say go forward very late in attacking but will come back down to protect their defensive line as soon as possible uh also we need to give credit how liha antoine literally holds the ball and pass with laser precision but yet again yes. this kid is a project pro a prodigy but we cannot discount Dylan go from Trampiness Rovers. Definitely that is Cypher. So I hope. Let's see what's going to happen. So we go again for the uh, match number two between Buriram United and also Trampiness Rovers of Singapore. Uh, as usual, Trampiness Rovers will be on the yellow, attacking from left to right. And right to left on the blue is going to be Buriram United, Liha Antoine of Thailand. And right now, you see Dylan go with much more compact defensive football with uh, two. Uh, double pivots actually who is basically guarding the back line and that is a smart move by uh, the uh, 13 years old sensational kid from Thailand at the moment look at that he's just waiting for the players to approach and one two again and that's how you break the defense and that's how you score the goal give him the golden boot already like he already owns the golden boot right now oh what a goal decipher he did not run the ball into the back of the net. He did not shoot the ball into the back of the net. He walks the ball into the back of the net. Look how he passes. He is literally playing like there is no defense. There is no 11 players on that football pitch, including the goalkeeper. My goodness. I think this is Muenta, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, Subhanak Muenta. Matt, in real life, this is the kid who literally run riot in the Malaysian backline four and in the game, he runs riot in the opponent's half, man. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, things are being uh, really, really on the way, on the top, top moment at the, in this match that is, I felt like, you know, I'm literally like losing my words, like, yo, how should I actually describe this match? It looks 
superbly written for one player over here. And that is none other than this kid over here. And right now, see the ball again. He controls the ball absolutely well. He knows how to, you know, precisely attack. Wait for the opponent to come and get the ball. And that's how he makes the move. Look at that. He's just going past like Lionel Messi. This is Lionel Messi of the virtual version, man. But here he goes again. And there you go. And I believe it is offside again. The off target to be uh, specific over there. But look at that decipher. How many people are you going to put? Are you going to play back eight at the moment right now to stop him? Because he's running past the defense like they are not even there. My goodness, Matt. Did you see the amount of body fate? The amount of him fainting his body movement from left to right. I mean, if you want to call it what? A croquetta or whatever you want to call it. I'm out of words. That is just mental in my point of view. But... But we can see how Dylan right now is trying to absorb as much pressure as possible because I think the only way Dylan can actually do a goal or should I say attack is maybe with a counter attack because this kid is literally moving the ball, moving the ball to his own will like the ball is his for the taking. 2-0, Brian O'Neill. Look at this dribble. One touch, two touch, three touch, four, five. Brian only six, seven, and it goes to the back of the net. I call this kid 10 touch goal kid. Oh man, Decipher, I, I just need to question myself over there. You know, if I really clearly saw the ball was rolling on his feet or the ball was literally stuck on his feet there, like it's always been there forever. But man, what a goal that was. Goal number two. And this kid is not stopping anytime soon. It's only 21 minutes, which means he's averagely scoring. Uh, one goal in 10 minutes and here we go again the lights off uh, the number 13 in the midfield and uh, here comes Buriram United and Lihan Antoine again can we see him scoring oh look at that look at the movement look at how he creates the space the chance to go uh, to uh, score goals the cipher I, I feel like you know not many players can do this and this kid is showing us what he is basically capable of and Dylan go on the other side, trying as much as he can to pull him off. But right now, I don't think so. Things can work at the moment. Look at that. He sends everyone dancing <sighs> and he scores. He frustrates the entire defense. He tells them, go back and play some Sunday League football again. Look at how precise. Look at how detailed he is with his movement. Oh man, I'm running out of words at, at this point. Matt, you remember when we were doing our IESF tournament when we, were, when we saw the Iranian kid literally dribbled the ball yeah. from halfway to the goal? Why do I have flashback in this kid right now? <laughs> Why do I remember the time when we were shouting over our lungs when that, I forgot who was his name, but he was from Iran, if memory serves me correctly. He hold the ball dribbled from midfield half point into a goal. I mean, Matt, I, I'm having flashback. If you want to call it like what uh, a breakdown for me, but this kid is really a prodigy in the making. Liha oh, Antoine, oh, oh. oh, I'm a mistake, but oh, man, look at that. Even in a sliding tackle from a most awkward position, he timed it so good and it's not even a foul. Exactly. I'm like wondering, you know, you are sliding from the back. That is definitely going to be a fall. That's what we all thought. But guess what? Guess what? It's the magic again. <laughs> yeah, it's the magic again. Like, you know, there's no fall, no cards, no calls. Referee says play on. That's a clean tackle. The ball literally contacted with the lake and not the other player. And we are over here scratching our heads like, wait, he did that from the back. How is that even possible? Like, he and literally he knows that, the game, Decipher. Like, he literally knows the game 100%. Like, this. And the <laughs> best part is, Matt, he was yeah. tackling not from close. So he was sliding. And it hits. So that's the moment when I was like, oh my God. Oh, look, still with him again. One, two passes. It goes to the back of the net. Four goals, 40 minutes. Matt, one goal in 10 minutes. And it's Muenta again. A hat trick. Tiki Taka. A roulette. A nice roll. And it's a vertical heel to heel. And it's again on the near post. I have no words that I can say. And I have no idea on what to say. But this kid, 
I'm not sure if he's on fire, if he's on ice, or he is right now in the other side of the moon. Oh, this guy is from a different universe, man. Look at that. He just... <laughs> I mean, how do I tell this to people? You know, this kid has been scoring uh, one goal in 10 minutes. And, you know, leaving the... Uh, Opponents so frustrated like they don't have like they don't even have the motivation to play football again And maybe might add the number five and there you go almost number five came through But unfortunately was just a little bit off over there But yet again, I'm not sure if he's going to stop from here. He's coming back again You might see the number five by Lehan Antoine waiting and waiting not gonna go for the shot And unfortunately shot in the end was blocked and it's still not over yet. The referee goes by his rules. <laughs> the referee decides it's still... Oh, almost go in from to the far post. Another corner. Eh, the ball is not out of play. Oh, my goodness. Now, it's still possibly one more. Nice one. Oh, he could not skip over the last defender. The referee blows the whistle. Subhanat Moenta gets a hat-trick. Five shots. Five, uh, eight shots. Five on target, four goals. That is almost a hundred percent, man. Yeah, I think at this point, whoever that's watching this match, you know where this golden boot is going to go for. And right now, he might at number five, and he's inside the box again. Precise movements, but that final move was a little bit off. Could have went for the shot instead, but he was looking for different options inside again. And here he comes. Back into the box, and here is Lehan Antoine. It's Lehan Antoine. And this time the ball went a little wide, not hitting the target. Is like that. Yep, just a little bit wide. Maybe the angle again was a little bit acute, uh, a little bit too sharp. But however, Matt, it was a dangerous effort. Matt, I'm gonna call this kid not just by the name of a prodigy, not just by the name of Lehan Antoine, but also I'm calling him the doctor, the surgeon, the brain surgeon for this game. Finding options, finding ways into scoring goals, scoring for fun like this game is his for the taking, man. Yeah, and if you look at him, like if you, if you have a look on the left, he's like literally having a conversation with his coach or something. And uh, he's literally enjoying the game. There's like no, uh, no pressure on him. There's nothing much to think for. There's no way that you're going to think about, you know, uh, counter-pressing or there's going to be a tactical changes. Are you going to change formation? No. He's like, you know, I get the ball, I attack. But Dylan, go! <laughs> finally, finally, Tampines Robes are back. And Dylan go finally got the goal he wanted. But will there be time? Can he stop this kid from scoring and get back in the game again? Yep, a beautiful attack from the white flag. As you know that uh, our prodigy kid, which is Leha Antoine, uh, focus more of his players in the center of the field. So literally when everybody focus central, they are a little bit exposed on the flanks. And this exposure has caused a bit of a trouble and also a chance for Dylan Go to at least get one back. Three goals uh, difference, trying to get the goal, maybe to close the gap and maybe to equalize for goal. However, look at that Liha Antoine dribbling like there is no tomorrow. He takes on four, he takes on five. That was number six, but it hits the opponent defenders and it goes in favor of Dylan Go right now. Yeah, well, what's astonishing right now is that, you know, he can get past players. You can even put uh, a big number of players inside the box and he can dribble past all of them. And that is how special this kid is. You know, not many players I've seen in my life are able to do that. And we as commentators have been commentating this game for many, many years. And we have never came across someone who can do magic like this. And right now we see Dylan go immediately uh, loses possession. And Buriram United comes again. Leon Antoine trying to find the space he needs. He can create space for himself. And uh, this time, I guess the uh, focus on the defensive side has been a little bit off, but not in the backline decipher. Yep, this time around, I think uh, Leha Antoine 
uh, was able to sniff out, okay, I'm gonna be attacked on the flank, so I need to be ready. And now he is initiating an attack. It goes central, possibly, maybe, nope, no, sorry, Bob. That is number five, goal number five. Wahid Isnani Salasa Arba'a Khomsa, a goal Khomsa, goal number five for this kid, this doctor, the surgeon, which is Liha Antoine. My God, look how precise he cuts the defenders. He cuts the line, open wide, come inside. It's number five. It raps like a song just now, man. Yeah, really good goal there. And it seems like he's not going to stop anytime soon. He's just enjoying the game. This is already an exhibition. It's five to one. And uh, there's still a long way to go in this match. If this kid keeps terrorizing every opponent this way, then it's going to be pretty much difficult to go up against him. Uh, but looking at how he creates space and how he creates result for himself speaks a lot of words for himself, that is I friend. Here he comes again. And here is Lehan Antoine and could go for the goal number six. And that is goal number six for Buriram United. And it seems like Lehan Antoine is just getting started actually to be precise you know well if there's a doubt if you are need help if you need a physician who do you call a doctor yep this kid is a doctor in this game he knows where to find it and he will exploit it to his own liking man 6-0 by Samuel and uh, he is now, he needs another five more goals to equalize his tally of 11. But I don't think Dylan will be so grateful enough to give and let so much fly in this time left. Uh, I believe another 7, 8, 16 minutes left, Matt. Yeah, and you know what's even much more fascinating, Decipher? We are not even sure if this is the best of him. He's just a kid so far. He's only 13 years old. And you know, in the next 10 years, this kid could be terrorizing the world someday you know looking at his performance and right now he might add another one and maybe yes he does he oh my the God. number seven and we are rolling in heaven for him it is the number seven Mikon who's got the number seven as well from his jersey yeah of course but yeah this kid has the potential to be the world best decipher like you know we have commentated even in the ISF world championship yes there are players who can make magical moments and stuff but if you realize the age gap, they have been already in their 20 pluses, right? But this kid is only 13, which makes me scratch my head. Like, wow, this kid has a long years ahead and he can turn out to be a legend in this game. Yep, I totally agree with that one, Matt. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to shout anymore, but I can tell you, Matt, this game is literally full of goals. I mean, it's not about the amount of goals, it's how the goal is scored. Now, we are in the penalty area, goes across the keeper, tries to do a quick a vertical heel to heel. However, it was pushed away by the defenders, thus giving it the near post with a nice bicycle kick. However, this time around, it hits uh, the keeper straight, picked up the loose ball, maybe a through ball looking for Samuel, but Samuel was out of position. And Matt, that ball is not leaving the opponent's half. And now we turn around, we spin around. The doctor is in the house, but this time around, it's not going to the plan. Yeah, and here we go again. And this time, Dylan Gore somehow found a lot of space to exploit. And still, he makes a back pass. And the players were not receiving that. They came a little bit late, Dylan Gore. And Tempinus Rovers, the chance just went by like that. And immediately switches side. For Buriram United, Lehan Antoine could go for the number eight from here. And still inside the box, he has the space and found the right man. And saved by the goalkeeper. Came sliding in. But then it was well saved. And there's only four minutes left. He might go for the number eight. I have a strong feeling he might go for the number eight. And unfortunately, we see another defensive uh, awareness being shown by Dylan Go, but not aware enough. Two players pressing into one player to force an error and here he comes again it is Lehan Antoine and that is the goal number eight comes in ain't nobody stopping me says the 13 years old sensational kid from Thailand 
And that is Liha Antoine. Yep, the doctor strikes again. This time around with number 91. He cuts with precise precision. The two center back was wide open. The pass was exceptional. And the finishing is just stupendous. You, you that know, is like goal number just, eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, this kid is basically uh, playing this game on a beginner's level, you know. You know, there's a setting called beginner, amateur and stuff, right? He's playing on a beginner level. Like, look at the scoreline. <laughs> I mean, like, I have nothing to say, you know. You know, I'm being Jose Mourinho right now, you know. I have nothing to say. Like, literally, I have nothing to say. Yeah. Oh. What a match. And it seems like, you know, it is really crazy to watch him scoring so many goals in this match. Goals after goals, it came again and again and again. And I have no clue how this kid is able to do that. Look at that. All this goal came from precise dribbling. Like not many yep. uh, players are able to do that. Because uh, most of the players would like to go on movements, you know, pass the ball quickly and score goals. But this kid, with dribbling, he is able to create chance. He is able to create the space he wants and releases other players freely. And that is what makes him different from everyone, Disciple. Yep. And I'm just at a loss of words. I mean, uh, look at how he controlled the ball. I mean, this is how real professional plays guys if you guys want to know how me and matt was watching when we were at iesf for the world's 12 world tournament for e-football that then it was called pass it's almost the same template it's control after control if we i mean oh my god look at that stick the ball stick it to the back of the net and it's a game over matt 8-1, 5-0, 14 goals, him alone, man. I mean, 13 goals by Buriram this, United, man. This is what I said, you know, it's time to give him the golden boot. It's not, I mean, this tournament is not even over yet, but we know who is writing the golden boots right now. Nobody's going to award him, but, you know, uh, he's going to award this thing to himself because he created this and the golden boot is literally made just for him, by him. <laughs> Yep, so I believe that if the admin uh, if, if the admin is listening, uh, if you are going to make a trophy, a trophy about the top goal scorer, you may put it right now. I mean, this kid alone, tonight alone, already scored 13 goals. In the previous game, he scored already 17 goals. You know, Him you know, alone is already fact, like 30 right? goals. You know, for a fun <laughs> fact, right, Decipher, in the history of football, only Ronaldinho scored 13 goals in a futsal match and that became a world news. But this kid right now, He's scoring 13 goals in a match. And how similar is that from virtual football to reality? Crazy, man. <laughs> mental. Yep, it's mental. So I believe that we will show currently the updated, uh, all of the updated scores and everything. Admin, just show us uh, what is it and we will read it out for easy going. So let's see what is next. Yep, this is the prize yeah. pool, Matt. All of these players are fighting for the prize pool of 9,250 where you can see elite category is the esports players with a, to a total of, I believe that is 7,500 and while the rest is with star category 1,500 and also 250 USD, man. That's the prize pool. Yeah, yep, that is the prize pool. If you look at the elite category, the first place is going to bring back 5,000. Number, number two is going to bring back... 2000 number third is going to bring back usd 500 star category thousand on the first second is going to bring 500 third is going to be usd 250 so it is all broken down over here and these are the prizes that all these players are fighting for this either who's going to get a hands on all of this we will find out on the uh, grand finals yep. so there so you go this mm, yep go ahead matt yeah this is where if you want to win the signed Per se, Bandung jersey, all you need to do is follow these three simple steps. That is to like and follow Champions eFootball on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, the second thing is tag three of your friends in the uh, giveaway section, uh, especially on the post, actually. So the third one is going to be share the post and make sure you hashtag it with Champions 
eFootball and winners will be announced on Friday, 24th of September, which is basically tomorrow. So if you want to get your hands on this signed Persib Bandung jersey, this is the moment right now. Yep. And here is the current, the final updated table. So for Group A, Group Alpha, we see Persib Bandung is champion, or should I say top of the group with 9 points, followed by Chonburi FC. And then also below, we have Nagawa with 3 points and also United City FC. Matt, that is for Group A. How about Group B, Matt? Uh, group B, we see a, com a complete dominance by Buriram United with 9 points on the top. And we see JDT making it into the uh, second place. And on the third place, we see Ho Chi Minh City with 3 points, JDT on 6 points early on. And Tampines Rovers did not accumulate any points in this group so far. It's like for zero points to them and we already know who's going to go through from here. So admin on duty, please see the goal difference is 30. So that's a golden <laughs> boot winner already. I ain't going to talk anything that is facts. So for semi-final, the first semi-final dated on the 30th of September, it's going to be Persib Bandung going up against a Chon Bore. Uh, it's Beckham Putra going up against the happy-go-lucky Warachit. And while semi-final number two is going to be, uh, I believe, is a Chipat Taklak going up against, uh, I believe, if I pronounce it correctly. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to butcher the gentleman's name. It's yeah, going to be uh, Sophia Manut. Yes, yeah. that's the game right, Sophia from Manut, another yeah. world. Yeah, Manu, yeah. The, guy, the, the guy, the drummer from Mustache Band. Yeah, so that is the uh, star bracket actually. And there you go, all the uh, match final scores of match day three are all out. United, uh, City FC up against uh, Nagawal, where we see Nagawal uh, became victorious with 2-1. to one. And we see uh, Chitipat Tangklang. Yeah, there was a little bit of a technical difficulties that happened. And hence, where we see Chitipat Tangklang of... Uh, yeah, the team will be going into the next stage. And on the down here, we see Chonburi FC uh, loses against uh, Persib Bandung 2-0. That is Ifa. Uh, not even one match was won by Chon uh, Chonburi actually. And on the rest, we see JDT victorious against Ho Chi Minh City 2-0. Pranch, uh, Sofia Manut 2-0 up against Armin Boschnak of uh, Tampines Rovers. And last but not least, we see... The uh, masterclass by the 13 years old sensational kid that is Buriram United, uh, which is Lihar Antoine, who is basically victorious up against Tampines Rovers of Dylan Go. So let's see at a next week match. Uh, this is the elite category. That means this is the knockout stages, okay? So semi final will be held on the 30th of September, the same date as the star category. It's going to be uh, Indra Sugandi going up against Muhammad Nohaika Persib Bandung going up against JDT. Another rival match. And Matt, out of all the teams that you are going to fight, Matt, it's going to be the two teams from Thailand. Buriram United going up against Chon Buri. Liha Antoine going up against Anani Chi, Matt. Uh, this is going to be so amazing to watch. So make sure... Everyone that is watching the live stream right now, make sure not to miss the semi-finals on the 30th September because these four teams are going to terrorize each other and we all know what these four teams are capable of. They are so talented, they are so special, they have every uh, thing to succeed and go all the way to the finals but there's only going to be one champion and we will find out who that champion is real, real soon. Yep, if memory serves correctly, this is going to be a best of five. Uh, a best of five uh, for the, I mean, for the semi-finals. Uh, I think the lower bracket, the third place, also the same. So, Matt, I believe we are going to announce the winner, if memory serves me correctly, for the lucky draw for this shirt, guys. Yeah, which is... Here we oh, go, here we mine's go, here folded we go. up already. Yep. So, yep, let me also take out mine. Mine is number... So who's going to get their hands on this? Who's going to get their hands on this? Mine is number Mine seven, guys. The number seven. Ugh! Ronaldo's number. So do you want to do the honors, Matt? Uh, all right. So the person that is going to get 
their hands lucky on this jersey right now. Whoever, let's have a look again, yeah? We have one last look. Okay. That is the jersey. That is the jersey. And mine is number 16, Decipher is number 7. I'm not sure what number you're going to get, buddy, but you know who's going to be the lucky person who's going to bring this away, Decipher? Mm -hmm. It's going to be we Muhammad it? Iqbal Muharram. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad Iqbal Muharram. If you're watching this right now, congratulations. You are the winner for this jersey giveaway. And this is the official jersey. It's a limited edition. Remember, it's limited for a reason because... Yeah, Done it's already. special anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Done already. It got mine, yeah. man. It got my, uh, his. Uh, and uh, again, the winner is Muhammad Iqbal Muharram. So for Muhammad Iqbal Muharram, this is what you need to do. Uh, if you are here, please contact the admin via Facebook. The Facebook of Champions eFootball. Okay? Yeah. The Champions eFootball, you need to go and contact them. Uh, the name is Muhammad Iqbal Muharram is the winner and uh, admin will be in contact very very shortly and I believe Matt the admin also will do a post later on maybe tomorrow about who actually won this uh, these shirts not this one this is mine don't touch mine this is my number seven <laughs> awesome awesome man. Uh, awesome <laughs> awesome awesome right. wow Matt is the end already yeah, we're already at the end and uh, we're going to go into the semi-finals on the 30th September. That is I friend. I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen. Like, you know, this group stage has been full of dramas. Like I said on earlier, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. But boy, after this, it's all going to be risk, sprint and away we go. Yeah. Yep. So, Matt, I believe as usual, the customary ending is on you before I start the closing. So, give away your final words before our customary closing. All right. All I want to say is thank you so much for watching. Every one of you that is on the live stream right now, we stay out from first day all the way till here right now. You guys have been sensational. You guys have been, it's been so, so amazing with the numbers of support that was given for the players towards this page, towards the admins and everyone that has been a big um, contribution towards this uh, tournament and make sure to keep supporting and keep uh, watching this because we are not done yet there's going to be the grand finals the semi-finals is coming up uh, real real soon next week so make sure to catch that as well and thank you so much to everyone that uh, basically you know supported this stream all the way from the start till right now and yeah congratulations lastly to all the lucky winners that's going to get their hands on the uh, signed Persik Bandung jersey and also this jersey, by the way. So yeah, that is my last words. And the Cypher can take it on from here. All right. If you guys want to follow us on our social media, mine is the Cypher as stated down below. For Matt, is Matthews Isaac for his social media. And for the last time, this is the end of the group stages. Once we meet again, we will go into the knockout stage. So for the last time, this is your big man, Decipher, together with my good buddy, Matthews Isaac, as your official commentator for Champions eFootball Tournament. We will see you guys next week for the knockout stages. Be safe, stay safe, and take care. Until we see you again, bye-bye. Kasi gagal.